my sighting of these giants happened back in 1996 when my unit was sent on a secret mission to the Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan. The purpose of our mission is irrelevant, but it has been declassified now, so I do have permission to tell you. We took off from Bagram Air Base just before dawn with another special ops team that were all Navy SEALs. They were flying on their own special ops chopper, while we flew in a Chinook helicopter, supplied solely by the Army. We had to fly over some fairly high mountains to get into the valley that was our original destination. It was still dark at this time, so it wasn't until we got almost halfway through these mountains when I saw something strange ahead of us. There was a huge bright light flying through the air towards us. I couldn't tell if it was another chopper by the way it was flying, at least at this distance. No aircraft lights were visible, so I knew it wasn't one of ours either. Even stranger was that this object didn't have any sound coming from it as it approached us and came closer. It was a dull gray color and looked very strange as it seemed to glow, almost. I remember being curious about what this could be. I did not have a radio on me, so I could not say anything to my co-pilot or the other chopper pilot. If this had been a movie, you'd probably think I should have gotten out a rifle and shot it from the sky, but for some strange reason... I just didn't feel scared. I believe it was one of the SEALs who finally yelled over the radio to asking us if we could see what this thing was. Right after he did so, both choppers came very close together. We were flying through a mountain pass. In that instant, I saw a giant humanoid figure down in a ravine in the mountains. Several of these figures, actually. There appeared to be about three of them. I'd say roughly nine to ten meters tall red wild hair, and held primitive, like makeshift spear weapons. I only got a few seconds to look, but I know what I saw. The seals were laughing all over the radio when we realized both choppers had almost come together. After that, I was terrified. My imagination ran wild thinking about these giants that had terrified me with their appearance. I have never imagined anything like that in my life to what I saw this day. I don't know what to think about it. I was later on instructed about what I saw to keep my mouth shut, so I did. The way my superiors instructed me to do so was, we simply don't talk about those things, period. And that was the end of that. I know this sounds weird, but about a week or so ago, before this happened, I had a good buddy of mine who was also a motorcyclist, who reported seeing strange things throughout this long stretch of road. He would often drive this area in the evening time and report feelings of being watched. I gave him a pretty hard time about it, thinking he was just being crazy until I had my very own experience when one evening, after midnight, I was riding through here by myself. This has happened to me twice now. I'm not sure if this is the same being, but there are some details that seem to be similar enough for me to conclude that these are related encounters. It was Thursday, evening on June of 1994. I was already a veteran here, having served in Desert Storm in 91 to 92. I was riding my motorcycle home from work around midnight that night. I was about a mile or so approximately, right out of Apomatox, Virginia, and I noticed something strange. I often came home late enough where it was dark and encountered headlights on the road coming towards me, but tonight, it seemed like there were none. Since this road is very heavily traveled, there are no crossroads. There should have been no cars out here at this time. As I pulled up to the crest of a hill and started to descend, approximately 300 to 400 feet from the crest, I saw something that nearly made me soil myself. I don't know how else to describe what I was seeing, except that it looked like a giant, upright, walking ape, covered in hair, running along the road, with its arms pumping furiously as it ran after my motorcycle. It kind of reminded me of a gorilla, running on all fours, but also standing upright every now and then, to try and gain full speed. The most frightful thing about it were its eyes. They were glowing this white yellow, and they almost seemed to glow in the dark, the same way headlights illuminated deer's eyes. It's as if they possessed their own light source. 
Now, this thing ran after me for about a good 300 feet until I crested another hill. But when I looked back, it had vanished. It was almost as if the thing had just disappeared into thin air. In all honesty, it scared the crap out of me. And after thinking about it for a while now, I think this thing must have been traveling so fast it was chasing after the light from my motorcycle. That is what probably caught its attention in the first place. But the strange part about it all is that not once did I hear any noise coming from whatever this thing was. Even though it looked like a large gorilla running on two legs, it never really made a sound. From what I saw from it, it was real ugly looking, like it was deformed or something and even had horns, pulled back like a ram's horns are. It also had this nasty smell like a skunk. Believe me or not, this is one story I won't leave me alone until I get it off my chest. It sounds pretty stupid to some people when you try and explain what happened, but if anybody has heard of similar encounters along these lines, please let me know. I do not know what this being is or where it came from. If anybody has any insight onto what this thing was, let me know in the comments below. I am also aware there have been reports of strange creatures in this area, including Bigfoot sightings and strange otherworldly type encounters with UFOs and even other bizarre paranormal phenomena. But what in the world is going on around here? This stuff is scaring people, including me. I was deployed for over a year in Afghanistan. It was one of the most unique and terrifying experiences of my life. I was walking back to the base alone one night, deep in the night. Everything was silent for miles. In the desert night, you can really hear just about everything. There were no city lights in sight. The night was black, and the only illumination came from my flashlight, which cut a small beam through the darkness. The base, however, was well lit, so there was ample light to see the ground at my feet. I heard an unfamiliar noise off in the distance which kind of reminded me of a woman screaming as I'm patrolling. I was a little concerned and took off my helmet, adjusted the volume of my radio. Just as I did this, these horrible, what I can describe as demonic screams started coming from all directions around me. Completely unsure of what to do, I made the decision to stay where I was until I could properly assess what was happening. After a few minutes, this large light materialized about 45 meters into the air above me. It circled around me for a minute or two with this horrible screaming sound coming from it. I kept my weapon aimed at the sky, waited to see if anything else would happen. It seemed to nearly pulsate in light and emit this loud noise. I began to think that this was some sort of cloaking device before dematerializing. Several other of the soldiers saw it too, but nobody could figure out what it was. When I got home, I told my wife about the situation and she seemed to believe that I saw a UFO of some kind. I myself am not exactly sure, but it is something I cannot explain to this day. Also, I was in Iraq in 2010 and witnessed another strange thing. One night, around 3.30 a.m., I took up my guard position on the roof of a police station and suddenly... This green light enveloped everything. It appeared that some sort of craft was flying over us, but nobody else saw it at the time. Apparently, I was the only one to notice this, and even when I talked about it with fellow soldiers, nobody seemed to understand what I was saying, like they were never present for it, even though they were only several yards away from me. While I was a Marine stationed at Quantico Marine Base, Virginia, I came back home from a 12-hour shift on base very late at night. This was sometime after midnight. Being the only vehicle left in the parking lot for quite some time due to my shift, I parked closest to the building as possible for fear of somebody breaking into it overnight. I was half asleep while walking around my car, inspecting it carefully to make sure that nobody had tampered with anything that may cause problems later on. Growing up in my teenage years, I've had my car broken into twice and had somebody try to cut the brakes underneath my car. To say I'm paranoid is an understatement and very, what I would say, justifiable. With my keys already at hand, feeling around, looking for them, 
under dim light, coming from one of the building's windows, thinking about how much sleep I was going to get before work again tomorrow morning. I noticed something not being right with what I could only tell if I looked closer. A strange, hairy humanoid figure that was crouched down very low to the ground, causing me to literally freeze and dead in my tracks right before it sprung up like a coiled spring. It took off running with its back turned to me very fast, covering at least 30 yards in only a matter of seconds without tripping over anything it had a hurdle over. The only thing visible was its massive shoulder height next to a large tree trunk as it ran by, disappearing from sight behind a building. The hair on the creature looked coarse and blackish brown, or even dark gray maybe. Not sure why I thought though there were no other colors present. Its hair seemed matted down, flat against its skin, except for the shoulders where they laid somewhere long just past them, standing straight up as if being held by water or some type of oil, a slippery substance. It was so large that it really caught me off guard, and my best guess is if it was running by at least 30 to 40 miles an hour, if not faster. It stood on two feet and its arms hung down to about its knees. I had read a story of somebody else who had seen something similar, but in another state. But I can remember word for word that he said because it sounded almost identical, except the creature he saw apparently ran on all fours and grabbed a deer with its massive hands, throwing it over a high voltage electrical fence. I can't say for certain that I saw the same thing, but it was definitely a huge hairy hominid. I think what's scary is who knows how long that thing had been there before I walked up, watching me. If the marines weren't so strict on where you can and can't walk to within a half mile radius of the base, then it would probably still be there. I encountered a creature on July 23rd, 2015, right around 10 p.m., I live in a small town called Penfield in Clearfield County, Pennsylvania. I was driving home from work on a Boy Scout road in Penfield, and I saw a large brownish tan creature crouching on the side of the road. It had a very large misshapen head, yellowish eyes, and a very long nose. Kind of, dare I say, goblin-like. At this point, I slammed my foot into the gas pedal and did not let off the gas until I reached my home. I'm a very factual-based person, and I don't hold any personal beliefs as far as supernatural things are concerned. But since that night, I don't know what to think anymore. The reason I'm writing this is because I saw that thing back in November. See, I have a friend who was a sergeant. He claims to have seen a goat man back in the fall of last year as well. This is all the information I can really give you for now. If you need any more, please feel free to ask me. The first incident took place nearly 25 years ago now. I was stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Went camping with a friend of mine in the southern part of the Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge. This is an isolated area where you can only gain access by boat or four-wheel drive vehicle. We arrived at our destination around 8 p.m. on a Saturday evening. After setting up camp, we decided to do some fishing before it got dark. It would take about 15 minutes to get open water by boat, so we left the campsite with four or five other guys who were also spending the night there. One member of our party noticed some tracks on the eastern shore of the river. We quickly got our flashlights and were amazed to see 15-inch long humanoid-like tracks in the sand. These tracks were only about two feet apart and ran straight down to the water's edge. The ground was soft and sandy, so we could very easily make out the shape of these prints. We didn't miss seeing the claw marks or other strange markings that would be associated with the hoax. I myself measured one track at around 17 inches long and 7 inches wide. The depth of these tracks indicated that something very heavy made them and did not notice this approach. There is no way that these were made by a bear. They were too narrow for the front paws and... The space between each step was far too large. Our other companions, who were all military policemen, did not want to stay around very long, so we decided to follow the tracks upstream, against our gut instinct. After about 30 minutes, all of our flashlights died in unison, as if some electrical outage happened. 
We had replaced all the batteries prior to this trip, so we couldn't figure out why this happened. But it became very dark very quickly, and we began hearing strange sounds in the distance, kind of like heavy breathing. This went on for hours, and since nobody wanted to spend any more time there than necessary, we returned back to camp. I've always wondered what made those footprints. I believe this area is heavily populated with Sasquatches. And soon after this incident, I read an article about an upcoming Sasquatch hunt in this very area. One of the hunters who was interviewed claimed that he had seen 15-inch tracks about one month earlier on the Alligator River. Several other sources also mentioned seeing these huge footprints around the Fort Bragg area. Now, the second incident took place almost three years after while attending college at Norfolk State University. My girlfriend and I at the time were working part-time for a private security firm. We had to monitor some abandoned buildings that were having issues with break-ins. The first few nights were pretty well, but by Saturday night, things had got really bad. We both kept hearing these loud screams all night, beyond in the woods, sounding like someone mixed a lion, a goat, and a wolf all in one, like a hybrid of some sort. It terrified us. Worse, it seemed to be coming from all directions. There was no way to track the sound. It would seem like it was coming from the north, then all of a sudden, the southeast. This went on for roughly three hours. We could hear there were multiples of them, whatever they were, but they weren't any normal animals I'd ever heard in my life. We've known other military servicemen who've also had some pretty bone-chilling experiences with these creatures in the area. It seems like this is a common occurrence here in the south. I know for a fact that something is awry out here in these woods. Sometimes even my own rifle don't make me feel safe. Normally, I'd never been a believer in or a sightee of any kind of cryptid or unknown creature. However, around 1986, I was stationed aboard the USS Tortuga, LST-1189, as a Navy Reserve officer. We had spent the day off the coast of Haiti, making sure that relief supplies were delivered to the Haitian people, who needed them very much after a hurricane had demolished their country. That night, our ship was underway on its way back to Jacksonville, Florida, where we were currently based. It was dusk, and the sky had gained considerable pinkish hues and the sun was just starting to set in the sky. Myself and two other fellow lieutenants were standing on the open bridge, the wings of the ship watching Haiti fade on the horizon. As we looked over the port side of the ship, one of us three said he saw a flying creature. It was dark, so it really stood out against the pink sky. It was headed toward our ship, at least the direction from ahead of us into port. The first statement of any of us made was that it must be some kind of large bird. If you had seen the size of our propellers on the ship, you would know that a bird could get caught in it and be torn to pieces, assuming it was a large water bird that dove underneath the water. It kind of resembled a huge bat, though, the closer it got. Long pointed ears and a long tail. We were trying to figure out what kind of bird this was when we lost sight of it behind the mast of the ship. As it rounded the front of the bridge, we lost sight of it again. Then, as our eyes followed it beyond the bow, we saw that this creature was now flying alongside of us. Our claims at first were now countered by these around us, suggesting that perhaps it wasn't a bird. But now, those gathered on deck were laughing and pointing at the creature as it flew along with us. One statement I remember was that it has got to be a bird. But this thing kept flying, and we can now see its bright red eyes glaring down onto the deck of our ship. As any of you who have ever seen a bat up close, their eyes shine with an amazing red light which you can see coming out of them, even in the darkness. Now, being at night, with no real background reference to compare its size with, we were all wondering what this could possibly be. We agreed that it wasn't a goose or a condor, but maybe a pelican? Although, I have never seen a pelican that resembled a bat. We witnessed it flying alongside of us for about five minutes. Then it began to glide away from the ship and across the horizon. The last we saw of it was a tiny dot on the horizon where its eyes had been glaring at us when it had glided over the water's surface. 
we never exactly figured out what it was, and none of us were ever believers in cryptids or strange creatures before this. I do feel that whatever we saw was some form of unknown species. Hi. First, a bit about me. I served in the Navy for 20 years as a military police officer. I am now retired after many years in the security industry. The following incident happened to me about five weeks ago whilst on holiday at my mum's farm, which is situated in southern Scotland. It was around 5 p.m., and the sun had just set. It was getting dark quite quickly. I was walking up to my vehicle, parked at the side of her house where she lives with her partner, when my attention was drawn towards one of my mum's field by some odd-appearing lights, which were kind of hovering above in the sky. These lights were glowing bright white, but they appeared to be descending slowly, almost as if they were dropping down into the field. As I got closer, the lights became apparent that there were actually now two white lights, both of which were the same size, but now one was beginning to get larger than the other. I crept closer, getting about 50 yards within these lights, and the large white light began to move towards me at a slow pace and then almost hovering above me before disappearing. It appeared to be at least as big as a house, maybe bigger if anything. There were no visible features on this object whatsoever, just two bright white lights which appeared to be projecting downwards. The smaller, medium-sized light remained in the field below it for another few minutes until it too headed off in the distance where I lost sight of it completely. The larger light then re-emerged before disappearing again back into thin air after leaving this tiny blur trace behind it. The only thing that's strange that I've dealt with while on Scottish soil. When I was younger, I also dealt with something of a beast in the Scottish woods. The incident happened when I was out walking in the woods with my family. We were all enjoying our walk when it started to get dark, so we turned around and headed back towards home. It wasn't long before I noticed something following us, but at first, I didn't think too much of it. Being naive about such phenomenons, but then this thing began to run through the trees, keeping pace beside me, alongside my family. Knowing that something was wrong, I quickly shouted for everybody to run ahead, while trying not to lose sight of them at the same time. The creature moved faster, though despite its size, even faster than myself, which is surprising due to the amount of times I've served in combat zones, abroad where adrenaline can be flowing through your body constantly. No matter how fast I ran, I can never gain ground on it, and what's more is that the deeper we went into the woods, this thing just seemed to be getting bigger too. When we reached a clearing, I quickly hid behind some shrubs, trying not to let this beast see me as my family escaped. It continued to grow in size, until there was no mistaking its identity. It looked like a mutated bear, carved out of stone almost with large ears, which were almost elven in shape, and a much more elongated head two horns protruding from its forehead, and nine eyes, like some freakish arachnid. It was terrifying. I also spotted another smaller creature looking around it as well. It wasn't as big, but it looked just as striking. Not a sound it did either of these things make. This was one of the most unnerving things of all. The creatures saw one another and headed off into the distance, I think still looking for me and the family, although I'm not too sure. To this day, I cannot explain what these things were, only that they were definitely not from this world, far more terrifying than anything that I've ever seen while serving. I will say that if it wasn't for my training, I probably wouldn't be alive today. I can tell you the exact year and month this happened. It was in 1979, in April, that my own battalion received orders to ship out for the USMC Recruit Depot in San Diego, California. I was in Weapons Company of the 2nd Battalion, 9th Marines at Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina. After my basic training in Paris Island, South Carolina, and infantry training at Camp Gager, I had become a rifleman assigned to 3rd Platoon of the Lima Company. When we left for San Diego, it took a day and a half by train to get there most of us having never been outside the California's borders before, 
so this was an adventure. Once arriving in California at MCRD, I had my first taste of real fighting from some Marine Corps drill instructors. Once I made it through the MCRD hell, I shipped out to Camp Pendleton for further training before being assigned a unit. That is when I met Mr. Bill. What is strange about this story is my past experience with large flying creatures had me slightly prepared for what was coming next. I have never ever read or seen any type of large flying reptilian creature in any science fiction movie or story, but I have read about and seen a pterodactyl one time before. This was during my high school years, when I went on a field trip with a bunch of classmates to the local museum. In the huge atrium, there was a very old mounted wingless pterodactyl on display. I think it had been there for at least 20 years, maybe more, before I saw it. The thing was sitting upright, on its tail. The wings were spread out to the sides of its body like some type of prehistoric leathery aircraft. It looked like something off of a low-budget science fiction film, set or prop. It really gave me the heebie-jeebies, because here was this monster that had lived and died during prehistoric times. It was scary just looking at it. So, of all that, made my first experience with Mr. Bill's little baby pterodactyl less than disturbing to me than it might have been to somebody else who had never saw something like that before. All Marines in my battalion had been seeing these things too. I know, because they resembled somewhat of the pterodactyl that I saw with Mr. Bill. Sometimes you'd see them flying around during dusk, off in the far distance. Other times, they'd be higher up towards the mountains but they were unmistakable to see. But more on that in a minute. Back to my story about the Marine Corps Recruit Depot. It was around the first week of May when myself and a bunch of fellow Marines were on parade ground, more or less waiting for something or other. We were all lined up at attention, not moving much at all, except for some shifting. And just then, I happened to glance in the direction of a very distant mountain, about a mile or two away. And there in the air, high above something, caught my attention. I figured it was a bird, but it was so large. But when it made a big, lazy U-turn and came back in our direction, I could not believe what my eyes had saw. The thing was huge, a large winged reptile. But I you could see that it looked nothing like a bird due to its size alone. The wingspan was three times the normal size of a condor. I looked around to see if anybody else saw what I was seeing but everybody's eyes were straight down in the position of attention, so they could not have been looking anywhere else except for a head towards the drill instructor up on his little platform. It was then that I figured out the only reason why the DI had not said anything about the giant flying thing in the sky was that he probably saw it too. I just happened to look up in its direction, and it had come back around, headed into our general direction again, coming from behind a very tall barrack building. It came closer until it passed overhead, right above, where we were all standing at attention on the parade grounds. I could see it all very clearly. It was a huge creature with bat-like wings and a long skinny tail. The whole encounter could not have lasted for more than a few seconds, but it flew off towards the mountains again. And I'll never forget the direction and the general outline of what I had seen, and how it looked nothing like any type of bird at all that I've ever seen in my life. This was the very first time all of us saw one. Even the locals and natives there recognized them and even talk about them. If there's ever a place that Jurassic Park exists, it's there in Papua New Guinea. My name is Rick, but you can call me Terrace. That was, after all, my nickname in Iraq. I had a few buddies who called me that. I guess it's like some kind of slang. War is hell. But over there, they played by a different set of rules. Anyway, I was in the military for about eight years and since then have worked as some kind of private contractor for the last five. I don't know if I should be telling you this story, but anyway, even if your website is anonymous, you never know how safe things are nowadays with all the cyber crime and cyber terrorism going on. It didn't take long after getting off duty to head out towards home, which is just outside of town near this farm that my parents used to own long before they passed. It's not much, just a little place where I store food now and keep my own personal things. But in a way, it is home to me. Feels good to get out of the country after being in that desert for so long. It was already dark when I got off the road about 10 miles from home. 
maybe thanks to all those darn clouds blocking out any of that beautiful moonlight. So, I figured with the darkness setting in very fast, no sense in wasting time. I got out my magnum flashlight and continued on foot across the bumpy gravel path towards the farm buildings ahead of me, which were now barely visible in this thick, black darkness. It made my way past some trees and overgrown vegetation lining the road, until I came upon an old pathway that leads to the backside of my parents' old farmhouse. Earlier in the day, I couldn't help but notice that this pathway looked like it had been trampled over by something large, so decided to come out here and investigate what was going on. It didn't take long to see where these large tracks were being made across this part of the farmland. The grass was already flattened down by something very heavy walking back and forth through here multiple times, just short of the summer season. It wasn't hard to me to figure out whatever caused these prints in the ground was probably pretty big, easily 9 or 10 feet tall if not more, given how wide apart each set of footprints were apart from each other. So I came upon a small clearing and stopped, showing my flashlight just ahead of me, and I heard an awful sound that still haunts me to this day. A blood-curdling howl followed by a hissing, crackling and rumbling. Immediately, making the hairs on the back of my arms stand up in fear. I've done some bad things in Iraq, but nothing like what was going on right in front of me. At first sight, my flashlight beam only lit a part of it before its eyes. It was large and black looking before standing fully upright. Its wide shoulders and massive chest were from what I could tell seeing covered in a reddish brown fur. It was hunched over as it looked through the tall grass partially hiding it. At first, I assumed maybe it was some kind of bear, but as my light hit its eyes, they glowed this bright orange amber. It was like two hot glowing coals bathed in crimson anger. Short for a Bigfoot, but no more than six feet tall, if I had to guess. All that muscle definition everywhere, he looked on its body. What kind of species this thing belonged to eluded me. Other than knowing whatever it actually was, it wasn't human friendly. I stood there, frozen with terror, staring right back at this creature whose size alone would have easily outweighed me by over a hundred pounds, if not more. The jaws on this thing were large and black, opening up so wide I can now see down its throat, as it let out this other unholy howl that made the ground shake underneath our feet. This must be what a deer feels like when looking into an approaching freight train that's about to run it over. The only thing we had between us was an open field and darkness surrounding us, both during this tense moment of fear and trepidation. The creature wasn't moving towards me at first, for some reason. I knew that engaging with it would have resulted in a death sentence, so simply, I retracted. After the initial shock wore off, I slowly backed away from this thing, while keeping my light pointing right at it. It continued to just stand there, seeming to be just as afraid of me as I was of it, or so it acted that way. Why did it come into the clearing in the first place? We kind of just stood there having a face-off for what felt like an eternity before I made a mistake that probably would have sealed my fate. In order to back away from this thing, who did not advance towards me but rather stayed where it was, I had no choice but to turn around and run back across the field. Now, I want to say this because it's important. Never, and I mean never, do you turn your back and run from a large predator, especially one like this that's unknown. You just don't do it. It entices them to chase you. That's exactly what happened, and I was not even armed when this happened either. I was about halfway across the clearing when I heard it coming after me before jumping down and disappearing into the brush, just mere feet away from me. I don't care if you don't believe. You don't have to. I'm telling you the terror of that night is real, and what I endured is real. I had more than enough time to take a good look at this creature, and would most certainly remember what it looked like. I will never forget that face as long as I live. With those eyes staring into my very soul with pure hatred, it's forever embedded into my memory. I have no idea how fast this thing could have chased me down, but I know it would have made a meal out of me if given the chance. As soon as I cleared the trees and got back to around my house, I ran inside, locked every door and window before going up to my bedroom, which was on the second floor of the house with a balcony outside facing 
where I had just come from. I didn't sleep the entire evening, but the following morning, I actually insisted on staying in a hotel for that time being. Too many strange things were going on around the property, and I wasn't going to take any chances of being mauled to death by some monster. Whether this was a Bigfoot, or Dogman, or whatever, they are real. The next day after what just happened, I finished paying up at the hotel, which had its own little restaurant connected to it, providing pretty good food. So, the front desk person wanted to talk to me about what happened last night, after I kind of gave him a little bit of info on me and what I went through. They told me something very interesting about my ordeal that made me feel more uneasy all over again. He said the hunters who used the fields behind the house and around have seen these large black dogs out there, the largest wolves they've ever seen before, but only during deer hunts, which is the only time of the year that deer are in the area. Can you believe that? I never knew there were wolves here, but the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. These are large, unknown canids, and I don't want anything to do with it. Not my story, but my grandfather's, actually, who served during Vietnam. Now, he's never been one to really share his stories and things with anyone, but he will sometimes. He recently, just in the last couple of years, noticed that I took a liking to cryptozoology and things of that realm. After learning that, it's even a thing, he began to tell me how during the Vietnam War, which again he served in, a part of the platoon he was in was attacked by these large, 10-foot-tall, reptilian, crocodilian creatures. They killed at least eight of his men. His story terrified me when he told me it, and so I'll share it with you. He said that his platoon had been in a long and grueling march through the jungle, they were really close to where they were going, but had one more obstacle to go through. A river that would take half a day at least to cross with all their gear. They were already in the midst of a very thick part of the jungle. And with their current location, it would be tougher. So they waited for nightfall before crossing. There were Viet Cong soldiers in the area, and they wanted to wait for them to pass. Everybody except for the point man who had went ahead of the group to scout out the crossing. He said that after about an hour or so, he returned with wild, terrified eyes, asked if they could get across without making too much noise, due to there was something large in the river. Well, my grandfather said they did their best, but it was still quite noisy when they got in the water. He heard this strange, almost trumpet-like noise he described in the distance. It sounded like it was coming from the direction of the river. At first, they thought it might be maybe a kind of animal or something, but... After a few seconds, it became clear that there were too many weird things about these noises that did not pinpoint back to any animal, so they simply kept moving. By the time they got to about the halfway point, night had fallen, and because of this, my grandfather said he only saw one dark shape in the river when he made its way under them that disappeared after about a second or two. He said that besides that one, in that one moment, nothing too much seemed out of the ordinary besides the noises but you could tell everybody was very uneasy. Once everybody got across the river and on to land again, his point man set up to keep watch for a few moments while everybody else tried to get a bit of sleep. He claims that five minutes into the guard shift, nothing seemed wrong at all, but then saw two or three of these dark shapes in the water that began to ascend out of the water. Quick note, this section that they were in was a very thick part of the jungle, he told me. Even the captured Vietnamese refused to travel through here, and when questioned, they acted very scared. They knew. Anyway, he said that the first thing he did was wake everybody up, and for some reason, his point man wouldn't respond. After a second of shock, he realized this as well, as the fact that their point man was no longer on post, but had now been dragged into the water. My grandfather said at this point, everybody began to panic. Some went for their guns and others tried to get a better look at whatever was in the river. It wasn't long before they realized that this thing had killed off half their men, including their point man. Taken in their sleep. He said there were three or four of these creatures in the water, coming out and going back in. Everybody started shooting at them, but it didn't do much other than make things worse. At first, they thought it was just because there were so many men shooting and then he noticed that some of the bullets would go through one of these creatures, and after a second or two, 
another creature on the same side as the other one would rise up out of the water and eat what was left of the comrade on shore. He said everybody tried to run away at this point, but some didn't make it back into the jungle in time before watching everything they had ever had become eaten by these things. They went into hiding for hours until dawn finally came around. Apparently, during this time, he wasn't sure if he was awake or dreaming. When more than once he heard screams sound off in the distance, he knew those were his teammates being eaten and torn alive. He told me that none of this seemed real if he closed his eyes. But when in the daylight, it was a different story. He told me that in a few short hours, they finally heard a chopper in the distance and began to signal them with their gun mags. He said that when they got to where my grandfather and some of his friends were at, they were all left. There was just bones and bits of meat and flesh from these creatures. He told me he never returned to that part of the jungle again, and making the shortcut was a huge mistake. He told me this story about ten years ago. It still keeps me up at night, sometimes thinking about what happened. This is the only time my grandfather would ever talk about running into large humanoid crocodilian creatures. And no, these weren't just regular crocodiles. These were something out of a nightmare. They had a taste for human flesh. Back in the 1980s, I was stationed in Prague, Czechoslovakia, within the U.S. military. I came home to visit my family for Christmas, and while at their house, me and my stepfather got into a heated argument about politics of all things. At one point, he said something that really pissed me off so much, I decided not to stay any longer. It would only lead to trouble between us both. So, after spending some time with him, I walked up the door on him without giving any notice or saying goodbye to anybody else in my family. My wife was busy at work when this happened, so she did not have an opportunity to say goodbye either. This was around 4 p.m. in the evening. I began walking down the street where my car is parked just a few blocks away. As I'm walking along, I hear this very loud whooshing sound directly overhead. At first, I thought it was maybe a helicopter as this thing had passed overhead, or at least oncoming but it sounded nothing like one. The noise this thing reminded me of was what you'd hear like if you took a time-lapse recording from maybe an aircraft carrier or something similar. It sounded as though there were multiple engines within the object as well, due to the various levels of pressure coming from different directions, which kind of created an oscillating effect that shook everything below it, adding to this deafening sound the closer it came. In order for me to understand what this was, I ran as fast as I could to my car, threw it in reverse, and started speeding up to the street to get back onto the main highway. As I'm pulling out of the parking spot on that side of the street, I see it for the first time. This thing flies right across my windshield and overhead. My first thought was, oh no, because now that it's close up, I can see this thing has a distinct human form, and although its body seems elongated and muscular, like an athlete or something similar. It had wings on its arms, which made me think of a bat, but without fur or any feathery appendages. It also had legs with feet, so large that from the distance I saw it, I would have never believed it were real, had I not seen this with my own eyes. As this thing was flying overhead, it turned its head and looked right at me with a very menacing glare that totally said, I see you. I'll never forget the feeling of being busted for doing something wrong by somebody old enough to be your father. That's what this thing felt like. And it had a long protruding snout, kind of like a beak or maybe an anteater or something similar. And very large, orbish black eyes. Its skin and face was also very pale. When I drove off, I looked back to see where it went. The thing was gone, just like a ghost. I never knew they were in this area until after my encounter with them but I read about similar sightings happening online. This really surprised me at the time. I'd never seen anything like it or even heard anybody else talk about them until now, now that I know about their existence. I'm talking about gargoyles. My unit and I were stationed at a training base in the Croatian National Forest. We were told that there had been sightings of this creature and it was very dangerous so we were on guard for anything really. One night, while driving with my navigator, 
I saw something very large go up in a tree about 100 to 150 yards from the road. My NCOIC also saw this and identified it as a cryptid. I didn't know what that was. I was too busy concentrating on driving in order to avoid hitting whatever it was. Because it happened so fast, I was convinced it was going to land right in the road. So I have no idea what kind of being it was. What we saw was a large, long, dark-furred creature leap from off a dirt road and into the middle of the road. It had been standing next to a tree just outside the woodline that runs parallel to this very desolate stretch of rural highway. It quickly leaps out of view from the road, off into the tree line, disappearing for good at that point. I was just a young soldier at the time. It is the only cryptid sighting of my entire life. It had been a clear night with rain earlier that day, so visibility was good, even into the woods that were about 20 to 50 yards from each side of this two-lane road. We stopped and got out to take a look around, but with no flashlight. We had no real idea of what direction to walk. To be honest, I was too freaked out to go into the woods for a closer look myself. We both said that whatever it was must have moved through very quickly and back off into the darkness. We did not hear anything past our own hearts racing at this point. I've been in the army now for 23 years, and not much faces me anymore. The one thing that will always stick out in my mind was this encounter. I am a believer of UFOs, but when it comes to cryptids, such as Bigfoot or whatever it was, if it leaves tracks, you can find them, then I'm more than willing to believe it exists. Here's another story. I was at Fort Bragg. It was about 1 a.m. I was sitting on the ground outside, waiting for a security checkpoint to clear, when I heard something crashing through the trees just over my shoulder towards my right side. If you imagine yourself in that situation, then you have a good example of how I felt. I heard this crashing through the woods sound not more than 20 feet behind me, but there was nothing to be seen other than the trees shaking like crazy. When I turned around and looked, I saw something brown about the size of a small bear covered in fur with black hair all over its face. It kind of had a long tail and pointy ears and no hair on the very top of its face. I would say it was maybe no more than 200 pounds. I began to get very scared and started to pull out my pistol when this thing turned and saw me, ran back into the woods and was now gone. I felt like it wasn't going to hurt anybody and that I was safe, but if you saw this thing, you would understand why I started reaching for my pistol. The whole encounter maybe lasted 5 to 10 seconds at most. I found this old report, and I thought you would find it of interest. The lieutenant is anonymous, but his sighting is horrible sounding. At 0415 on the morning of July 18th, 1944, while acting as the officer in tactical command of a nine-ship anti-submarine task force, stationed about 200 miles east of Yokosuka, Japan. I witnessed an incredible encounter with what I believe to be a large sea monster, or giant octopi. A destroyer on our starboard side began firing at what was estimated to be about a 70-foot-long creature about 2,000 yards away from our ship. The destroyer's gunner reported that the monster suddenly dove at the destroyer, stove in its bow with one sweep off its massive tentacles and submerged again. When it resurfaced shortly thereafter, moving out ahead of the destroyer, it turned at right angles and caused the ship to list 30 degrees. At that point, the destroyer ceased firing for fear of striking our own ship. I at once directed another destroyer, which was on our port side, to fire within its 5-inch guns on the monster, having no effect other than further damage to the superstructure of our sister ship. The attacking monster submerged and appeared to be moving away from the starboard side of our ship. When it resurfaced on our port side, I turned my ship directly toward the monster's position, opened fire with all battery weapons, including 5-inch guns, 40mm anti-aircraft guns, 20 milli caliber machine guns, and finally 4-inch rockets, which were the only weapons available which had a chance of a hit. The rockets were fired in pairs from each turret, and when they struck the water... I observed with my own eyes that they skipped like flat stones skimming across water. One pair of rockets struck the monster's head, which at once disappeared beneath the waves. A second later, two more pairs struck the water where it had just submerged, 
and I saw large columns of reddish-brown liquid rise to about 50 feet in the air, followed by an explosion which made the ship tremble just slightly. The attacking monster was never seen again. I've been in the military since I was 18. I'm now 67 years old. In my younger days, I was blessed to have been from a family of hunters and outdoorsmen, so I've always been around guns, dogs, and coon hunting. In the early 1960s, when I was still a kid, we lived outside a small town on a large farm. This had been in our family for over 100 years. It was 1968. We were working on our coon dogs. We would take about 15 or so, of them out on a run for breeding purposes. There was myself and another fella who had been together for about five years or more. We knew each other real well. The way I figure it, the only reason the dogs saw what they did is that we were upwind of whatever it was, and the dogs somehow smelt it and went and stood their ground looking, standing their ground until this thing came upon us. It must have been about 5.30 in the evening, I reckon. The sun was going down, but we had plenty enough light to see what we were doing. We'd run these critters pretty hard. We were out in the country where there was nobody around for miles, except an occasional farmer. We didn't see anybody else that day. It had started raining about noon and continued to rain through the afternoon. A real cold, windy December type of day. Not until about 5.30 or 6 when it quit raining. We were getting ready to turn the dogs back in when we started hearing them bark and growl. And they took off out in the woods. They went in a big circle, came running back in our direction, which was now upwind of whatever it was that scared them. They ran right by us and headed home to the fields. I've never seen them run the way they did that day. They were scared and running for all they were worth. We both got a good look at the thing when it stepped out of the woods. Not more than 30 to 40 feet away from us. At first, we saw just its head sticking above the grass in a small little clearing. We watched it for a minute or so, and then all of a sudden, it rose up from where it was standing and began running on two legs. It ran right into the field about 50 feet from us. It had black fur that was very coarse looking, even for this time of year. It was kind of like fur on a bear, but it stood up on two legs, just like you and I do. The face was very wide, eyes that were kind of glowing and pulsating white. It had very long arms, not quite as long as an ape's, but they hung right by its chest. And the hands only had three fingers, no thumbs that I could see. The fingers resembled more claws. We were both looking at this thing with our mouths hanging open. It took off running, headed right for the edge of a big ten-foot deep cut, bank, along the road. When it got to that cut bank, it never hesitated once. It ran right up the side of that bluff, about six feet or so, then just disappeared. The head and eyes were what we saw first. We knew we were looking at something real, but... The rest of the body took some time to develop. It was down in a low spot. When it stood up and started running, that's when we realized exactly what it was. There wasn't any doubt in our minds. Although, I don't know what it was. Whether it was an ape or something. I've heard stories about werewolves before, but that thing wasn't a wolf. It didn't walk like one, nor did it look like one to me either. Whatever that was scared the heck out of us. We didn't even have any reason to be scared. It never made a sound. It never growled or spoke or said one word. It didn't even appear to try and want to harm us. It just ran off, like I said, right up the side of that bank, maybe 15 feet high, without so much as looking back once at us. The only reason I'm telling you this story is because whatever it was came right back down off that bluff and got one of them hounds. The rest of them hounds caught up with it about two miles. We didn't find the dog until the next day, about ten miles south of where we stood and watched it run off. It was a good hunting dog, one of the best I'd ever had, and here is where an exceptionally cold winter night of negative 25 degrees below zero, maybe worse than that. The weather had broke and we were hunting raccoons in the woods when we ventured onto some open ground and ran into whatever it was that had the hound. The dog was dragging itself, its back broken in three places, and didn't have a mark on it, except where his back was broke. The tracks left by whatever got him 
were unlike anything I've ever seen before. They weren't human tracks. They were too big for that. But they weren't no animal tracks either. They were bigger. That's about all I can tell you. I don't know what it was we saw that day, but whatever it was really scared us and ran off with the fine hound dog. Something I've never seen before or since. I just wanted to tell you all that before something bad happened to you out there in the woods. I know most of what I've seen over the years has been pretty real. But with some of them, when the weather's bad or when it's dark outside, I can't say for sure really that they're there unless I see them again. These bipedal canine monsters swore... In 1999, I lived in Edinburgh, Indiana. Myself and wife were living about three miles south of the old Camp Atterbury military base. This was decommissioned shortly after World War II had ended. I worked midnights at a local factory that had one day shift persons. This night, my wife woke me up, saying she heard some loud banging sounds early in the morning, but was not sure what it was. She thought that she had heard a voice too, but wasn't sure. I know for a fact there were no animals or people walking around because it was so early in the morning. The alarm would have gone off if anybody had tried to enter the factory during those times. So, I stayed up until about 5.30am, then went to bed. I was talking about it later that day with two co-workers at the time. Many of the Indy 500s were being built around us by Camp Atterbury, so my guess is maybe some construction workers, also in the mid-90s. There had been a lot of military drills happening, which included tanks or other armored vehicles being driven on and around the base. I have a second story, but it's more of a worker fiction, as it never happened to me personally, so I take it as such. In 1992 or so, my brother lived in Columbus, Indiana, and worked at Cummins as an engineer for over 20 years. Cummins is the engine powerhouse behind the diesel industry, and has been for decades, my brother would stay late many nights until the early morning working hours on test stand for engines. The building he was in was right next to their biggest test stand, which is used to overheat and stress all parts of a diesel before they are installed into a truck or other various locomotive. Cummins did not want any engine failures in the field. Cummins is located in Columbus, which is right across the Ohio River from Louisville, Kentucky. One night after midnight, my brother was working late when he heard a terrible noise coming from the test stand area. It sounded like an 18-wheeler diesel truck being pushed right outside a window. The stands are about 100 feet away and built like a bunker. He knew nobody else was there. He locked the door behind him like always. The only way to get in is if somebody buzzes you in, which was done by my brother at night, or hold your badge up next to the reader mounted on the wall, next to any locked doors. So anyway... He gets terrified, calling security. When they come, he describes what he had heard and what was happening outside his window, which should be impossible. The only people there should be him and two other night shift workers who locked up. They left like normal before my brother came into work that evening. The security guys investigate the test stand area within their flashlights to see if there's any break-ins. No one. Absolutely nobody is anywhere near the test stand area but the noise continued like somebody was banging on metal parts loudly for hours. The common security guys said they were going to investigate this further and got many weird calls down at the desk that same night about noises coming from the building after midnight. My brother got out of there and went home. Cummins was very well known to have had a lot of strange happenings go on in their test stand building for decades. Cummins security would investigate every time something happened but nothing was ever found. Many guys who worked there just refused to work late at night in that building. They were terrified of what was happening. I do not know if this story is true or not, but my brother would swear up and down on a stack of Bibles that it happened. He never believed in ghosts either, so what was he seeing them for? A friend who also lives in Columbus told me last year that the old test stand building had burned up in a fire, seeming suspicious. Forgive me, I'm an old fart, but I think you would appreciate my story back when I served in Vietnam in the Navy. I was just 19, a young buck. Our vessel was attacked by something. 
It came out of the water and tore the heck out of the ship. We never saw it coming. It was so fast. It took us several days to repair all the damage caused by this thing. The sound was deafening, like nothing I had ever heard before. And we couldn't figure out at first what was making that kind of noise underwater when it was not a whale. In the following days, we kept a lookout for what happened. To start the story off, I was currently stationed off the coast of Vietnam, aboard the USS Storms, DD-780, which was an Allen M. Summer-class destroyer. During her 1967 deployment to Vietnam in the support of Operation Sea Dragon, our raider picked up on something on the surface. It looked like a small island just off the coast of northern Vietnam. We made our way over there and found a conical-shaped object sticking up out of the water, about 30 feet. We approached it cautiously at first, but slowed our approach after seeing no reaction from the small island or whatever it was. It wasn't really a small island. I just call it that. The closer we got to this thing, the more unusual it became. To start with, there were obviously no trees on this island, which was only about 30 feet in diameter. It was all one big smooth cone-shaped mound. Then we noticed that the island seemed to be made out of this texture, not like rock. But what really caught our attention was when we got within several hundred yards and saw how much it began to move. The closer we got, the more it moved. We're about to continue on our way when one of my lookouts said he could hear something below the water. We all stood there quietly thinking nothing of it until my signal men called for me and said that whatever was making that noise seemed to be coming from the island. The closer we got to it, the louder it seemed. And then my other lookouts said they could hear something as well. Also, over the sound of our own engines, which were very, very loud. So, I took us in closer. We could maybe see what was making all that noise. It suddenly dawned on me that this island was not at all stationary. And you have to remember, at the distance we were at, it totally looked like an island. This thing had started to move. This was a living sea organism. As we were watching it slowly undulate, even as it spread open to the top like some kind of giant clam, we wanted to get away, but our engines seemed to be straining against something unseen. The more we tried to move away, the harder our engines seemed to work. We were stuck. We were looking around for what was anchoring us when we looked down and saw it. The closer it got, the more visible it became. It was like watching an image appear in a developing tank of a photographic paper. What looked like islands at first became long lines that were attached all the way around this thing. Then I could see what looked like flippers, similar to an elephant's ears, or so they reminded me. Even saw a face that looked somewhat kind of like a giant lizard with great big eyes. I called my gunner over, told him to open fire on this thing if it tried coming up out of the water at us. I tried turning our searchlight on the thing, but the light just seemed to disappear into it. Whatever this thing was, it did not want to be seen. We were dealing with a colossal bioform. I remember our ship beginning to shake as if we hit something underwater. We all thought it was coming after us until we heard a huge sucking sound and felt like we were beginning to slide sideways. The creature had let loose of our keel, and seemed to be sliding back deeper in the ocean. Once the thing was completely submerged again, our engines came back online, and started pulling away from this thing faster than I ever thought possible. I could see something moving around on top of it as we sped away. Whatever it was was now diving headfirst straight down. The more I looked, the bigger it seemed to get. Then it hit me. It was an eye. A huge round eye that looked like a big red bulb. Then it turned blue, the same way a bioilluminescent fish changes colors. I remember turning to my lookouts, yelling for them to sound our horn loud enough to hopefully scare whatever this thing was away. I remember the sound of our ship's horn bellowing into the blackness at top volume. And I remember seeing this huge red eye appear on that thing staring right at us before it finally sunk back down below the depths of the dark ocean. And there was this kind of flash of light, almost equivalent to a fireball going off underwater. 
like the creature had used some kind of secret weapon on us. It very much reminded me, the same way fish that have that bioluminescent gene in them will flash their colors, kind of as a distraction, or the way that deepwater squid will do the same thing. That's kind of what it was like, but just on a massive colossal scale. I could see a trail of bubbles going up to the surface which exploded upon hitting. The water began now boiling around us, and this giant red eye came back into view, seemingly glaring at us from deep below. We were lucky we weren't all killed. I had my men sound the horn again, and we sped away from this thing and place as fast as we could. I know that some people will think what happened to us was just some kind of, maybe, I don't know, a whale, but I'm here to tell you this was not a whale. Questions I still ask myself every day of what this could have been. The only thing I can conclude is that this was Leviathan himself. During Vietnam, I and six other men were on a squad night patrol, setting up our temporary camp. It was nighttime. I was nervous because it was pitch black. We were very limited on light. Only having the stars above, I looked off in the distance and I could see these huge eyes staring right at us. It was not moving or making any sound. I contacted my platoon sergeant, advised him of what it is. He told me to keep calm and keep an eye on it while he gets back to me. Some minutes later, he alerted me that there is supposed to be no enemy in the area, but he will send up flares to see if it's really what I was seeing. They warned they would only release three flares. It might not really be necessary. A couple of moments later, three flares popped up into the dark night sky, and I saw this creature was now only about 30 feet away. The eyes I saw in the distance were another one. There were multiple of them, and unbeknownst to us, they had begun moving closer in the darkness. They were about eight to nine feet tall, large heads, eyes that were glowing, just like stars. They also had two large antennae on top of their head, resembling some sort of insectoid. The body was like that of a man, but it kind of had scales and looked somewhat reptilian, as if burned and distorted by acid or fire. On its back, it had a small pair of wings, and on the end of its trunk, there were two very sharp-looking spikes and appendages, which kind of resembled horns. If there was ever a mantis man, this was it. It also had claws on all of its limbs. I could see it was holding something in its claws, as if it was about to swing, although I couldn't make out what it was. I froze, not believing what I was seeing, and it stood there watching me for about five minutes, just lingering before disappearing back in the dark. The whole incident was maybe 10 to 15 minutes, and the next day my sergeant suggested that I should visit the commanding officer, the CO, to give him a better look of what I saw. So the CO asked me to sit down and draw a sketch of this creature. As I was drawing it, he looked horrified as if he himself had already seen the thing. When I finished drawing, he said to me, Soldier, I want you to remember that day, as if it was your last day on earth. Try to punctuate every last detail. I did so, and afterwards he told me, and looked very grieved. He just explained, I want you to forget everything that happened that night. It would be for your own good. He dismissed me. I never told anybody about this incident until now. I thought nobody would believe me, so I just kept my mouth shut. I could not sleep the whole night. The next day, I went to a medic, told him how I was terrified by what he saw. He actually gave me a shot of something that knocked me out cold for seven hours, but not really sleep. I never had any other incidents with this creature, but I have heard of stories from friends who served over there during Vietnam as well. They told me they were terrified by this creature, running away from it, but it had chased them and actually eaten several of other men. One of my friends explained to me how one of these creatures had jumped on their friends and drowned them in one of the rivers. It was like no other mantis or creature I've ever seen or heard of, even though I know there's all sorts of horrors that lie in the jungles. I'm still terrified even now as I recall this event, and still have problems sleeping at night. I would love to forget it, but if one day if I pass away and enter into heaven, what will happen if I see this creature again? People have been asking me for a name for this creature, but nobody knows what to call it. 
For the time being, I will call it a manticore, because it reminded me of a mantis man. And this is one of those experiences that I have that I've never really pre-told to anybody. It sounds like something out of a grade B horror movie, but it happened. 68 years old, retired Navy Commander David Fravor is now involved in civilian life. Having worked for decades as an aviator with the United States Navy, and then later as a pilot for the USN Reserves. You may remember David Fravor as the guy who had led top-secret investigations of reports of unidentified flying objects. He's also achieved some notoriety back in December of 2017. He had spoke about his experience investigating a UFO while piloting an F-A-18 multi-role fighter stationed aboard the aircraft carrier USS Nimitz in 2004 off the coast of San Diego, California. What I'm about to tell you has me reliving the incident all over again, because it's just too strange for words to adequately describe what happened that day while we were tracking an unidentified object with my instruments, but also unable to get a radar lock. I was baffled by what I was seeing on the radar. It had performance characteristics that were far beyond any known aircraft in the inventory of the United States, or any foreign nation for that matter. So. I have absolutely no idea what it was. It didn't show up on my radar, and it was able to accelerate, get very quick bursts of speed beyond the normal limits of normal aircraft, and was also able to turn very sharp angles at speeds I could not believe. I can't begin to guess how fast it moved. It looked like one second it was there, and the next second it was gone. As I mentioned earlier, my interest in UFOs did not start till later in my career. I'd say with this incident, it was peaked somewhat. The command of the USS Nimitz is based out of Coronado, California, with at least one aircraft carrier assigned to the base on most days of the week. Commander Fravor's role as commanding officer for any given expedition would be to pilot the F-A-18, a multi-role fighter that can serve in various roles from air superiority or attack roles, and he has logged over 700 hours of flight time. Technically, Commander Fravor's rank during this incident would have been Lieutenant Commander, but for bravery, we'll just say 04. On November 14, 2004, USS Princeton Oceanography expert Mr. Ray Keller had been tracking a mysterious object for over two weeks. He even called in the USS Nimitz to investigate what he was seeing with his own eyes. Along with his instruments on board the ocean surveillance ship, the USNS Observation Island, According to Commander Fravor's recollection of the events, which began to unfold that day, he said this, I was on a routine training mission flying out to an aircraft carrier off Point Loma in San Diego when the oceanography officer asked if I could check something out with him. He wanted me to take a look at what his radar was showing. He said that there was something weird in the vicinity of the island San Clemente, down here. It showed up about 45 miles away. He gave me a vector, and I found it immediately on my radar too. I couldn't make heads or tails of it on my display, so I thought, okay, I'll go take a look and see if I can make it out visually. It was around two to 3,000 feet above the water, heading roughly south. The thing that whatever it was would turn very sharp and sort of come back on itself. The corkscrew turns. Eventually, we figured we'd never get a solid track on it, so we decided to make our way back towards the Nimitz, and as we got closer, my wingman made visual contact. He got within a few miles of the object, and I was probably four or five miles away from it. You could clearly see it, but what you could see was not like anything I'd seen before. The object was just hanging there in the air. We were at 25,000 feet, but I could clearly see the shape of it. It looked like a 45-degree angle cutout, with a massive wingspan. It did not look like anything, an airplane or anything I've ever seen before, flying over water, with no navigational lights. As we were moving in on it, it just disappeared. That was the end of that. It was at this time after he had returned to the Nimitz when Commander Fravor's superiors began asking him what he had encountered, and what his plans were to follow up on it. But, taking into account what they knew about the object, they ordered him to take no further action.
as I was leaving the tactical data that we were getting about it and begin to disappear. So I thought this thing was moving very quickly away from me, which is why I wanted to get closer, but my superiors told me not to pursue. However, Commander Fravor's curiosity had been piqued, so when he got back to the Nimitz, he asked that they pull up any information on what he had just seen. They brought into the ready room for all the data that they had collected by looking at it with an infrared and radar, everything too, but there was nothing. It showed up in none of those displays. It was the shape of a 45 degree angle cutout, yet it had no propulsion system that we could see. There was no exhaust plume. According to Commander Fravor, by the time his superiors began to look into what he had encountered up close, whatever it was they were looking at had suddenly vanished. And by the time they looked back, it was close enough to them that what he had saw with his own eyes could not be denied. As we were preparing to get into debriefing, I asked other pilots who had been on missions before and none of them had ever heard anything about this. But as we entered the room, there it was on the projector, the data I had seen myself. All of a sudden, it showed up 10 miles out, 15 miles out. All these waypoints along the track, all at the exact same angle. The object would also perform maneuvers that no known aircraft could possibly do, according to Commander Fravor. One example, including what he described as a vertical 180, in which the object changed course instantaneously and shot straight upwards, only to turn again and come right back down. It was almost like it knew we were watching it, or it was moving away from us. I'm not sure, but that's what makes me think it had some kind of intelligence. The other pilots watching the events unfold became terrified by what they were seeing take place. According to Commander Fravor, who admits that he too was now terrified about what they might be facing, everyone in the room got a chill. We knew there was something really bad flying around us. And while it may not have been obvious to Commander Fravor and the other pilots what had terrified them so much, and decades later... We know what they were saying was something from beyond. In 1972, May 18th, off the coast of Thailand, our submarine, the USS Queenfish, SS-399, a Sturgeon-class attack submarine, was on a routine patrol submerged in the Gulf of Thailand, when at about 2.15 p.m., we spotted an unidentified object coming from the surface. It rapidly became obvious that this was heading straight for our submerged position. There were no returns from any ship or aircraft in the area. The only thing we could see was a great disturbance of the water, and whatever it was headed directly for our position. Everybody standing topside in the conning tower and on the bridge grabbed their binoculars to get a closer look at this mysterious object. But what came into focus didn't make much sense. Someone hollered out that it looked like a giant octopus, and it did seem to be swimming using the many arms or legs, much the same way a giant squid propels itself. We couldn't tell which, but the part that made all of us terrified was the fact that it appeared intelligent, and so the way it moved. The large eyes seemed to be looking right at us, and its actions appeared deliberate as well as menacing. Almost as if this unearthly sea monster had reached our submarine it rapidly swam by, but not before giving us all a very close look at its shiny, wet skin. The arms or legs seemed to be moving in unison, much like the oars of an ancient galley. The top fin or hump was about ten feet tall, and the large eyes were situated roughly six feet apart on either side of this hump. The skin was smooth and it appeared to be very large, at least one hundred feet in length. The flesh, or whatever seemed thick and white, like the belly of a shark, but the skin on the tar part was blacker than any sea we'd ever seen. It looked very slimy. We could see no pectoral fins or flippers. As it swam past us all, everybody was terrified but also fascinated at the same time. For several seconds following, we watched this creature swim by very rapidly, and there was no doubt in our mind that our submarine, seeming to pause, looked directly at us before shooting off into the deep blue sea. We were terrified, not knowing what this was. It wasn't quite an octopus, and it did not look like a squid. It looked like something we had never seen before. Although terrified, we were fascinated by its size and beauty. 
We all knew that this creature was no whale, behemoth or any known sea creature. I didn't think to be a living dinosaur either, but who could say for sure? Well, the captain surfaced the boat as fast as he could, to warn any other ship or aircraft of the strange thing that had just happened. The radio room tried to contact any and all ships in the area. Nobody answered. We stayed on the surface for about an hour, trying to tell everybody that this large thing had appeared intelligent and that it had gone after our submarine just as if we were bothersome fish that had swum into its territory. The captain decided to track this creature on sonar, but soon found out our equipment was not capable of tracking anything that large. We could see the object on the screen about six feet tall and about ten feet wide, but this was about all. After several days of tracking it, the captain determined this thing to be over 100 feet in length and very intelligent. It even seemed to sense our presence almost as quickly as we could run sonar on it. I count myself lucky to have seen it once, but after hearing other stories, I wish that I had never seen anything so terrifyingly beautiful. This was in 2003. We were in a helicopter on a rescue mission. We were going to land in this valley, right next to a large mountain, around 4,200 meters high. There was intelligence that the enemy was hiding out there, so naturally, they were our targets for being seen by us. When we got very close to the landing zone, this 200 long meter cavern opened up under the helicopter's path. I was a gunner at the time, so I was one of the first ones to see this. It looked like a black hole, and it happened so fast that we could have been hit by accident if we weren't careful about our surroundings. Luckily, none of us died from it. There were supposed to be five enemy combatants in this cavern with their wives and kids. These things were anywhere between seven to nine feet tall, and certainly not enemy soldiers. They had greenish-yellow scaly skin, huge fangs, long claws, and looked like damn abominations from a Frankenstein monster. They also had webbed hands and claws. Our pilots saw this coming. We used our searchlights and lit up the cavern nicely before landing. They were pretty upset, or so they seemed, and immediately began chasing after the copter. The pilot tried taking off again, and we began shooting at these things. They screamed like demons, wanting to take down our chopper. And with all the gunfire going on, the helicopter began to spin out of control, nearly crashing. We had to battle these things for a good while, but we were finally able to kill them all. Using a combination of ammo and grenades, we lost several good men. We had to retreat on the mission to escape what was going on here. We were able to get a hold of a company and Chopper came in for us about three hours later. Because we hid, we managed to stay alive. I don't know exactly how we managed to survive this, but we did. And it wasn't because of me so much as the other guys in my squad. They were the true heroes, to be sure. I just wanted to do my duty and help. This is what happened during the battle, though. It turns out that these things were an ancient breed of mutated humans who lived in the mountains long ago. There's reports of them being worshipped by ancient cults. This is what I've been told by other fellow veterans who have had their own stories with these creatures as well, during this time in Afghanistan. There are even men during Desert Storm that talk about large humanoid beings who hide under the sand and who have attacked and devoured convoys whole. Pretty terrifying stuff out there in the desert. You can call me Zach. I won't reveal my real name. I served in the U.S. Marine Corps for at least four years, longer than it seems most people serve. I was stationed at the Military Entrance Processing Station in Bangor, Maine, while going through training to join an infantry unit. It's a tough job that requires a lot of stamina and endurance. It's also very stressful. You have to give up a lot of your personal freedom in exchange for discipline and structure. And my time there was most dangerous. While I was stationed there, I witnessed several strange sightings that are still etched into my brain even today after trying my best to forget them. The first sighting happening in the summer of 2009 when I was in the waiting room with my mother and brother. It was an unusually hot day. It felt like 110 degrees outside, even though it really wasn't all that hot. However, we were waiting for the bus to take us back to housing. We had been in there for about two hours now. 
Everybody in the station was miserable from the heat, and people were starting to lose their tempers for no reason. My mom reminded me of a cartoon character who was trying to keep her composure. She just couldn't stop herself from yelling. At first, I thought it was funny watching people get yelled at, but after a couple of hours, it got really old, and I just wanted to leave. We were sitting near the front desk, uh, talking with two soldiers who had heard our entire conversation, even though they were deep in their own, about some event that happened earlier in the day. The following is an account of what happened my mom told me that she saw at the desk. One of the soldiers was not saying much, but the second soldier was retelling his story excitedly. Apparently, he saw a pair of green eyes with a large black creature, also having wings near one of the bus stops. My mom said she thought it looked like something out of an old Japanese horror movie. Due to the description, it sounded suspiciously like a mythical creature called the Kappa. She said that it was about the size of a human, but had dark green scaly skin, long arms, it also had webbed feet and hands, kind of like it was pointing upwards. It was flying over the sky, almost motionless and gliding when the soldiers got off the bus, terrified. The soldier who saw it in question ran back toward the building to report his sighting of this creature, that he thought it was just some sort of anomaly at first. He kept saying that it was real, and at first I thought he was joking. But after a minute or two of talking about how he couldn't believe what he was seeing, both soldiers got horrified. They looked from the front door to the back door, realized it must have been looking at them from one of those windows or had been watching them from the sky ceiling. One of them said that it looked into the sky and kind of just vanished, as if just completely disappearing, as if it kind of disintegrated into nothing. He was literally trembling in fear when he saw it, and the thought of drawing his gun on this thing was terrifying if it came back down on him after he went inside. They both had no idea what it was. They thought maybe it had been a genetic experiment or some sort of alien. One guy said he saw something similar when he was up in Alaska, and the other soldiers agreed that it must maybe be a sign from God, telling them to stay away from going outside while this thing is lurking around near them. When my mother told me what she saw, I said that it must have been a really strange animal that they probably haven't seen before. Most of the military bases in Maine are right next to very large forests, so maybe this thing isn't really a demon or an alien, and has always been here, but no one's ever noticed it. Maybe somebody went out into the woods and found it when they were doing something. I told her that I thought these soldiers were just messing with them, and she agreed, but said that they looked pretty scared enough to be telling the truth. One of them even sounded like he was going to cry as he described it, and its face... I know he may have been lying about it, but that was a pretty good performance, if he was. He didn't say much about what it looked like, but he was pretty shaken up. Maybe there really is something out there. While training at Fort Carson one night, a Marine and his team were way out in the field when they noticed what appeared to be blood-red eyes on something very large and dark. The men instantaneously switched their flashlights from floodlight mode to beam mode, but this did little to decrease the size of the object which now turned away from them at high speed, once it realized its attention was being drawn to. From that day on, anytime somebody mentioned or asked about coyotes in that area, they were told, no, not here, too big. The men reported about seeing large canine hybrid creatures, which is why it was such a shock. These creatures were four to five feet tall, had short red fur with large legs and paws. Their eyes were glowing red in the dark, and they moved very fast. According to the men's description, these creatures looked like a mix between a dog's and a coyote's, but were much larger than either of them, probably about twice as large. According to the military personnel who work at the base, they've been told there were no such hybrid animals in the area, although these men would never admit to seeing anything so strange. They wanted it known that these creatures do exist and could still be living on Fort Carson today. Other stories include of Marines getting attacked by these large creatures, which they say were very humanoid in nature, but were not human. One story comes from an ex-Marine who claimed that he was at a certain location with his commanding officer, and they heard a strange animal-like shriek. He said the creature was large, very fast, moving like a blur. 
the officer informed him to not worry about it and to not say a word. He said that many of his colleagues speak of these creatures in private, but refuse to talk about them when in the company of others, especially if they are higher ups. This marine claims that there have been sightings of these creatures on numerous occasions and that they are very real. He is not the only one with stories like this either, as many marines have had similar sightings and experiences, but refuse to speak up about them. In June of 2006, four of us were on a training mission north of Camp Lejeune, near the town of Jacksonville. We pulled off next to a field and all went down into the field, laid around for about an hour after taking in the sun, being out in the brush for most of the morning. There was nothing but woods as far as you could see, even behind us. No traffic, no sounds of really any kind. We didn't think too much about it since we were taking a break. There was a rise in the field that I had to stand up to look over. As soon as I stood up, I saw what looked like two black things laying down on the edge of the wood line, about 200 yards away. As soon as they saw me, they stood up and they started walking off at a brisk pace. I immediately drew my M4 carbine and told everybody else to stay low. I fired off one round towards them at their feet, which is what I was taught to do if you are trying to get somebody's attention. The two subjects immediately began sprinting towards the woods, which only made me now more nervous. I was taught that you don't run from somebody trying to contact you. After they disappeared, I told everybody else to stand up, and we all took off for our vehicles. We didn't say much after until we got back to base. The next day, we got together and talked about what had happened. We agreed that the subjects were both male, and they were both around 5'8 to 6. They ran like track athletes or soldiers do, not like lumbering large people who are overweight. One of the guys in our team was a good shot. We all decided that he would be the one who would shoot the subject if we ever ran into them again. He's 6'2", around 2'15", and in good shape. The next time we went on a training mission, there was only four of us instead of five, so somebody stayed behind. For some reason, we were out there for almost three days. We got back to camp on a Friday night, and everybody was eager to get home for the weekend. On Saturday, we all went down into town to eat. I didn't say much what about it happened, just that I felt uneasy being out there alone without a team. One of the guys on our team, let's call him Sam, was really freaked out by it, and did not want to ever go back into that field again. He told me I'd heard moaning sounds coming from the woods while we were out there. When I asked him if he thought they could have been animals, he said no, that it was too loud and sounded like it came from two different people. I didn't really know what to say since I had only heard the sounds once when I stood up quickly, but never when laying down in the grass like we had. I had no idea he had heard them. Sam was convinced that there were people out there. He wanted me to tell the team leader about it. I told him that I would tell him about it the next time we went out on a training mission. He was really scared so he wanted to go back and investigate further with me. I informed him no. About a week later, we were all at the team leader's house waiting for him to get home from work, and I told them about what had happened. They laughed at first, but none of them had heard the moaning sounds or seen anything on their patrols. The team leader, let's call him Rich, told us that he did not want us to come back out there without a full team of people, just in case it was true. I agreed with him, and was glad that he felt that way. I can say that so far, nothing has happened yet, but I'll let you know as soon as we do. Last note, I believe the two figures we saw were juvenile or adolescent Sasquatch, seemingly caught off guard. I was a Marine on military installation. I don't know why, but me and two of my friends decided to stay there overnight as we were shuttled from the barracks. I do remember it was late, maybe after 1.32 a.m. One of my buddies who had been out drinking, but not excessively. We had been told not to go outside, so we had to just walk around the inside, but had no contact with any of the other Marines. It was dark inside, so we were using our flashlights. I went to the bathroom, which was directly across from my room. When I came out, my buddies were not there. I began looking for them, but they seemed gone. 
I knew it would be bad if they drank more and became belligerent. Suddenly, I saw a shadow move at the end of one hallway. Turning my light, I saw one of them hunkered down beside a trash can. He said he needed to go outside. He ate some food that didn't agree with him. He took off his pants and wiped himself with some paper towels. He was brains out. He cleaned himself up and walked toward me suddenly, and he realized he had no clothes on. This happened at the trash can where I saw the shadow move about 40 feet away from me, without saying anything to my friends who were caught with their pants down. I took off running toward the exit. As I got closer, I felt like somebody or something was following me. Fast footsteps behind me that sounded like they were wearing combat boots. How could anybody be walking around in boots that late at night? It made no sense. These heavy footfalls were definitely chasing after me. Now I began screaming bloody murder as I ran around the corner and around another one, triggering my friends, who, triggering their flashlights, saw me running like a maniac through the hallways. I thought I was going to die from fear. Well, maybe from fear and also from exhaustion. My two friends caught up with me when I finally stopped running. By this time, we had gotten separated from each other by about a hundred or so yards. We didn't know where anything was, so we went back into our rooms and falling asleep. The next day, we were told that nobody else had gotten any sleep because of us making too much noise. Apparently, they heard us screaming but couldn't find us because it had got real dark outside due to lights being out ordered earlier that evening. We didn't tell anybody what had happened. It would have just gotten us into worse trouble. I think my friends said something to some of the other marines after we got back, but nobody else saw or heard anything. This is the one of many terrifying experiences that I had during my time in the Marine Corps. I don't know if this was a ghost, demon, a bad dream, or what. But I do know what I saw and heard wasn't normal. And it definitely did not feel like an ordinary night. I'm sorry if this story is butchered. I'm a terrible writer, but I felt it important to get this story off my chest. Hopefully you could wade through my bad storytelling. September 1993 One night... Several of my Marine Corps infantry platoons were doing some training exercises just outside of our base camp. As we all sat around the fire pit, right after dinner, one of my men looked out into the darkness, claiming to see a shadow moving in the trees only 50 feet away from us. He watched it for a while, before safely turning back and asking me if I had noticed anything strange myself. I had not. The next day, we came back and searched that area, looking for anything but found nothing unusual at all. However, on the third day, we went back. One of our members was walking along when he realized there was something behind him. He turned around quickly only to find nobody was there. At this point, everybody had begun wondering what it could be. It couldn't be seen at all, but they could feel its presence. One night... Later on after the previous events had taken place, I was walking around with one of my other marines discussing how strange this thing was, when all of a sudden, we realized that whatever it was that was following us earlier had now begun to walk parallel with me. I dropped to one knee quickly and let loose two quick shots into the darkness, hoping to scare off whatever it was for good. But whatever it was didn't move or flinch. It just kept walking like nothing happened. At this point, none of us were too scared though, so any feelings of fright were now pushed back down below conscious thoughts as we walked back towards the main camp compound. We never could figure out what it was, but I still think about it once in a while. I hope one day we can solve the mystery surrounding this black apparition that walked with us on our training exercises ever so silently. I was an infantry platoon leader in the U.S. Army at the time. My platoon and I were on a mission in Germany, somewhere around the junction of the Czech Republic-German border. We had been there for about two months, which is how long it took for our unit to transition from Iraq, where they trained Iraqi police officers to Germany. We were patrolling the woods when we came to a clearing. I figured it would be a good place for my platoon to take a break from advancing to the dense forest. I went up ahead to scout out what was beyond that clearing. Something was troubling me about how quiet it seemed. Even the crickets and grass and birds were all quiet. There was nothing. 
but I figured it was my imagination after the long time spent moving forward without stopping at all. As soon as I turned around, though, they were all standing at attention behind me, their weapons pointing straight up in the air. They had obviously seen whatever that was startling them, and when I turned around, all I saw was the clearing that seemed to have no life in it whatsoever. So then I think maybe one of my squad leaders had probably seen something, maybe a deer or some other animal. So I asked them if they had just seen an animal. They all immediately deny seeing anything out of the ordinary and go back to taking their break. I was walking into the clearing to find where they had seen whatever it was that spooked them. And I had only walked about halfway across the open space when I hear everybody screaming over my radios. Move out, move out, is all I heard. So then I start running toward where they are. But before I'm halfway there, I hear automatic weapons firing up ahead in our direction. And of course, being combat soldiers, they are trained to be constantly vigilant of their surroundings. So of course they are firing at anything moving in the woods around them, or taking cover behind trees or logs if nothing else is moving for them to shoot at. But then, there were multiple things moving that they could see. Everybody started yelling, Enemy behind us, or he's running toward you, to your right, flank. So everybody is firing in every direction. I finally get out there, and it turns out that my squad leader had seen one of these creatures run into the path, only 50 meters away. He saw it earlier than everybody else, but at first thought, it was maybe just another member of our platoon. He didn't see the face hidden behind an overgrown mane, but when I got out there... I knew exactly what had startled them, and it wasn't any kind of animal like a deer or elk, like I guessed. It was another type of creature, but neither me or anybody else could figure out exactly what it was, although I knew. I just didn't want to admit it. We never found any tracks to follow or anything else that indicated there were more of these things around, although my entire platoon believes they were stalked by several of these things. So we figured this one man must have been a lone hunter or something and got spooked when he got caught between both groups. About a minute later, the woods seemed to come alive with every type of woodland creature you can imagine, scurrying from one side of the forest to another. It seems they were all trying to get out from underfoot as either us or them passed through their environment. So maybe this was something. I'm not too sure. But I can tell you, I think it was a group of these things that were about to attack. And had my entire platoon not shot at these things, they probably would have pounced, tearing my men apart. I believe they were acting in self-defense. And I think they were fighting against these bipedal canine animals. July 1st, 2013. Ryan Coughlin and Special Ops Team were training in the Adirondacks, an extensive mountain range north of New York City. The team was split into three groups of two. This way, they could cover more ground and be far less noticeable. Brian's group consisted of himself and a Navy SEAL named Mark Smithson, who was from the Naval Academy class of 93. They were on a recon mission at night, along with their squad leader, who was last seen 15 minutes prior to the event. I had just scratched my nose on my left arm as we walked when I saw what looked like something out of the movie Predator. It came into view on our right side, crawling through some thick brambles and brush, said Coughlin. It appeared to roll on its side, looking at us with its legs in the air for a moment, before turning and scampering off into the woods. It appeared to stand on two legs like a human when it stood up. Ryan Coughlin is currently an infantryman serving in the Army National Guard. He was deployed twice, once in Operation Enduring Freedom, Afghanistan, and once in Operation Iraqi Freedom. His military occupation specialty or job is heavy weapons infantryman. He's also graduated from Airborne School and is trained as a combat lifesaver. He's also an ex-sniper. Now, these creatures are said to be like brutes. These Goatman hybrid creatures that are said to be ape-like, that are brutal, with scaly skin, and are reported to be about seven feet tall. They have been known to kill animals in the forest of North America and drink their blood, ritualistically. These creatures are said to be extremely hostile and curious of humans, which contradicts Coughlin's encounter. Native Americans throughout the Northeast claim that this mythological creature is real, 
and they're actually known as Wendigos. There are even stories of tribes killing anybody who strays into the woods because they believe it gives them powers like these ancient gods. Wendigo psychosis, or Wendigo possession, was an alleged mental illness among certain Native American cultures, particularly a tribe living around Lake Superior in northern Minnesota. Wendigo, as described by those affected by the psychosis, include a general aversion to cannibalism and deviance from cultural norms such as intense cravings for human flesh and the compulsion to eat it. The legend of the Wendigo is said to have originated within the Algonquin tribes living in Canada and parts of present-day New England. The legend has since spread throughout most of North America. The earliest written account of Wendigo psychosis dates back to actually 1673, where it was first recorded by French Jesuit missionary, Jean, who first learned about it from Wyandotte natives living near Georgian Bay. According to some other researchers, there are two distinct versions of Wendigo, one that involves great violence or cannibalism, and a less violent version involving the fixation of a Wendigo upon a person. In this case, Ryan Coughlin was not attacked by the creature, but he saw it clear as day. This could be because they were most likely posed no threat to them, or perhaps these creatures are more curious than hostile. However, there are many instances where people who have encountered these creatures wound up missing or dead, or have their blood completely drained of their bodies. Like in most scripted cases, we may never know what happened that night between Ryan and his special ops team, but it definitely left an impression on him he'll never forget. This report holds several critical eyewitness accounts of the events at O'Hare International Airport on October 4th in 1941. The following is an excerpt from a UAP report regarding this incident. The first military officer sighting. The first incident occurred at about 3.15 a.m. Two lieutenants observed a red light moving above the airport's northwest corner. As they watched, it descended below the level of the airport and disappeared from their view. Although this is a very credible sighting, there remains some doubt as to whether or not this was a UAP or something else entirely. The second military officer sighting. A little bit before 4 a.m., two other officers stationed at the field observed an object that looked like an automobile headlight traveling across the northwest section of the O'Hare Airport at approximately 2,000 feet, or 610 meters. The air traffic control tower reported seeing nothing on radar corresponding with this sighting. The description provided by the officers corresponds with that of a star or a planet. This sighting is far more credible than that of the first military officer, as it was visible on radar and was seen by multiple eyewitnesses. The third military officer sighting. At roughly 4.25 a.m., several enlisted men stationed at the airport reported seeing what they described as an unidentified object pass overhead traveling east to west at a very high velocity. This unknown object was also visible on radar and has recently been analyzed using recently declassified information from World War II archives. This sighting is definitely identified as a vehicle in low Earth orbit through its appearance, moving across the sky, and behavior on radar tracking systems thus eliminating possible explanations such as a plane. As the object passed to the west, one of the witnesses reported hearing a screaming noise. This also was confirmed by several other witnesses who too saw it. Although it is unknown what exactly these onlookers heard, this could be explained as radiostatic caused by increased radiation from the testing of radar systems on a vehicle in low Earth orbit. There were no reports of any sound accompanying this mysterious vehicle as it traveled across the sky towards the horizon and out of sight. In summation, it is likely that there was some sort of atmospheric phenomenon which accounts for some aspects of these sightings, but not others. A declassified report shows that at this time, there were atomic tests being done above ground some near Las Vegas, Nevada, some 400 miles or 640 kilometers away. This could, in addition to the LED sighting, account for some of the atmospheric phenomenon reported by eyewitnesses. It is unlikely that this UFO incident was caused by atomic activity or extraterrestrial intervention.
though it currently remains unexplained how weather patterns could have affected witnesses on the ground at O'Hare Airport. Throughout the winter of 1986, a certain ranger was riding his beat-up old snowmobile past a clearing in the deep woods of northern Wisconsin. It had just snowed, and there were many deer tracks all over the place. The ranger was patrolling this area because it had been getting hit by poachers more often than any other part of that forest. As he came to the edge of a small clearing, he noticed that one set of deer tracks led behind an old abandoned cabin at one corner of the clearing. The ranger later told me that he tried to convince himself to not go look around back there, but something kept pushing him to investigate further. He finally gave in following those tracks until they disappeared under an upturned, broken three-board fence, surrounding what looked like a small abandoned garden inside the clearing. It was very overgrown with grass and weeds, so the ranger couldn't see anything except for some broken pieces of wood on the ground, which seemed to indicate that this was indeed once a garden. Of course, this is how it normally would have looked, except it was winter, and there was a lot of snow on the ground. The ranger just stood there, perplexed about what would have made those deer tracks go under the fence. Then, just as he started to step inside the clearing, I jumped out of behind one of those huge pine trees right in front of him. It took him about two seconds to realize it was not a deer or another snowmobiler. The yellow eyes were glowing brightly at him through his trusty flashlight beam as he stared straight into its face from only ten feet away. Instantaneously, his mind was yelling at him to run like hell. But his legs and feet were frozen in fear, just as frozen as everything around him was. And as he saw it start to lower its head and its upper body down like it was beginning to crouch on all fours, almost like it had been on all fours before this happened, the ranger's mind had finally snapped clear, back into reality, and began spitting around like a top for those few seconds. He was finally able to get back on a snowmobile, as soon as he sat down on the seat, he felt those skis underneath him. He shot out of the snow, and he could feel this creature give chase. His only thought then was getting out of there as fast as possible. The ranger did not look back until he reached the tree line, at least 200 yards away from where he had first seen this creature. By then, this being had lost him, had stopped following him altogether. When he turned to look, he looked at the clearing but... He couldn't see much through the trees, but he could make out glowing eyes looking out into the darkness of the forest behind him. They were kind of fading, but only shortly in the distance. The ranger returned to the main place two days later with another ranger by his side for some reason. Nothing was ever found there, no other signs of life, nobody having ever been out there. This was very strange and was never actually reported on paper. What I believe the ranger saw was either a skinwalker or a wendigo that he had potentially stumbled upon, since if you talk to Native American tribes up there, those things are everywhere. Now, I don't think it was a skinwalker, but I do believe it could have been a wendigo, potentially hunting for its next victim, and had that park ranger not acted quickly, the ranger could have been his next victim or meal, depending on how you want to look at it, assuming the wendigo or Skinwalker was going to feast upon him, or even worse, possess him to do its own wicked works using his body. Now, this is also not the first report that I've read about from people up here. This is not just from Forest Service personnel, but also military personnel as well. I've even read personal reports from some National Guard, who are up near the border of Michigan, right by Canada, encountering their own creatures, resembling a dead rotting deer carcass as one of them would describe. I know that might seem a little creepypasta to you, but I'm telling you, these are pretty professional men and women. They don't have time for Reddit creepypasta stories or fake stuff. My conclusion is that these people are actually facing real-life demons, or black magic practitioners who have managed to shapeshift into these beings. But from what I do understand from these reports, a lot of these men and women are afraid to talk about it. They always try to keep it on the down low and they really don't want their name getting out attached to it. After all, if even word gets out that your name is attached to a report that says you encountered a creature like this, or a wendigo or a skinwalker, it could potentially destroy any career that you've ever dreamed of. So it makes sense why they want to keep it so low. 
but from the sounds of it, we're dealing with supernatural entities here, beings far beyond that surpass the physical realm. These things will not only haunt you, but possess you, and do far worse damage to you than you can ever imagine. It's no wonder that even trained professionals like these men and women are scared of them, who want nothing to do with them, and run. It even seems that being trained and armed has nothing to do with it either, no matter how much weapon you're carrying around. These things aren't hurt by mortal weapons. I had one National Guard explain to me that one of these beings dematerialized right in front of him when he pointed his weapon at it, completely terrified that he was having an hallucination or that he was borderline schizophrenic. They are very real. Please, when you're out in the woods, watch where you're going. And please, just because the woods exist doesn't mean you always need to be out there. I was part of a military patrol convoy en route through eastern Tennessee on a routine training regiment when we came across some weird cries going throughout the wilderness. To be honest, it sounded like an animal of some kind that was being tortured to death. Its cries were horrendous. Now, I am far from a macho tough guy, but there's no way I'm leaving an animal suffering in pain for who knows how long if it's humanly possible to put the poor thing out of its misery. I took it upon myself to investigate. I talked with one of my squad mates about our options on the best way to get close enough to see what was going on, without spooking whatever might have made these noises, or catching any hostile attention. He agreed that keeping low and sticking as close as possible would be the smartest approach, since whoever or whatever was making these noises wasn't exactly close to the road we were patrolling. I was kind of surprised at how deep into the forest we had come, but orders were orders, and there was a mission to accomplish. Nobody wanted to do it any more than me, although none of us especially enjoyed being soldiers anyway, so it should have been no surprise that somebody raised their hand to volunteer for what I knew would be a crappy job by anybody's standards. The other soldier who volunteered with me was tough as nails, as well as being utterly fearless under fire, as you can expect from an ex-marine. We made our way towards where those awful sounds seemed to be coming from, until the sobbing began. Now, things went from bad to worse, as we felt like we were being watched, in conjunction with all those noises. We never found a trace of the noises, but they kept persistently going on throughout the entire route of the convoy, like they moved along with the vehicle, which was a pretty unsettling feeling altogether. At some points during the travels, the screams would turn into this wailing, as if it was a woman being murdered, while other times... It would turn in the sound of a screaming cat, or even a goat or a rabbit, like it was about to die. Various animal noises it would change and go back and forth into. I don't know. I'm beginning to think after all that this wasn't an animal. That it was something trying to lure us out of the convoy. I've told this story to a few friends of mine, and while most of them are creeped out, some of them have their own speculations. Like one of my other friends. He's full of butted Cherokee. He believes that what we had encountered that night was a skinwalker who was following us. I had to actually learn what a skinwalker is, and I'm not sure if skinwalkers are specific to Navajo or not, but either way, there are these beings who could shapeshift, and I'm thinking that's exactly what was happening that night. We were being followed by a witch that, for whatever reason, wanted us to leave the safety confines of our convoy and venture out just far enough by luring us with these cries of an animal, before he or she could get us. Now what their intentions were with us, I'm not sure, but it was very unsettling. Even making it a hundred or so yards off the convoy, things felt dangerous, like we should retreat back to our safety zone. And even when we did, we didn't make it very far. We've done this route several times. This is the one and only time I've ever heard these noises. This is also the one and only time I've heard of these noises following us for the amount of miles it did, which is very disturbing in its own right. It just reinforces the belief that this certainly was something, and not just an animal crying in pain wanting to die. For if it was, the noises would have ceased eventually, but to follow us as many miles as it did, something was certainly wrong. Anyway, I'm writing this because I wanted to know your take on things. Could this certainly be a skinwalker, 
or some other sort of demonic being? Or was this actually maybe just an animal crying out for help? And maybe we just mistook the sounds for the way they were carrying out and reverberating throughout the wilderness. I'm still not sure, but I'd love to find out for sure. My brother and I lived alone with my grandparents. This is because my dad passed away when I was young, and our mom was a drug addict, unable to care for us, so we stayed with Jima for our time being. One night, me and my brother were in our room, talking about the legends of skinwalkers, when, all of a sudden, I swore that I heard a rock hitting rock outside. This is right outside the house, the front door specifically. We both looked out the window to look down at where it was coming from, but it stopped, so after that, we kind of just wrote it off, going to bed. When we woke up the next morning, we were going outside to see if there were rocks anywhere, but we got out of bed and looked out the window. It looked like something big had ran through our backyard, trampling everything. At first, we could see shadows moving, and it soon kind of materialized and looked like a large person, or maybe some sort of large animal. If somebody was running that fast, they would have made some kind of noise, or at least broken things down in the house. But there were no signs of those things. So what do you think it is? Possibly a skinwalker. Is that what skinwalkers do? Maybe it was something else. Like I said before, my mother is an addict and usually is too high to know what's going on around her. This is why I live with my grandmother. She may have brought home something with her. May have something that hurt us. I just don't know anymore. I never did tell my brother about this day, but he did see it, and swears up and down he saw the same thing that I did. He's not serious when it comes to what people say is real or not, so I think he may have seen something else. If you're familiar with skinwalkers, you know that they usually come when you least expect it. And I can't forget about the smell. My brother and I woke up one morning to a horrible stench in our room. It was like death and decaying flesh, which was pretty much what we thought were skinwalkers. I'm not saying that's what I saw, but we saw something. Also, our grandmother had forewarned us about skinwalkers and to not speak of them. Maybe we really did encounter one, after all. My story does not include the time that I was chased out of my car by something when I attempted to get an image on film. This figure dissipated. First off, for some context, I'm Navajo and live on the largest Native American reservation in North America. I grew up here. The reservation is large enough to be split into three states, Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah, and populated with close-knit villages that are very much self-sufficient. Many people still live in traditional hogans. There's a lot of culture and tradition passed down from our elders. Our reservation also has its own distinct flavor and culture, though it shares much in common with other native tribes. We have our own dialects and cultures within the greater native world. The story I'm about to tell you takes place at one of my favorite spots on the res, Monument Valley Tribal Park. It's located on the valley specifically, where you can stand on a sandstone cliff that tower a thousand feet over the valley floor below. There are various trails throughout the park with mind-bending views in every direction. I've been going there since I was a kid. My family still hunts in that area every year. It's a very special place to me. A sacred site. A place where us natives can go to connect with creation and the creator. I'm bringing this up because it's also one of the most remote spots on or near the res, though not far by the road. You can just drive there. You have to get off the main highway onto dirt roads that are barely passable without four-wheel drive vehicles, except for when it storms. Then, they turn into impassable rivers of mud, snow, and sand. So many locals abandon their cars and hike out, or call the park rangers for rescue when and if they get stuck. It's a treacherous drive under normal conditions, in my experience. To add to the point about remote location and difficult driving conditions, I grew up at a nearby village, nothing like Monument Valley, which is close to the Arizona-Utah border, but still basically in the middle of nowhere. And when you're that far from home, even with cell phones, it can be an incredibly long time before anybody hears your distress signal if something happens to you on one of these roads. Just food for thought. 
It was here that I had my own skinwalker encounter. Something was watching me. Something that smelt and looked like death wrapped in dark, tattered robes. I was fearful. This was also in the evening time. I did not want to stick around and find out more of what this creature or being had to offer me. It was trying to lure me in. Almost like it wanted to give me something. A gift is what I perceived. I wanted no part to play in its dark magic. I stay away from there now. Me and my friends were driving home from a party, and we had to take this dirt road. Our lights went out, and we saw the same figures that my friend described in her story that she had told to us. We were too far afraid to get out of the car, so we sat there for 30 minutes before our lights came back on and these figures disappeared. When I got home, I told my mom about it. She freaked out, said there was a skinwalker sitting nearby, and also there when she was growing up. We live in a pretty small town, so stories like this can accidentally fly under the radar. Well, one night, my friend was staying the night at mine, and she woke up in the middle of the night to see a figure standing above her, looking out from the window. When she screamed, it just disappeared into thin air. I think this skinwalker has been trying to get to my friend since she was young. Her family never believed her. I wouldn't recommend wandering into the woods around here late at night. Even during the day, if you have a dark shadow that haunts you, it's probably a skinwalker. In fact, my aunt actually was haunted by a skinwalker for many, many years, and she's a medical professional and doubted the stories for a very long time. The skinwalker would bang on her house, move things around in ways that could not be done by humans, shine lights into her windows at night, and eventually, it got to the point to where she wasn't comfortable going home. I think that during the time she was actually living with us, because of how uncomfortable she had gotten, this thing will mess with you, and it can become extremely aggressive. I wouldn't recommend messing around with skinwalkers. They're dangerous. Just trust me on this one. I hope that's enough to sway you from wanting to investigate these kinds of things. Once you mess with them, they will never leave you alone. My grandfather told me about the time he went to Bear Lake with some friends when he was in his early 20s. His friend decided that they wanted to set up camp on the other side of the lake, which was much further away than my grandfather liked, due to safety reasons. He begged them not to go, but they would not listen, and began their journey across the lake. As you can imagine, things weren't going well for them. Their boat motor broke down in the middle of the lake, leaving them stranded, and far from help or shore. My grandfather said, Screw it. I'm coming over there myself. He put out on a life jacket, got in a personal raft, and began rowing towards his scared friends. Halfway across the lake, he saw something on the shore, a grayish figure on all fours with black eyes. He got out of his raft, quietly rowed towards it, being very careful not to get too close. The closer he got, he realized what it was. A skinwalker, something that had been haunting Flagstaff for years by then. When my grandfather arrived at his friend's campsite, they asked him what had taken so long. Why wasn't he making any noise? When my grandfather informed them, they immediately packed up their stuff and went back to town in a hurry. My grandfather said there were many more stories, but this one had stuck with him through time. He knew these beings were flat out evil and had no good intentions. I had just graduated from the police academy in Farmington, New Mexico. I was called out to check a report of a cougar chasing children on the Navajo Reservation. This young officer had no training in wildlife, nor had ever seen a wild cougar, so when he arrived at the scene, he was not prepared for what he saw. There were two large dogs approaching him, growling with their hackles raised, fur standing straight up along their backs. As they came closer... He realized that these dogs weighed about 140 pounds each, and they stopped 15 feet away, snarling, threatening, while continuing to glare him down. Now realizing that these were large animals, this new officer drew his weapon, but before he could fire, one of these creatures took off running into the woods. The other gave him a second glance, scooted its rear end back briefly, dropped to its belly, 
and kind of almost awkwardly got up on two legs with a strange gait and kind of disappeared. This officer never saw what he thought was a dog before or since that day. Not like this, anyway. Although this account is certainly interesting, it lacks any support, evidence whatsoever. There's this sense of dark magic looming all over this area. Although, while his report is pretty outlandish, it's not too outlandish if you spent time in this area, and you know that there are shapeshifters and skinwalkers all over the place. This was believed to be a duo of shapeshifters, and trust me, a measly 9mm handgun is not enough to scare them away, or an officer. They'll be back alright. This story takes place in 2012. I was just a sophomore in college. My then girlfriend and I decided to take a late night drive down the main highway. This runs through the reservation on our way home from a visit to a nearby town. There's not much to speak of between our village and anywhere else, so it gets dark very late at night, which a few streetlights or other signs of civilization are around. It can really make for a creepy thing. While we were driving around, one blind curve on an otherwise straight road, there was this massive coyote standing on its hind legs right next to my car, just looking at me while I drove past it. Who knows how close it actually got, but I had some space around me for obvious reasons. Next thing I knew, it wasn't there anymore. It was like it had teleported off in the road. The most bizarre and unsettling part about this whole experience, besides how close we were to whatever that was, is that I did not hear a single thing. No growling, no scuffling, nothing. Just silence, and then it wasn't there. It's still hard for me to believe that something can be next to your car one moment, but gone the next, without you ever hearing a peep. Especially since my windshield was down at the time. I don't know exactly what people think about that night. People have told me stories to what I've experienced before, but never with such detail or immediacy. I have always considered myself to be a skeptic, but even the most cynical among us must admit there are things in this world that we will continue to doubt until they're proven beyond any doubt. My girlfriend and I both felt a sense of terror. I feel like that's what it was. It sounds silly now, looking back. Neither one of us really knew anything about skinwalkers at the time. We didn't know what we saw wasn't real, but, but a new risk or other type of forced spirit. After some more discussing it for some time, we decided not to tell anybody about it, besides our friend, since he had already heard stories from our village before. None of us could understand why something would want to scare us. I wish we had known about skinwalkers then. Maybe it wouldn't have seemed so scary or unusual. Maybe not. My mom and sister were driving home from a wake in Farmington, New Mexico. It was about 3 a.m. They were driving down this highway, and all of a sudden, something ran out onto the road in front of them. The car hit whatever it was. It rolled to a stop in the middle of the road. They got out, expecting there to be a dead animal, but instead found a person standing in front of them completely naked. She had no hair, also no teeth. Her skin was very pale and looked very strange. She did not say anything, just stared at my mom and sister like she wanted to eat them or something. My mother informs me her expression was very unnerving. They both sat there staring back at her for several minutes until my sister finally broke the silence. Are you alright? My mom then said that the girl looked at her, started screaming really loud. It was terrible and frightening. They both jumped back in the car and drove out of there as fast as they could. Now, my sister swears up and down it wasn't a dream or even sleep paralysis. She will never be able to sleep again because of what she saw or drive that section of road. She did tell me, though, of a time that she was haunted by one of these things in her sleep, though. When she was younger, her and her boyfriend were sleeping in the same bed. She started getting woken up by this feeling like somebody was watching them. So she opened her eyes to check out what was going on. And there, staring back at her from right over the edge of the bed, where her head would be under the covers, it was a person's face. No teeth or hair, just pale skin and very skeletal looking, almost hovering above. She eventually stopped seeing these things, but never stopped feeling that awful sense of terror in her room. 
In fact, she believes this thing followed her around, that there's an evil presence lurking in her life. In 2012, I was employed as a forest ranger patrolling St. Joe National Forest here in Missouri. I was responsible for law enforcement aspects of the job. During this time, my patrol area included what is now Springfield Branson National Airport, also commonly known as KSGF. My first night shift on duty, sometime between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., I patrolled around KSGF before returning to my assigned ranger district headquarters near Hollister, just prior to sunrise, right around 4.30 a.m. Well, a few weeks later, at about 16.30 hours, I responded to a report of a teenage male subject who had been attacked by three unidentified canine creatures while camping with friends along Big Creek, only about one mile east of Highway 86, which passes over Highway J, about three miles north of Hollister. The subject stated that he had heard something moving through the brush he first believed it to be a deer or a raccoon until the unidentified canine creatures emerged from the woods, surrounding them, yellow eyes and looking somewhat humanoid. The teenagers initially tried to drive away, but weren't able to. Their vehicle was surrounded, and they were abandoned. After being attacked, they fled into the surrounding brush, but their pursuers followed them to the brambles, where they continued running for some time before finally escaping by climbing up a very steep embankment along Highway J, then cutting back down Big Creek towards their campsite. The father of one of these youths telephoned my office on discovery of some large paw prints left behind by unknown animals at the same location only days after the incident. I had previously spoken to him during an unrelated investigation, so he had recognized my name on caller ID when I called him back. I immediately went to the location, Highway J, where he had previously showed me these large paw prints in the soft dirt embankment right along the shoulder less than 24 hours earlier. The father explained that they couldn't be certain of what made them, but were concerned about their proximity to his son's attack, which was only a couple of miles away, as well as some strange events at their farm several weeks prior. I found five different sets of tracks left behind something very heavy, having long strides and non-aggressive behavior, leading down across Big Creek through a thick underbrush before Highway 86 towards an adjacent property. These tracks were all more than 14 inches in length, 7 or 8 inches wide, and right and left hind foot impressions. Upon following the tracks up to their point of origin, I discovered a series of very large barefoot human-like footprints from which these tracks originated. It was like something had walked through Big Creek and into this man's property, without leaving any visible sign that it had crossed over into his property, except for some strange human-like footprints left behind in the mud, all along the creek bank. Am I saying it's a skinwalker? I don't know. Is it possibly a Bigfoot? I don't know. What's odd to me is that the subject described these canines as very humanoid-looking, in the face, not just how they moved and acted. It leads me to believe... This was a gang of shapeshifter or skinwalkers, but I can't be 100% certain. That's what the witness and subject believes. Hello, my name is Evan, and one day, during the month of May in 2010, I was in the desert with my father in New Mexico. It was right around 2 in the morning, and we saw something dark in the hills moving toward us. It looked kind of human but it was on all fours. As it got closer, we realized it was not a human on all fours, but an animal that stood up like a man. We first thought it might have been somebody passed out or hurt, and then we seen its eyes glowing yellow, and we knew right away this was nobody in a costume or a person. My dad ran as fast as he could to the truck, tried running back there too, but before I can get past those hills, whatever it was came up from behind me, chased after me until I finally made it to the truck. Its eyes are forever burned into my memory. I have never seen anything like that before in my life. It's not something I ever want to see again either. You know, the desert is very quiet at night. The bushes being so silent. The way they sway back and forth. The only thing you can ever hear are the coyotes howling in the distance, or maybe even a howl hooting away. But nothing too crazy. 
That was until I had seen this dark figure who stood upright on two legs, much like a man would, running towards me from far within the hilltops of New Mexico. My father ran back to his truck as he saw whatever was running, gaining on me. I tried to follow after him, my father, but before I could get past those hills, whatever it had been coming up from behind me nearly got to me before I fled. My father and I have no idea what it was, but we believe it to be a skinwalker. I had just returned to the States after serving in the military in Afghanistan. I was living on my parents' farm, just outside of town. I had just set up my own outbuilding for my new workshop. It was late summer, hot, but not too humid. It was about 1.12 in the morning. I decided to step outside for a shop for break. The night sky was clear, filled with stars, but there were no clouds that night, which made it very bright from the moonlight. I sat there for a moment, enjoying the peace and quiet, when I looked over and saw what I thought was a star moving across the sky, until it became very apparent that this star hadn't been there, and was now getting larger and closer. This thing continued in its path right over me, heading towards a wooded area behind my shop. As it approached a tree line, I noticed there were two bright white lights, about the size of small beams in front of it what I can only describe as a gray football-shaped mass. The object was completely silent, gliding close to treetop level when it passed over me. I could see all along the bottom edges of this thing. There were rows and very dim lighting coming from within. I stood in complete awe for a few moments and realized something was happening here in the woods where the object was headed. So I ran inside and tried to grab my video camera to record this, not much is clear, though, but you can see enough of exactly what I saw. The object comes into a clearing where it slows, just hovers there for a few moments, then slowly descends into the woods. It could be seen briefly just below the tree line as it disappears from view. I waited on my porch for an hour or more hoping to see some more signs of activity, but nothing ever returned, so I went back inside to get some sleep. I had been working pretty much non-stop since getting home from Afghanistan. If only this thing would have given me something to show. It never did, though. And that was almost ten years ago now. No one has ever really believed me until I found this website and started reading other stories and realized that, yes, I'm not alone. Now, here's the other thing, too. In conjunction with this, there's also been a mass uptick in skinwalker sightings all around here. It seems that somehow... UFOs and these beings are somehow connected, and it still haunts my memory. Something else I should include is a story from a friend. He sent this in to me, and so I will share it with you. It reads this. I was camping in the Aberfoyle region of Ontario with some friends. It was around two in the morning. One of our friends went to relieve herself. She came back rather quickly, white as a sheet, the rest of us had asked what had happened. She just told us that she saw the ugliest thing. It was about seven feet tall and covered in white hair. She says whatever it was looked at her and disappeared. Our friend has never been the same since, or camped since then. This was a camping trip in northern Arizona. Me and my other friend who were driving down from Utah were camping at this lake. We had been there for about three days, but one night, me and him are going to go explore the place around the lake. The sky was pitch black, except for a crescent moon shining through the high thin clouds. We went on our walk, leaving our other buddy back at camp sleeping. As we got closer to the dark side of the huge mountain, that you can see pretty much everything on top of it. It is some sort of plant or shrubbery. I saw something moving. I took off faster than any human possibly could, running up into the forest right next to us in less than five seconds flat. That's when I also heard heavy breathing and a low, guttural growl. But me and my friend heard it, and we began walking fast and did not stop looking behind us until we were back at the campsite. We told our other friend to pack up and get in the car. We felt like something was going on. Something was following us. When it got really late... I began hearing what sounded like huge feet stomping on stones all around the forest. 
it definitely wasn't an animal from around here. There was no sounds of anything I was familiar with. I think, and from what my buddies speculate, this had to have been a skinwalker. I know it might sound absurd, but that's about as reasonable as anything else in my opinion. My two friends who were with me swear that they saw one, and they're not lying either. They've mentioned it before. If you don't know what a skinwalker is, Google it. I'm not going to go into explanation. I don't want to talk about this anymore. If anyone knows if they're real, please tell me. It would be appreciated. The last thing I want to see is a huge black shadow with eyes and a bloody mouth hovering over my tent at night. This story takes place in South Dakota. We were staying in a tiny cabin on the top of a hill from an old ranch. Late one night, as we're all sitting around the campfire and drinking beer and smoking weed, our friend's brother came running up from behind, chasing something, swearing he'd seen a massive cat or lion-sized animal running into the woods. Naturally, we were all joking about him tripping on something, but not long after, he came back up and swore he had seen this massive black humanoid running low to the ground, disappearing into the tree line at the very bottom of the hill. Now, we were all freaked out, so we decided to go looking for it. It was dark and there shouldn't have been anybody else around. We got down there, found nothing, then split up, which was probably our first mistake. As soon as that happened, I saw what I guess you'd call a light anomaly or shimmering in some trees maybe 50 feet away. It appeared kind of like heat rising off tarmac, except it sort of moved both right and left and up and down. At this point, I was terrified and quickly ran back to the group who were both still searching for something. I told them what I'd seen. They went back with me, quick to show everybody else, which by this point was now really freaking out. The shimmering disappeared as we got down there. After about three minutes, it appeared again in the same spot, only now different. It's hard to explain, but instead of moving through the trees like before, it now kind of stayed still making no sounds other than our footsteps. We all saw it flicker on and off several times throughout ten minutes or so. One guy even tried luring it over with a lighter, but nothing happened, so we decided to go to shelter in the cabin. At this, my friend told us he'd seen the shimmering in the small lake on the other side of the cabin, right about midnight. Safe to say, we all slept with the lights on that night. Who knows what kind of creatures, like skinwalkers, were looming out there. I was camping up in Washington State, but before I began, let me make clear that this is not a joke or some BS made up creepypasta. This all happened, for real. I went camping at Big Four Ice Caves on September 9th, 2015. My best friend as well, who is also a very avid camper. On our way there, we ran into some ridiculously foggy weather, and it got to be about five inches away from us when we finally found the spot we wanted to camp at. Now, this spot was at least 10 miles away from any road, so nobody would bother us. We set up our tents, and before we went to sleep, I had my good buddy stand guard outside while I slept. I was pretty sure there were other things out here. We took shifts. On the 10th day, I awake to what sounded like a girl screaming in pain, followed by strange thumping noises. At first, I figured it was one of my friends just playing a trick on me, but that idea faded when they didn't answer back, and I yelled at them. The scream started. Whatever was out there sounded closer than ever. There were definitely multiple people shouting in unison, with all sorts of voices. This continued for about 20 minutes, until the thumping noise got even closer, and the sound of trees snapping came into the mix. Right before I fell asleep, somebody whispered, Come with us. Really close to my ear. But I was already so exhausted, I just ignored it, sleeping right through it. The next morning, I woke up and noticed that my friend was not outside on guard duty like he said he would be. Alarm bells started going off in my head. I made a lot of noise to wake him up. When he got out of his tent, he looked dazed, as if he had no idea how or why he was there, instead of being outside where he said he would be. He had bruises on his arms and legs 
which were also bleeding pretty badly. We went back home immediately after this horrific experience. We don't want to be out there anymore. We found out later on that the area camped at was under investigation as a hotspot for skinwalker sightings and encounters by a paranormal researcher team. We also had heard voices of our other family members and friends during the time we were out there. More so my friend than I, but he would later on tell me that. The whole experience was downright terrifying. We'll start at the beginning. My friend and I used to play together as kids, hunting ghosts in abandoned buildings, cemeteries, etc. The usual childhood fun. I had always considered her a very good friend. We did everything together back then. It was hard to stay mad at each other for long, even when we went through some really bad stuff, or we were being stupid making bad decisions. So one time, one of my other friends comes along with us on a ghost hunt because he wants to try and take pictures. And we're sitting there talking, my friend and I, and we get into a little argument about something. And all of a sudden, she kind of froze up, like she was distracted by something else. She kept looking around the parking lot while occasionally glancing at me with this look of horror on her face, but wasn't really saying anything. I asked her what was up, or maybe she saw something. So after asking her if she saw something weird or whatever, it took me a second to realize that my friend had stopped talking too, and wasn't even attempting to take pictures anymore. He too stood there staring off like nothing. Literally nothing. Every time I asked him if he saw or heard anything, he just acted like he didn't say anything and continued to stare off. My friend was the same way, both turning back, expecting either everybody else had vanished or they were playing a prank on me. But there was nothing. Just an empty parking lot with tattered up old brick buildings surrounding it. So I can't really explain what happened. But it will always stick out in my mind as one of the few times I was never able to come up with some sort of explanation for what I was witnessing. Well, I should say what they were witnessing. I didn't see anything. They both got even more nervous and told me we need to leave now. I just went along with it and we left. Well, in the car, they both stayed incredibly quiet, not speaking much of a word. After pushing their buttons enough, my friend didn't say anything but my other friend, the girl, she said that there was a large coyote watching us from behind one of the buildings that it had glowing red eyes and was very, very tall. Taller than her dad, who's six foot four. She told me she instantly knew deep down in her gut we were being watched by a skinwalker. I was scouting out in Idaho in the Sawtooth Mountains. This was just a few weeks ago and it is very desolate where I was. No towns or anything for a good 20 miles. I had my dog with me off a leash, which is very rare as he isn't the most obedient of dogs, but I felt this was right. Besides, there wasn't anybody else around for miles, so no big deal, I thought, right? He started acting funny as soon as we came within about five feet of this dark object that seemed to be embedded into the ground from an old landslide about 15 feet away, just down a small incline. He would not get any closer even though all I could see was stones that were kind of radiating dark blue. We got a really bad vibe off it. The closer we got and the more we inquired about it. I quickly scanned my surroundings because, after that, I no longer felt safe. But I didn't see anything else, so I grabbed my dog by the collar and began to walk away. Just then, I started hearing noises around me, like something big was coming. My dog looked back at it three or four times before we got back on our ATV that had all of our supplies. Once we were up on the seat, I felt a lot better, but when I looked back, the stone was gone. I tried not to think about it for several days, because when you do, your mind starts running through every conceivable scenario, even though you know what you saw is impossible and ridiculous in today's society. From what I gather from other natives, this was a skinwalker sigil even though I'm still confused and kind of want to go back there. So, even though that's what I've heard, does anybody else know what this could have been? Because it's kind of driving me insane. 
around the time I was 23 years old. My family moved from our home city of Las Vegas, Nevada, up to Utah, where we lived for another five years. The area we were moving into was surrounded by rocky hills and cliffs on all sides. On top of one of these mountains recited what I thought at the time was an abandoned mine, which we often explored during the summer months. We found old crumbling cabins and mostly useless tools, but nothing much more than that. One day, while exploring this very mine, we had all heard loud shrieking noises that sounded like nails on a chalkboard. I took off running back to the cabin where my family was, but they asked me why I was breathing so hard and what terrified me. I couldn't tell them because, at the time, I didn't know myself. Well, about an hour had passed, and we decided to go looking for my sister, who had now gone missing shortly after she had wandered away from us, in search of some type of animal or something that she could show her friends later. I didn't catch it all. Now, keep in mind that this area wasn't exactly friendly for kids, wandering around due to the cliffs and rocks. So, as was feared by having such dense brush and even rattlesnakes, steep terrain, we were unable to find her. We had to end up calling police for assistance, which prompted a big search party of at least 50 people to enter the mine looking for her. Several hours passed before she was finally found after wandering into another abandoned mine. This was much further down on the mountainside. It was impossible to see from outside these old mines. Now, every time I think back on this experience, I can't help but feel as though it wasn't an ordinary event. Something inside me tells me there's more than meets the eye. It also happened around October or November, if my memory serves me well enough. Although these things are hardly ever exact, because of how easily memories are transformed or misplaced. But anyway, when I talked to my sister about it, she claims there was this one large tall shadow that kind of looked like a large dog, she said, and it lured her into the mines. She claims that it kind of had a hold on her and was almost controlling her the same way a puppet master controls a puppet. Very eerie. Was this a being, an alien, a skinwalker? I don't know, but it certainly creeps me out. We were camping at my friend's house, but decided to go inside once it felt too creepy outside this night. We were all just hanging out there, and his mom was there with her, with her two dogs. There is a window, right above where the couch is. We always leave it open, so the dogs can go in and out of their little kennel thingy outside during the night. So, my friend's mom goes upstairs to get something. Seconds later, she comes down super fast and tells us we have to go back outside now. Well, once I saw her face, I jumped up. It looked like she had seen a ghost or something. When I began walking towards the door, she said, no, not that way. Go out this door. We do. What she says, but our dogs are already inside at this point, so we couldn't just let them stay in there when we went back outside. She said to get in the truck, and she would be out in a minute. And so we did. We waited for like ten minutes before our friend's parents drove up. His mom was in the passenger seat but I swear it looked like she was holding something that kind of looked like a dog. It wasn't moving, though. Her face is still haunting because of how horrified she looked. I asked my friend if he saw what I saw, and he said, yes, what you were thinking. So whatever it was ended up being in the car with them when they left. This stuff always happens at my friend's house, so whatever it is likes to visit him. Not every so often, but enough to freak us out a few times a year. I swear, if this is true... My friend's mom used to work as a 911 dispatcher, so she knows what she saw and heard that night just as well as we do. I've been trying to find out if anybody else has ever seen the thing near the woods, but no luck. My friend has also claimed that sometimes when he looks at his mom, she's possessed by a skinwalker, that it'll look like she's holding a dog in her hand or part of a dog, like a dog's skull, or that part of her flesh is becoming canine and looking like she's holding a dog. It's hard to explain but as if some of her limbs and body parts are becoming canine, which would make sense and resemble why it looks like she's holding a dog. Really creepy stuff. And she'll also just say things that are completely out of her mind, like telling us we needed to go outside now and go into the truck, when there was clearly nothing out there. It's like she was having a methed out episode, even though she never does meth. I don't know. The whole thing is very strange. I'm not quite sure what to think about it. 
I don't want to exactly entertain the idea of skinwalkers, but it's just very, very strange. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. I've had a sort of paranormal life experience since I was a child. I don't know if it's because of my family or just it's natural to my bloodline. But my father would tell stories about his own childhood in which he was missing chunks of his memories. But he believes they may have been taken away by something. He said there were usually other people with him who had disappeared from time to time as well as he could never remember who or accounted for when looking at photos. It bothered me a lot growing up especially the night terrors. I often experienced these where I'd wake up screaming and feel paralyzed, unable to move, feeling like something or somebody was holding me down or on top of me, although I'd see nothing. What really had solidified my suspicion about something being off, however, was seeing the things for the past few years. I have a great deal of curiosity about this world, and often seek understanding by reading books on different subjects and going to museums, etc., so naturally, when I saw a book in the used bookstore about theories surrounding skinwalkers, I was intrigued and bought it home with me. While doing research for a school paper later that evening, something caught my attention. It was from one of the sources where I had seen what looked like an animal skull painted silver, hanging from leather straps attached to a ceremonial-looking bead, leading up to two lines coming from its mouth, appearing to be reptilian teeth. I knew what this was. It was not an art piece, but something very, very real. It was a ritualistic, ceremonial tool, used to draw in evil spirits, although primarily used to expel them, but this object attracted them. And at nighttime, I would have these terrors of seeing this tall, humanoid shadow staring at me from my room, just looking into me from the window. It's hard to describe in words how much fear you have when you feel like something or somebody is constantly watching you. I just have a feeling that this is a skinwalker, and I know it's been spying on me every single night. I don't know what its plans are, I don't know what it wants to do to me, but it does not feel good, and there's a lot of times I simply don't feel safe anymore. So I moved out almost two years ago, and one time, I saw what appeared to be an arm coming from around the tree, almost touching the window, as if it were simply trying to pull the window open. It was a long, white, deathly-looking arm. Deathly pale, of course. With my mother's passing, I've come to peace with some of this, and more so than ever. I want answers now. I feel there is a very real connection between these spirits, paranormal, and the supernatural. And what one would call UFOs or extraterrestrial. As we all know, whether you are religious or not, there's no proof that denies both them exist. At least on some level yet for years, People have been ridiculed into thinking that anything paranormal does not exist, just because it can't be explained completely by science yet. So, therefore, it must not exist? Well, the house I grew up in had a history of fire and death, and I often confused our activity with that, however. After time, I realized it wasn't the same. My mother's passing was unexpected. Definitely traumatic, though in no way believe it is the cause of this activity which is always seeming to be around me. Now, my older sister lives there now, and my father passed away in 2009. She swears up and down that she'll move out when she gets enough money for a place. Something about not wanting to live in fear, yet never leaves her room at night, nor does she ever leave her shades up, and I've seen some strange lights in that room many times. Odd shadows, but mostly on the ceiling. But more than anything... I've heard insanely odd things that I can't explain. It still makes me feel very uneasy to this day. Fortunately, I'm in college now and no longer live in the house, but I found myself trying to find information about whatever it is we're all experiencing. I mean, speaking with others about their experiences is all a part of the learning. I believe we're being haunted here, and not just by ghosts or poltergeists or demons, but by actual demonic spirits like a skinwalker, for example. Part of me wants to know more. I want proof of what I've seen and heard, although part of me, deep down, does not. I'm afraid of finding out too much, especially considering my sister's reluctance on wanting to know either, and the fact that she believes there are spirits or ghosts still lingering around her. 
which keeps her up at night, and even though she swears she sees nothing, she can hear and feel something staring at her often, the same way I could when I lived in that house. But I can say with 100% certainty that what we and I have heard and seen has changed our lives forever. I was returning from one of my research outings, eager to bask in the glory of the day's findings. I had spent most of my day exploring an old abandoned cabin in the woods for any clues about maybe past inhabitants. The only things I found were dated furniture and a few empty liquor bottles. That was really all that's left, besides other trash and graffiti. There was no evidence of anybody living there or being there recently, or at all. But something felt off. The feeling that I was not alone followed me around like a fog, much thicker than the one accompanying me through these parts. It was late evening when I decided to pack it up for tonight and head home. My car sat right off the main road on an overgrown dirt path, not somewhere you'd expect to find anything other than thick vegetation and lots of mosquitoes. I pulled in, spotting my friend's car already there. She had called me earlier today, asking if I would take a look at something she thought could be paranormal. I was only too happy, as it gave me an excuse to explore more of these woods that had always intrigued me. Getting out of the car and grabbing my backpack filled with gear, I noticed something odd, but could not put my finger on what seemed off about this scene. I immediately shrugged it off as nothing and proceeded over to greet my friend who was standing by her car, talking on the phone. Before heading into the woods, where she said she saw the activity, I was halfway to her, when I too stopped dead in my tracks. That strange feeling I had earlier came creeping back, but this time, it was accompanied by a cold chill and goosebumps on my arm. The air felt thick and heavy, and I could hear the crackling of fire, followed by the faintest sounds of chanting coming from further within the woods. This combination gave me an eerie feeling, making my hair stand on end. Something wasn't right, at all. But before I could process it fully, something just drew me into these woods, as if under some kind of spell. I knew I had to be cautious and watch my back, in case whatever it was there decided to follow. But for some reason, I felt confident that this feeling would not hurt me. And that's when it hit me. The air didn't just feel thick. It also smelt like sulfur and rotten eggs, along with rotting meat and garbage. But surely, such a smell couldn't be coming from only one source. It was overwhelming, almost making me sick to my stomach, whatever it was. The chanting became louder, and the crackling of fire grew even ever closer, until we came upon a small clearing, revealing another old cabin. This had a ring of lit torches surrounding it, and piles of piles of human bones placed neatly in rows on either side of the door. It took everything in me not to scream when I saw this, and I realized what was causing the smell was not hidden in the shadows, like my instincts had told me, but standing right there in the clearing, wearing some kind of animal garb around its waist like a loincloth, holding an intricately carved wooden staff. My friend's phone fell from her hand when she turned to me with fear in her eyes and began to back away slowly. I must have looked just as frightened. What happened next sent both of us running out of the woods for our lives. This figure turned to us, and we realized this was somebody, probably a witch, with an adorned animal skull covering their head, covered in animal cloth, and began chanting at us as if they were casting a hex on us. We fled safely back to our car, locking ourselves inside before starting the car and leaving. We're very thankful to even be alive. I was the only person home, so it had to be me. I was in my room with the door shut, and it happened around 5 p.m. Central Time. As soon as I turned off my bedroom light, which went out shortly after turning it on, because there was a power outage at the time, I saw a shadowy figure come into my room through the window. This window is always unlocked. And not only that, but also opened slightly. This is how I cooled down my room. And as quickly as it came in for a split second, it stopped, looked at me from across the room, staring intently with black eyes, close together, and kind of with this menacing expression, as if it didn't see me. 
and then it noticed me and wanted to kill me. It or he stood there for what felt like forever. Then all of a sudden, it kind of made this grin and disappeared out the window as fast as lightning. I was too scared to move, yet somehow I managed to get under my covers. Then, right before I fell asleep, which somehow I almost managed to do, I could swear that I could feel his face come across the bottom of my bedroom window. This has been a reoccurrence multiple times, and the other times, instead of a black shadow coming into my room, I will see this kind of lanky figure approach my window and just stare in. When I see this person, it looks like a man covered in war paint with glowing yellow eyes, covered with wolf skin, maybe like a Native American warrior, or so it physically reminds me of. Is it possible that I'm being hunted or haunted by a demonic skinwalker spirit? Or is this just some sort of witch? This has been going on and off now for the past couple years since living here. I'm terribly frightened. Although it doesn't happen every night, it's often enough to where I feel like this guy or thing has it out for me, for whatever reason. Nobody else in the house I live in has these issues. It's only me. So it really makes you wonder... Is there any sort of curses or blessings I can get to counter this? Can you counter a skinwalker with other curses? Do you need any sort of sigil, ornament, idol, or object at all for any sort of protection? I've heard salt works, but I'm not too sure. I've already done and blessed the house with sage. That doesn't seem to really work, at least from my experience. I've had a friend that had a very similar haunting, I guess you can call it, and it worked for him. For me, it seems like whoever or whatever this is can change shape between a physical being and a demonic shadow being, or so I think, which is why all results come down to a skinwalker, I believe. But I could be wrong. If anybody has answers, please help me. So, this happened a few months ago, but here it goes. I live in a very rural part of North Carolina. We have a lot of forest around us and lots of wildlife constantly going through our yard. One night, me and my boyfriend were just sitting outside on the porch, just casually talking. It was about 8pm and already kind of dark. You know how it gets when it's dusk out, where the sun kind of just lingers in the sky, and the sky is kind of a red, purple, hueish color. It's beautiful. There were no lights on inside of our house, so everything was pretty much just shadows. We were now facing our gravel road that came from the back of our house and leading into a wooded area. We saw something walking on two legs down the road. It wasn't too dark, at least not so much that we couldn't see it, but we got a pretty good look. At first, I thought it was another human walking towards us, but it stopped in front of a tree, right near one of the horse fences, and began sniffing the air like an animal. We could tell by the way its head moved that it was smelling for sure the same way a dog does when it sniffs the air. Except this was clearly a person. It did not have a tail. And the more we kind of looked at it and the more our eyes adjusted, it appeared to be a person in animal skins or something. Because we did not see a snout. Although whoever it was was definitely acting very strange. Since we lived near a bunch of farms, mostly soybeans this time of year, there is usually a lot going on with the smells anyway. They get fertilized, etc., after having his nose to the wind for about 30 seconds, he stops and his whole body changed. He went from looking at us to being completely turned in our direction with this look that I have never seen before on a human or an animal. He was big and very broad, but his head looked small in comparison to the rest of him, like a bobblehead. His legs were muscular and was bent over at the waist with his palms against the ground. It looked like he could spring forward at any second. His skin was more blackish gray, under the light of the moon. Kind of like if you burn tree bark until it's black, but more smooth and coarse. When we locked eyes, he was not looking up though. I knew there was no way he thought I was another, because it felt like we connected in some way. But not in a good way. It was the most intense eerie feeling I've ever felt, and I can't really begin to describe it. We were just sat there, frozen, staring at each other. This went on for probably five seconds. But I began to be concerned. There's no way he could have heard us. 
and we weren't making any noise. So if he wasn't looking behind him before, how did he know we were there? It was like he all of a sudden just knew. We both jumped up, running inside, turning on the lights, turning off the porch light. He stopped where he had been sitting, staring in our windows for another second or two before disappearing in the woods as quick as lightning. It was definitely creepy. The only thing me and my boyfriend could come to was that he was possibly some sort of shapeshifter. So we immediately jump on the internet and we're trying to do all the research we can. We looked at things like Dogman and Bigfoot. Didn't exactly fit. UFO, Mothman, again, did not fit. And then we came across Wendigos and Skinwalkers. This did seem to be a person wearing animal skins. So all of that led us to Skinwalker. I couldn't exactly tell if he was native or had war paint on or what, but we saw enough details and how he was acting that it was definitely giving off very bad vibes. I really do think this was some sort of skinwalker. I've heard many stories of the skinwalkers from where I lived. The Navajo people say you can tell a skinwalker by their reflection in a mirror. They don't have one. Anyway... My friend that I was hanging out with said his family owned a very large ranch and that he would show me. He said it was really far back into the mountains. Not many people went there because of all the weird things going on. We got to go to his house, but nobody was around. So we killed time by taking a nap. In the middle of our nap, we heard howling noises coming from outside. We got up to look, thinking it must be coyotes or something since these were farm animals being kept nearby. As soon as I looked outside, through the window, I saw a huge wolf that was on its hind legs. It had to be at least seven feet tall. We both got so scared we ran back inside, locking the door. We figured if it had front paws like a dog, but the height of a man, there was no point in trying to outrun whatever it was. It's not like we could shoot at it. My friend did not have a rifle with him. While we were waiting for the creature to go away before we left, suddenly, my friend's father came through another door asking why we were here. Not only did he own this place, but he also hadn't been any werewolves around this area, ever, according to him. He had overheard us. Needless to say, this place just gave me the chills, and we quickly left. I am aware that there is a mass Native American gravesite close by, within a mile or two. I wonder if the wolf creature we saw has anything at all to do with that. I live on the Navajo Nation Reservation, and some nights ago, in early September of 2014, there were four of us hanging out at my friend's house. We were drinking beer, two girls and two guys all in our mid-twenties, which is old compared to the teens who usually do this kind of stuff. We were all sitting in front of the house, around a fire pit, and nothing but darkness behind us. It was raining pretty hard outside. All of a sudden, we noticed something moving against the fence toward the back of my friend's property. Oh, I should also include. Even though we were all sitting by a fire pit, this whole area is covered by a very large and tall awning. This way we can be out here and not get rained on, and also not get smoked out. At first, I thought it was a stray dog, but as it got closer, I saw that its hair was matted and it made a strange sound. My friend even said, Dude, there's something grunting by your house. He heard the leaves crunching, not sure what they were from. But we were all certain this skinwalker seemed very familiar with what he was doing. My friend's sister came and walked out of the house to see what was going on. She heard some of the commotion. This thing ran 20 feet in one quick stride, turned around, and looked right at her. I did not even expect it when she screamed. I only heard the leaves crunching, which is how he had been moving. And this time, though, we were all sitting exactly where we were before, when this whole thing began. When she screamed, we all ran into the house and grabbed our two guns. The skinwalker was literally just standing there outside by a tree, staring at us through the window. No emotion on his face whatsoever for about five seconds. And he slowly walked around the house, tapping it with his claw. My friend's parents have seen him walking through here before in broad daylight. All of us were sober, 
and we all know each other well enough to trust our testimonies. We're not stupid, and we're not going out drinking and being like, oh, I saw a skinwalker. Some people do, and they probably just want attention or thinking it's cool. We all still talk about it every day when we see each other. It freaked us out pretty bad, even though we knew what was happening. If you ever get to meet one of these things, your life is basically over afterwards, or so it feels like. It's like you've seen something really close to death or God himself, whatever you believe in. But usually, they prefer hunter's kids around my age-ish and family pets. It's often easier to catch them, and we're more important, I guess. Don't drink or smoke out in the woods around this time, especially not at night. You very well might draw these things in. They will know when you're high or inebriated, and they like that. It makes you weaker since you are under the influence. In 2016, this took place near the Pine Barrens. My family, friend, and I were driving home late at night. We'd seen some weird stuff out there before, including cult activity, but that's a story for another time. This time, though, we didn't see any of that really, but it's what my friend saw on his property. He lives not too far from me. That spooked us all pretty good. He said that he was walking to get something out of his car, and all of a sudden, he hears heavy breathing behind him. When he turned around to look, of course, there was nothing there. But the bushes were moving, like somebody had come through them. This continued on for about 10 seconds and stopping right before the road curved towards the house. We all got chills. Both our houses are in clear sight of where this happened. I was going to walk back there with him, but he said no. We told him we'd come by the next day and stay out of there with him for a bit, just in case. I did not sleep that night. This is not the first time I've had weird disturbances outside when something like this has happened. It's always stayed on my mind. A few months later, he moved into another house with his girlfriend, and he saw the creature. At least thinks that it's what he saw, but more on the encounter story later. He says that this thing would come up to his house every night and taunt him. It would slowly drag its hand across the house paneling every night, right around 1.30 in the morning, like clockwork, and never failed. And one evening, he got so frightened and fed up, he went out into his shop, grabbed his shotgun, and got ready, filled it full of buckshot. He didn't plan on killing this because he knew it was a skinwalker and knew it was part human but he definitely wanted to intimidate it and scare it away. It stopped coming around after that, but then appeared again about two or three months later. Sometimes at night, he would hear it calling his name in his girlfriend's voice. It would be this crackly, distorted form of his girlfriend's voice, but it would scare the heck out of him. Now, his girlfriend also worked the night shift, so she was never home from about 7 p.m. to 5 a.m., the prime time for this thing to stalk him, which it did many times over and over again. There were times that he got so fed up, he felt like he was going mad, going crazy. What can you do? Call the police? They're not going to believe you. They'll call you crazy, threaten to take you to the nut house, which is what they did to him. He tried shooting at it, but this thing simply alluded to the shadows. Wyatt marked my friend, I'm not sure. Why it had something out for him. Maybe it had plans or something. Maybe there's a reason it had marked him. To my knowledge, he had never done anything or told me he had done anything to piss it off or aggravate it or insult him or her in any way, shape, or form. But I could very well be wrong. It seems like this thing didn't want to kill him, just torment him. He and I both talked about it and we believe... If this thing really wanted to break into the house, it could have. So why didn't it? Why was it so bent on just torturing him and tormenting him psychologically? What did it get out of it? Is Andrinochrome really that special and obsessive for skinwalkers and cryptids? Do they really get off on fear the way everybody says they do in these encounter stories? Well, after a while, he eventually convinced his girlfriend to move closer to her work, which they did only staying in that house for about eight months. Well, after that, all the encounters stopped happening altogether. 
and thankfully for me, I haven't seen or experienced anything like it either. As an 18-year-old student studying in the U.S., I took part in an international exchange program. I was sent to live with a family friend who lived on 40 acres of land out in the middle of nowhere. We have no neighbors within five miles, so we're completely secluded by nature. It's not unusual. It's very rural. People don't come around here too often. And it's all good, if you're from the city like me. Now, there were only two rules placed upon my stay there. That I did not go near any of the four ponds that dotted the property. I saw this as an adventure. And that I made sure to lock up before bed, right around 9.45 p.m. Easy enough. Well, it turns out they had to every reason to make these rules. Among the many fish ponds on this property, one was slightly larger than the others, and it was surrounded by thick, dense trees and shrubs. It had a very deceptive depth to it. It looked shallow, but would go down deep enough that I could not even touch the bottom. A few days into my stay here, I spotted something in this pond that seemed out of place. About halfway into this thing, there were what appeared to be legs sticking out of its side, which made me look twice. And one night, I saw what appeared to be a large dark figure rising out of the water from the very center of the pond. And I don't mean just climbing out or swimming out, but actually almost ascending and levitating out of the water surface, to where it did not even touch the surface of the water, but instead landed on the shore. Like it hovered out of the water. It was incredibly creepy, and I tried to ignore it the best I could. I didn't think it was appropriate to say anything, so I kept my mouth shut. Tonight, at about 7.30 p.m., I was relaxing inside after doing my homework in front of the fire, and I heard one of the family's German shepherds begin going frantic crazy outside, barking. Sounded like she had come in from being out in the yard, and something spooked her pretty badly. As soon as I heard her barking outside in our direction, I informed my boyfriend, who also lives there, to go see him what was wrong. He has an intimidating presence for most who don't know him. He's 6'2", covered in tattoos. He might seem like a thug, but he's a good guy. He goes outside to calm her down, comes back in a second later saying, you need to come take a look at this. And I look, and I could see something huge and black darting across the yard, right over by where the pond was. The same pond that I saw the same dark figure arise from just the other night. Whatever it appeared to be was very, very large and it worked and moved like a human being. I stepped outside and saw exactly what had scared them both so badly. On the front porch, what you might call a large man. It stood about 6'5", which is tall. Jet black hair down below its shoulders. It looked sort of like a demon, and its eyes shined and glowed red in the darkness of the night, while it showed its pearly white teeth glistening in the moonlight. They were razor, tack sharp. I was terrified, but this thing didn't seem to notice us. It's as if it was looking around for something. That's the impression I got. Then boom, it bolts off back to the pond from where it came from and disappeared. My boyfriend quickly pulled me inside and shut the door. We didn't see anything else during that night, and all seemed calm and back to normal by morning. The following morning, though, the dog had completely disappeared. I think whatever was in the pond came out and grabbed him, possibly took him down into the pond, and God only knows what else. I made a friend while I stayed there. He was a neighbor, actually, and he claimed that this whole time, the whole region around here for a few miles have just been very strange. Apparently, back in the day, the natives have hexed and cursed this part of the land for the mass amounts of murder that took place here. I guess there was something of a skirmish or a battle back in the 1800s here. Over 50 Native Americans died, including a very infamous witch doctor. Now, I wasn't able to find out who and names and whatnot, but that's just what I was told. And supposedly, on his last dying breath, he placed a curse on this region of land. Now, I only experienced that one strange monster sighting. I call it a monster. You might call it paranormal or supernatural or whatever it is you want to refer to it as. 
but this neighbor was telling me about how sometimes the sky will get dark for no reason, and the strange fog will creep in. Sometimes you'll see shadows out in the trees approaching the houses, and then vanish. Sometimes you'll hear metal scraping and other loud screams off in the woods. Just all sorts of unexplainable, creepy, paranormal things. He all thinks it's tied back to the hexing, but I don't know. I'm not much of a superstitious believer like that. But it might be tied to whatever that creature is that hides in the pond. The neighbor is also a very firm believer in Wendigos and Skinwalkers, believes there are several of both that live around here and come to visit all the houses from time to time. He says he's seen both of them himself, and even told me, after all of this, before ever mentioning anything to him, that there's one that lives in the pond, the one that I was referencing to. He didn't specifically say if it was a Wendigo or a Skinwalker, but made it out to be that there is some sort of demonic entity that's taking up residence deep in the pond. We had just crossed the main road when I realized there was this figure to my right, slightly in front of me. It was off the road, alone in the darkness. We had passed the farmhouse where the gas station attendant lived, but the figure seemed much closer now. The car had slowed down involuntarily as I looked at it. It was then that I realized whatever it was wasn't human at all. It had an incredibly thin build with long legs and arms stretching several feet into the air. For some reason, its smooth gait didn't seem to be walking as much as gliding towards us in a very jerking fashion. The blackness surrounding whatever this thing was melted away when I turned on my high beams in order to get a better look at what we were dealing with. When I did, my heart nearly stopped. This was clearly not a person, but an entity. Its body was grotesque, thin and gangly, with no features really whatsoever, except for its long appendage-like limbs. I couldn't see any nose or mouth or anything on its face other than eyes. It did have large pointy ears reminiscent of a distorted-looking coyote. They seemed very off, very unnatural-looking, and this thing moved like it was very robotic. The skin looked dark and leathery almost, as if it was stretched over the bone forcefully. Its body looked beaten and broken, like it was just an abomination, or maybe it was a long, lanky body that had now been run over by a large truck. It was disturbing to look at. When the car stopped, it stopped, standing completely still in the darkness, just watching us. I couldn't see its feet or legs anymore. They might have now been invisible for all to tell. But something told me they were still there, planted on the road, and we had to stare down what was for probably a couple of seconds. It felt like forever, and it jerked into motion with this weird gait that I thought earlier wasn't walking as much as gliding. It then made a huge lunge between continuing down the highway perpendicular to my car's path of travel. We watched it as it swiftly passed some ethereal barrier of light. Then, we could no longer see it. I don't know what that thing was. A being from another dimension. A demon. I'm not exactly sure. We were all pretty scared by what we saw. My one friend is convinced it was either a demon, a wendigo, or a skinwalker. What is your opinion? I used to live up in Alaska. I've heard many tribal member stories of the Kushtaka, or skinwalkers. I've always had a remote interest in them ever since. Anyway, this one happened when I was actually living up there with my grandmother, on their town. This was outside of a small town called McGrath. My great-grandparents bought this land way back when to raise reindeer, and worked for a company that raised a variety of different animals, like pigs and horses. Now they're long passed away, but the family still owns the land. My mom lived out there from around age 12 or so, until she moved to Anchorage for college. She lives down here now, to about two hours from home. She's been gone from McGrath for about eight years now, at least I think. Anyway, she said some stuff has happened there over the years, while she lived out there. She said that her and her late grandma would stay up all night sometimes. They were too afraid to go to sleep for some reason. Not sure what it was at the time. I guess she hasn't told me since. But she would inform me, 
They would stay up until around 3 or 4 in the morning, until everybody else woke up during the day. My great-grandmother said the dogs would not stop barking until they got up like something or somebody was after them. Now, that only happened a few times, but that's when I first started hearing stories about stuff happening out there on their land. This one story happened after I'd moved out there with my mom for whatever reason. I've been kind of in an accident or incident with a guy who thought it was wise to drink and drive, so I had to move out there for a few months. But that's another story. Anyway, I remember this like one time. It was like one or two in the morning. My mother woke me up, saying she heard something outside. It seemed like she always heard stuff at weird hours of the night or morning, which is understandable. It is dark as heck during those times due to it being winter time. She wakes me up and says, I hear something outside, or something along those lines. We looked out the window but didn't see anything. We went back to bed, maybe ten minutes later after sitting there, listening if we could hear whatever it was again. So, about thirty minutes later, around two a.m., she wakes me up again and says that she hears something again. We look out the window, and this time, we see a red light slowly moving down this hill towards the cabin. We lived in like a two-story small cabin, and we watch it, and it stops at one point and starts flashing and rotating and then moves forward again, stops, rotates in another direction, and starts to move up the hills into these trails, going into more of the thick forest surrounding us. From what I remember, there's about three to five feet of tall bushes lining those trails. If you are walking through them, you'd be able to see almost everything on the other side. So we watched it for a bit as it moved up each of those trails until its light finally disappeared from our view, which was about 20 feet from the cabin, from what I can remember. All these trails had a lot of dead leaves and pine needles on top, which you could hear crunch under your weight if you walked on them. We're listening for that, but it never happened. We sat there, waiting to hear something out for another light out of the darkness but nothing ever came. So about 30 minutes later, I think give or take, it was about 3 or 4 in the morning, she wakes me up again, saying she heard something else outside. We look out the window, and this time, it's still pitch black, and like nothing could even be seen through our view, until she listens very closely. But all of a sudden, she moves the curtain to her left, and exclaims, I'm trying to look at whatever it was that caught her attention, and I finally see what she saw. There's this big wolf-looking animal, standing on two legs, staring at us, right through our window. This thing was huge. It looked like a large black wolf, and large, large fangs. It had have easily been over eight feet tall, and was very, very stocky in build. And it had these bright, glowing, greenish-yellowish eyes, which seemed to reflect in the light from outside. After a few seconds of staring at each other, it kind of just scoffed and turned and walked off, over by the bushes to the side of the house, not making any noise whatsoever. So we're sitting there, watching where it went, but can't see anything, so I suggest maybe going out there to check if it was truly gone, or what. And she starts freaking out, saying, no way, no way, about a hundred times. She's not going anywhere near that thing. So we just stayed inside until dawn. After going outside to look around a little bit, we didn't find anything out of place or even unusual. I understand this story has now gotten pretty long, so I'll try to shorten the rest. Basically, ever since then, she would hear something walking out on a roof during the weird hours of the night. Nothing ever came of it. We never caught a glimpse of whatever it was. She would hear it walking but never stomping always with light steps, which was weird. There's nothing on our roof that could have made those noises either, unless it's something up with the cabin itself for some peculiar reason. That happened about twice a week with varying amounts of time between events, usually with one occurring around 1 or 2 in the morning and another around 4 to 5. I assume they were during the same two-hour span each night, since they had this weird pattern as far as time went, except the fact that they were random days of the week and not always, every week. After trying to talk to some local people around here, turns out some other friends of ours apparently saw a very similar creature, just a few days short of my mom's. 
Really? I don't know what to make of it. But I can say that what we saw was very real. And it happened in the fall. It started with hearing these loud thumps around our cabin. Many of my friends tell us it's the Kushtaka, the skinwalkers that live up here, the demons that feed on fear. But that's not all of our experiences. There's been other nights where we've also had very strange matters go on. There was one night I remember in particular where I was really struggling with insomnia, so I stayed up late watching TV and drinking hot tea. And I remember it was probably maybe close to two in the morning. My mother was snoring, kind of annoying me, so I kept turning the volume up. And I'm watching TV and drinking my tea, and out of nowhere, the strong smell of feces hits my nostrils. I'm appalled and begin looking around. I can't find a trace of it, but it seems to be filling up the room. My first thought, the sewage is backed up, and I run to the bathroom. No trace of it. The smell isn't even in here. So I figured maybe it's a pipe that has burst underneath the cabin. I'm kind of frantically looking around, and I hear a really loud, very low-pitched sound. Imagine for a second, the screech or scream of an elephant. Now drop that sound in pitch by about an entire octave. And that's what it sounded like outside. Like this deep, bassy, thundering war horn. But it didn't sound like an instrument. It sounded like it came from something organic. Like a creature. I got a really bad feeling that washed over me. And that really freaked me out. I ran and tried to wake up my mom. But she was so dosed out. Waking her up was pretty tough. I think she kind of woke up faintly but fell back asleep. When she's out, she's out. There ain't no getting her up. I realized I was probably just on my own, and I had to accept it. The strong smell of feces disappeared after a while, and things seemed to calm down. But now the smell of death was lingering. It smelled like roadkill that had been sitting out on the side of the road for hours. You know, that pungent, rotting meat smell. You know it. If you've ever lifted the can of a trash can, and the smell wafts and hits you in the face... That's kind of what it smelled like, except it was kind of in and out in an odor all around and inside the house. But meanwhile, you can just feel this really heavy feeling, this energy lingering all around the house. Something, I don't know what it was, but something was outside the cabin that night. I was too afraid to go outside and look. I didn't want to see what was responsible for the noises or the smell. But as far as I know, we made it to the next morning and the smells and the feeling completely dissipated. I believe that these spiritual beings, or these skinwalkers, are completely responsible for all of this. The eyewitness was born and raised during this era. During high school, his family owned a gas station in which he frequently worked as an attendant. It was always very busy, as you can imagine any gas station would be and he often worked the night shift, surprising for a high schooler. One night, at about 1.50 in the morning, this car pulls up with three women in it, and they seem very nervous and are whispering to each other frantically. He very friendly says hello. They jump out of the car and start trying to figure out how to open the locked door in the building. As he walked towards them, he could see that their eyes were completely black, like a pair of coals. He froze in fear, as they zeroed in on him through their soulless eyes, terrifying him. But then, one of them spoke, telepathically, asking him, We're hungry. We need a human soul to take. The young man, completely panic-stricken, immediately runs and calls his father, comes and asks him to help and pick him up ASAP. Well, his father came around the same time as an officer who was also luckily patrolling in the area. The officer walked up and asked what was going on. Of course, by the time the officer had got there, the three women and the vehicle were completely gone. The officer asked the young boy if they had security cam footage, in which they did. After going into the office and reviewing the footage, you can see the car pull up. You could see the girls getting out and trying to get into the store. You could see the young man approaching her, and her talking to him, and then him running away. And right after... You see the girl run back to the car, and the car drives off and it kind of just vanishes off the camera. I mean, it doesn't just disappear off the camera frame, it literally goes transparent. 
the young boy and the officer were entirely shocked by what they saw, having no answers for what it is. The father relayed later on down the road to the officer that he had made some very bad, poor choices in his past and believes that he has been hexed and cursed by a skinwalker. The father claims that ever since he was in his younger 20s, he has been followed around by several different people, all who are believed to be possessed by a skinwalker, the same one. When they come to him, they have solid black eyes and either threaten to hurt him or try to do something to his family. This was the very first time that his own son had encountered one of these beings. The son did not get a look at the male driver or any of the other two females in the car, but noticed that they all acted very strange, very out of place. Even the way they moved was very robotic and strange. The boy, who is now in his late 20s, is completely terrified. I was in the strip mines by the Four Corners area in an old abandoned mining camp, the same one my father used to work at. The roads around here are dirt. It was around 6 a.m. when suddenly I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It moved so fast I could barely register its movements or form before it snagged a rabbit off the road, ripping into it with claws and teeth, then running back into the brush. I was shocked for a second and just kept on driving. I think what shocked me the most is its form. It appeared like a large walking coyote, not running. I'm talking walking on two legs, hawks and all, built like a canine, but not at all running around. Not in the same way normal predators like that do. So about 10 minutes later, out of nowhere, this thing appears again on top of my car, peering down at me, huge head staring down. I've never been so scared in my life. It looked like some sort of coyote demon. It had really dark eyes. Not sure if they were red or black. I don't think they were red though. They were so dark. And it was so horrifying, I kind of blurred out a lot of the details. But I believe this was a shapeshifter. I sped up my car trying to throw this thing off the roof of my car, in which it jumped off into the tree next to me. I can only assume that this was some sort of demon or witch, either of which I don't want anything to do with. I had received a phone call from a good friend of mine that he was having a very toxic family situation and he needed somebody to come pick him up now. So, being the good, reliable friend I am, did just that. It was just like any other typical Wednesday night. It was raining, dark. I pull up to his house, honk the horn once. Probably not the most politest thing, but hey. He comes out, fuming. He is obviously very distressed. He gets in the car, and he starts to kind of go off and tell me about what happened. A little bit of a background story. He's adopted, and while the majority of his life has been very good, the last few years have been very hectic with his family. See, the dad, or his adopted father, got caught in an affair about four years ago, and the divorce is very, very brutal. It's also very lengthy, and the dad refuses to move out of the house, while the mom also refuses to move out of the house. They sleep in separate rooms, and it is a constant war zone. We were both only 16 and 17 at this time, so he was not quite old enough yet to move out. So we're sitting there talking and he's venting, and something catches my eye to the left. I notice these two eyes emerging from the timber directly ahead of me. The only reason I noticed it immediately was because my headlights, even through the fog and rain, are pointing right at the timber. And this thing, slowly that's ducked down, climbs up out of the trees and fully stands erect, taller than my headlights shine. Whatever this was, was taller than eight or nine feet tall. Very lanky, very slender, very lean and tall. It looked like a starving coyote. At least, that's what it reminded me of. But the skin on its face and body seemed stretched, like its ribcage and skull was a lot more exposed. Not as if the skin had been torn open, but it just looked wrong, and it had this weird expression on its face. Obviously, we were both freaking out. My friend was screaming at me to start the car and a go. So, I flip it in reverse, and I fly backwards. This thing crouches down and jumps off, all the way to my left, 
so now it is completely out of view of the headlights now. I do a 180, and I fly back down the driveway, while my friend is looking behind us, making sure it's not following us at all. The conversation literally went from his family drama to what was that that we just saw. Maybe it was a bear. I don't know. Is there anything else here living here that you know about? He doesn't. Either did I. And now he went from being distressed to scared to death. The drive back to my place. He was trying to be very analytical, thinking, okay, maybe it's just a bear with mange. There has to be an explanation for what we saw. Clearly this isn't something strange, right? Maybe we just dreamt it all. Yeah, we're just dreaming. I remember him saying that as if trying to lull himself into this false narrative that what we saw was not real. But there's no mistaking what it was. It was something that should not exist, nor should have existed. A lot of the car ride was silent, but he just kept trying to reassure him and myself that it's okay. We didn't really see it. It was just our eyes playing tricks on us. Maybe it was the stress manifesting itself in a physical way that caused both of us to see the same thing. I had asked him if he really thought that. I even asked him if he had seen anything like that around his house before. He had not. He had not seen any tracks, anything. But he's not the type of guy to really go outside his house very much. He pretty much is a very introvert guy. Stays inside a lot, you know, those types. I think his conclusion, even though I disagree with him, is that it was some kind of bear. But looking at the thing, it looked nothing like a bear. It was far too elongated, far too skinny, and like I said, looked like a starving coyote, due to how exposed its ribs were and bones were, and how taut its skin was. It looked gross, to be honest. That night wasn't any easier. I offered him to stay in my room with me, since my parents were out of town, and I figured getting a night of rest with me would probably be a lot more beneficial to his mental health. Well, he stayed there with me and the whole night, he had these vivid, horrible nightmares. I can't even begin to describe what they were like. But the next morning, I took him to school with me. After school, I dropped him off back at his house, wishing him good luck and telling me to stay in contact. I guess things in the house kind of settled down for the time being. He never told me anything about seeing any of these creatures before, or finding more tracks or prints. Although, I never pressed the issue. I never did want to know. This was kind of a one-time thing, and never again happened. I even brought it up a couple of years ago, and he seemed to kind of shoot it down immediately, like he either didn't remember it, or probably just did not want to talk about it. I guess who could blame him? I never believed in paranormal activity, that being ghosts and all that. I didn't care much for the paranormal or supernatural. It never really interested me. When my parents had told me about skinwalkers, though, it made them seem so genuine and all-knowing. They had always been a little too jumpy when we went on holiday trips through the forest or mountains, but they would tell me everything would be fine as long as I stayed close to whatever vehicle we were traveling in at the time. Now, like many children do with their parents, they tell old stories. They tend to ignore them, or treat them as jokes. That was until I saw one with my own eyes, a skinwalker, during those days in May. It occurred first by having these horrible nightmares of being chased by this large black creature with large fangs. It would always hold me down and take a bite out of my neck. Not like a vampire. I'm talking ripped chunks of flesh out of me. And it would be the same dream reoccurring every single night. It would have the same starting point, the same ending point, and the exact same point of fear and waking up. I was only nine years old, and little did I know at that time that skinwalkers can actually pull a Freddy Krueger, infiltrate your nightmares, and infiltrate your body and mind with fear. During this trip, I was with my best friend. We'll call her Tasha. We decided to go on a walk through the forest up behind our house. It seemed like that's all we ever did during those days. We weren't too far out into our lives when this skinwalker first appeared. But I could tell it wasn't just your average animal, wandering through. We were out playing building a fort, and we see this figure with large black eyes staring at us, 
holding onto a tree, kind of observing us closely. It looked very pale and sickly, but no doubt was some sort of canid on two legs, and not like a wolf. It was much more gaunt, kind of giving the impression it was starving. Tasha had grabbed onto my hand and I could feel her shaking like a small earthquake had passed through her. She whispered to me, Do you, do you see that? And I nodded my head slowly, recognizing what this creature was. It looked just like the drawings that my parents drew about the skinwalkers. They had been haunted by these beings too. And it turned its gaze back toward her and then me, then back to her and back to me again, almost in a very robotic fashion. And then it kind of opened its mouth, closed it, and disappeared behind a tree. I barely remember anything after that, but I can recall that we ran home, screaming, with Tasha. She never let go of my hand. That was when she did. We left the woods, and just before our street came into view on the back side of where our house is. I felt that had we not noticed that thing, it was going to do very bad things to us. I think we realized that once we saw it, it was spotted. I don't think it had meant to get spotted. I think it was accidental. Like we had somehow foiled its plans, the impression I got was that it was kind of irritated it was seen, which is why it disappeared quickly. Also, I did not notice any foul scents or odors. Some people also report a change in the atmosphere, like a lot more electricity in the air, or a storm coming, or passing, or during a storm. None of those things were the case. It was a bright sunny afternoon, in spring. Although my parents, that's a whole other thing. They would tell me these detailed accounts of how they were stalked and hunted by these strange upright creatures. My mom even has a sketchbook of them. It started while they vacationed down in New Mexico and has been happening on and off their adult lives. While it is terrifying, they've kind of just learned to accept it. And when they told me about it, it seems like whatever curse this thing is, whatever curse they brought upon themselves is now passed on to me. Hence the reoccurring nightmares and all that. But... I feel like that soon kind of passed away, and I haven't dealt with that in a very long time. I have spent a lot of time in the woods, and around wild animals. I am a firm believer in Native American mythology. Over the past year, my girlfriend and I have encounters with some form of something that is not quite human. We live just on the outskirts of the country, just along the outskirts of town, we're surrounded by thick hills, abandoned mines and fields. Despite all this emptiness, we always find ourselves running into something walking down the road late at night, when we least expect it, or even as we go walking through the woods when we want to get away from everybody, spending some much-needed time together. The first time we saw one of these things was actually last summer, while we were sitting outside our house watching the fireflies looking up at the stars in the night sky. It seemed like nothing was there, until one of us kept looking back at the road in front of our house. Still nothing. We caught each other's eye for a second, before looking back at the road again. We saw it again this time. It did not seem to be aware that we could see it, though. It was just kind of standing there, observing us, trying to sneakily get closer, which I don't know why. As creepy as that is, why do these creatures always want to try and get close? Are they planning on attacking? Is there a reason they try to act stealthy as to not be seen? Because every time we've spotted one, they always seem to kind of go into a panic mode and quickly retreat, like their plans are squashed. But this night, neither one of us got a good enough look at what it is to describe what exactly we saw. I can tell you though how it sure made me feel. I have never had any sort of fear response like that in my life before, or since then. All the hair on my body and neck stood up on end, everything going cold and numb. My girlfriend would look over at me, asking if everything was okay with genuine concern. I looked so terrified all of a sudden, which was bizarre to see since I'm usually somebody who keeps their composure even in dangerous situations. I had joined the Marine Corps a year before. The only thing I could muster out of my mouth was to tell her, 
We need to get inside right now. She stopped and looked at me very seriously, with ever-growing concern. But she knew me, how serious I was, and she did not treat it as a joke. She knew I did not mess around like that. I was not trolling. It's safe to say, we spent the entire night up, each on opposite ends of the couch, with our weapons next to us. She kept asking me what happened until finally, I told her that it wasn't human, that this thing had large black eyes, that it was watching us, and its features were half animal, half man. It was simply trying to be stealthy and trying to keep from being seen. But once it noticed that I noticed it, that was it. It kind of laughed away and disappeared. And just in that moment, we started to hear sounds outside. Multiple sounds. It sounded like there were several people outside of our small house. I grabbed my gun, getting ready in case anything happened. My girlfriend at this point was now completely on edge, expecting anything and everything to happen. I got up, ran to the front door, and slowly tried to peek out the window. I could see dark shapes moving around, but could not tell who or what. The porch light was on, and the only other light nearby was a single street light, probably about 80 yards away from me, from where I currently was. So light was very, very poor. But you could hear something big moving around, multiples of them. And at one point, maybe 30 seconds passes, maybe a minute, it's hard to say. I feel like my heart was about ready to jump out of my throat. And this massive BAM crashes into the other side of the house. It sounded like somebody hit the house with a car. The house even shook slightly. It caused my girlfriend to start screaming, and I nearly fell over. I run to the back side of the house, right where the noise came from. This was right against our back bathroom wall, where there's a small window, like most showers do. Because it was dark outside, we didn't see anything, but we could hear whatever was outside moving around, stomping on things. It sounded very heavy, very tall but we could also hear it kind of walking back towards the forest that was roughly maybe 40 to 50 yards away. My girlfriend was now hysterical, begging me to call our parents and to have us take us back. Anywhere but here, since we had just come from a family outing prior to this coming back here. I ran up to her, held her, comforted her, told her everything was going to be fine. Nothing was going to happen. And before I could finish my sentence, BAM! Another loud smack against the house. My girlfriend screamed again, falling down on the floor, crying, crouching, and running to the corner of the room. She runs and grabs a knife out of the kitchen, and now she's sitting there, rocking back and forth in the fetal position, screaming and crying, trying to call her parents. I'm thinking we're about to have a showdown here between the monsters of hell and me and my girlfriend. But within minutes, all the sound ceases, and even the crickets outside go completely silent. My girlfriend is now on the phone with her father, or my father-in-law, since we did eventually get married, but he wasn't my father-in-law at the time. He agrees to come pick us up, because my girlfriend slightly shares with him what's going on. He shows up about 20 minutes later, and my girlfriend and I devise a plan. We text him and say, let us know when you're in our driveway. He agreed. So about 20 minutes later, he shows up and says, Hey, I'm in your driveway. My girlfriend and I hold each other, and on a count of three, one, two, three. And we both, as fast as we can, sprint from the front door and sprint to the back seat of her dad's car. We pile in, and her dad is a little freaked out looking. Obviously, all he knew was that his daughter was in hysterics, but he never actually knew specifically why and he did not see anything around us. Even though the porch light was on and the street light was going behind us, there was no signs of anything creepy happening. So I think he was just more concerned than anything. My girlfriend and I were screaming at him, drive, drive, now, drive. And he just kind of questioned it, but put it in reverse and got out of there. I think my girlfriend just did her best to play it off as a large bear try to get in the house, but I didn't say anything. I let her talk her way out of it. I knew they wouldn't believe us had I explained to them what we saw. Well, 
we came back the following evening, probably right about 4 or 5 p.m. It was after we had eaten an early dinner with the family. The sun was just about setting in the sky, and he dropped us off, ensuring everything would be okay with us, and we were good. We came back in the house, and my girlfriend noticed something outside, so she walks outside and sees a large scratch mark across the setting in the house. This is right where the bang was the night before, or I should say the secondary bang, which was closer to the front door. We have not seen or had any sort of encounter with these things since then. It's as if they simply just vanished and stopped bugging us altogether. Very, very odd. The witness of this encounter believes that they were entangled in a skinwalker sighting. Due to their lack of knowledge and experience with these types of beings, they're totally unsure. However, they believe it may have been something similar due to the details of their story. Additionally, rather than focusing on one specific moment within this narrative, this story provides readers with different experiences, all compiled into a longer narrative for easy comprehension. The first experience begins when my husband and I were up in Alaska with his side of the family in an Airbnb in Wasilla, right next to a lake. The witness and their husband were having fun with his family in an Airbnb located near a lake. The moment that this begins, there is already a sense of tension due to the fact that they are unsure that they will hear or see things during the time and location in which they were. Suddenly, almost immediately after we heard a baby cry, and keep in mind we don't have any kids staying with us or around us, which revealed why they believed it wasn't from children from their own family joining them on their trip. In addition, she also adds relief for readers since, although there was uncertainty surrounding these cries, it is unlikely that anybody's children would be performing an activity this late hour. This moment of relief is quickly taken away as the witness then explains how that baby cry moved around our small cabin. It was only a one bedroom with an open living room, so there were no real walls or anything to stop it. This reveal adds fear to the situation. The sounds are not being blocked, which shows that these cries can move freely throughout the area. Whatever was making it was trying to entice, trying to get and invoke fear from its listeners. The second experience occurs when I woke up at around 2 a.m., hearing a very loud bang against our window right above my head. This event begins with a bang being heard against the window, causing the witness to become afraid, resulting in them waking up from their slumber. While it may be what occurred during this section of the narrative, it's not as unsettling as the other events that occurred prior. The third and final experience involved. My boyfriend got up to go use the bathroom, but I grabbed him, telling him it's probably not a good idea, that she just has a very bad feeling about it. He didn't listen to her, and went and used the bathroom anyway. Nothing happened, but said that as he left the room, she can just describe this dark energy almost coming inside the cabin, almost like it just enveloped and filled up the entire room. She started screaming for her boyfriend to come back, which he did, and was freaked out by her reaction. He asked her what was going on, and she explained to him what she felt. He stayed with her the entire time. This was all just one night, over the course of the night, too, the witness heard more cries and screams out in the distance. Cries and screams that moved around and lasted all night long. Sometimes, it would appear right outside their window. Other times, it was far from the distance. They never exactly found out what it could have been. But they do believe heavily this was the result of a skinwalker. My grandpa would take me hunting with him sometimes when I was just a kid. It was just something we enjoyed doing together, and I always had fun. Once, though, he took me out to this abandoned house in the outskirts of town, told me it's where skinwalkers live, and that they were nearby. We needed to be careful to make sure we didn't make any set of movements or noise. We set up camp, and ended up hearing some kind of weird chanting coming from outside our circle of lanterns. We brought these along because it gets really dark really early. And then, like something out of a science fiction movie, we see these bright floating orbs, one landing on my grandfather's shoulder 
as he was claiming that this was the demonic energy of a skinwalker. It was really creepy to see. And in fact, the rest of that trip, we saw these strange large shadows watching us from the woodline. We never did find much elk or deer, which is what we were originally hunting for. Instead, we pretty much just got skinwalkers. We didn't catch any, we did not hunt any, but my grandfather tried shooting at one. It didn't do any good. We had to be very careful being around here. If you do the wrong thing, you will be cursed. The officers' names in this episode have been changed for the safety of their identity. Thank you for understanding. July 18th. There's a strange story coming out of the U.S. Army base at the Presidio in San Francisco, California, over the sighting of a human-like creature walking on all fours with pointed ears and fangs. According to Officer Cadet Patrick McClellan, he was walking back to his quarters around 2.30 a.m., and he heard some strange sounds coming from the nearby forest. He stated that he looked over and saw what appeared to be a naked man with glowing eyes hunched over right by the edge of the trees. But it wasn't until the same humanoid creature began walking on all fours that McClellan realized something was not right about the situation. This was no man, he realized. McClellan said that the creature jumped over a five-foot fence with ease before disappearing into the forest. He went on to describe it as being about six feet tall, pointy ears, and long fangs protruding from its mouth. This story might have ended there, if not for two more reports of the same humanoid creature being sighted around the same area. A few hours later, a McClellan's fellow officers told a very similar story of a strange figure crossing the road right in front of their vehicles. This is where it gets interesting, as that particular road was open to only army personnel. So, this means something from outside the base had somehow gotten in the forest. Another officer told a strikingly similar story about seeing this werewolf-like figure walking on all fours and jumping over a locked gate to get past it. Well, we can't be sure of what exactly these individuals saw. There really is no other explanation than something very strange was roaming around the Presidio that night. Officer Cadet McClellan says he doesn't want to speculate about what this creature was, but does admit it would be hard for somebody in the area to have an exotic pet without anybody knowing, since it's so vast and remote with many places for animals or people to hide. Whatever was out there is unfortunately no longer around, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Hopefully somebody gets a good look at this thing the next time it decides to make an appearance. Nineteen eighty seven August first Officer Torgan responded to a call of a possible drunk driver. When he arrived on location, a white male in his early twenties took off running from the officer. The sighting occurred at around one AM along Highway forty four near Ellingston, Missouri. The deputy requested backup and began to search the area, but could not locate any footprints or tire tracks that may have possibly been left behind by the fleeting suspect. He said, This is one of the strangest things I have ever put in a report. He returned to his patrol vehicle, when suddenly, he heard what he describes as a high-pitched humming sound. The next thing the officer knew, in front of him stood a large humanoid creature with an extremely fit and strong build. Its eyes were a deep, piercing black, similar to a pupilless appearance of a shark. The creature's arms hung down, giving it a very ape-like appearance. While its head was humanoid in shape, the nose was pushed flat up against the face with a heavy blow of fall during its lifetime. It had a very wide mouth, filled with lots of tiny razor-sharp teeth. Long strands of stringy hair hung from the back of its head midway down to its back. The officer noted that it appeared as if this humanoid had been living in the woods because... The humanoid's skin was dirty, matted, and also gray in color. It stood about eight feet tall and had very wide shoulders, maybe twice the width of a human shoulder. 
The witness stated that he was so frightened at the sight before him, he didn't even think to pursue it. He simply got back into his patrol car, returned to his station to fill out the report, which he never intended to release, at least publicly. The witness described this creature as one of the strangest things he's ever put in his report. He stated that when this thing stood before him, it looked like something right out of a horror movie. I know for certain that I saw something very unusual on the night of July 26th while driving home from work. I had not been drinking and was completely sober. I also do not drink caffeine or take any type of stimulant or depressing drugs. When my wife saw the tracks, she believed that they were left by a bear at first, but was informed that there were no bears in the area. In our front yard, we have a large maple tree whose branches hang very low to the ground. The object that I saw at the window was most definitely not a bear. It was standing on two legs, very unlike how a bear stands, and it reached with its arms in an attempt to touch me. It was only about five feet away from the window when we both saw each other, making full eye contact. It was frightening. I do not know for sure what I saw, and my wife is just as certain that she saw it also. I have never seen any type of creature that resembled this thing before in my life and hope to never see one again. Obviously, Officer Torgan here isn't alone, as I just shared my own personal experience. There are things out there that defy the world we live in. Maybe shows like X-Files and Twilight Zone had it right. Nineteen seventy three, Officer Lamech reported a terrifying sighting of what he believes to be the legendary Mothman. His sighting occurred on Highway fifty one. Suddenly, in front of him, right above a slow moving car, was the figure of a man with his wings folded in across his back. The wings appeared to be leathery in texture, like a bat's, and were even pointed on the ends. A sort of sting protruded from the creature's belt line. Officer Lamech stopped his car and tried to get out when he saw the creature taking off flight at an incredible speed. The officer described it as follows. It stood between six and seven feet tall, had a wingspan over 14 feet wide from tip to tip, and large glowing red eyes. It flew at an angle towards the east. It made no noise other than a whooshing sound like air through its wings. It had claws on its feet, and something on its back, looking like two cylinders. Officer Lamech reported his sighting to the local PD, where he was laughed at, ridiculed, and finally forced into early retirement for psychological reasons. The officer was told that if he reported another sighting of this kind, he would be brought up on charges of mental instability. It's interesting to note that Lamech is extremely well respected within the community. He's an upstanding member of society, with no history of family or personal mental illness or alcoholism. He is very much a regular guy with a wife and kids. This has been one hard creature to research due to the reluctance of people involved in the case that are willing to talk about it. We immediately went and checked the area where he think we initially came across something which was just a short distance away. The road in which he saw it circles around comes back up on the top of itself in an oval-like shape with gravel roads going on in different areas of the farm. We were not able to find anything, but even my son said he thinks he saw something by one of his houses. It's no longer there, but maybe even a garden plot that had been abandoned long ago. The land has been farmed for probably decades now, before being converted into pasture land. The entire sighting lasted approximately three seconds, from him seeing it while driving until fully gone, since the sight was airborne. From his recollection, it was extremely large, stood right next to a tree. He saw eyes shine, and the eyes were large, as well with what appeared to be claws on its feet. The creature had long hair or fur all over it. Most of him was covered by something that he said appeared like a cape, or wings even, covering most of its body length. He could not tell if they were webbed, but they were definitely something attached to it, which we may have thought. He is 100% positive he saw this, and is actually very shaken up about it, since he clearly has no explanation for it. His car stopped working immediately after the sighting, so 
we believe there is some sort of electrical interference occurring at the time. He believes it stood about seven foot tall, dark in color, wings folded across its back, and extended like a stingray. His car stopped working after it took off into the air at an angle towards the eastern direction. But due to the electrical interference with his radio, which was turned off at the time of the sighting, which is also noted with other Mothman encounters, we were not able to find any evidence of anything, but we both believe he saw something and would like to help finding what he saw. Two thousand eight, San Antonio, Texas. A police officer was driving alone on patrol one night when he heard a loud thumping sound coming from the back of his squad car. He stopped, got out to investigate, and then suddenly had an unexpected encounter with a creature that resembled both man and beast. The bizarre encounter left him frightened and shaken. This is what he claims to have experienced. I was on patrol in a new district that I was not familiar with. It was around 2.20 a.m. I had just finished checking several convenience stores when I heard a loud thumping sound coming from the back of my vehicle. I immediately pulled over to investigate. As I got out of the car, something large began to run through the woods across the street towards me from behind. I thought it was a person for a quick second, but as it got closer, I realized it wasn't. And whatever this thing was, it was actually running on all fours. I couldn't believe what I saw. The being was hairy and had the body of a man, but the head of a wolf. It also appeared at first to be in some sort of costume or uniform, but I realized that was just how hairy it was. It stopped moving about 30 feet in front of me and stared me down, sizing me up. I was so frightened I couldn't move. I laid on my car horn for several minutes, hoping somebody would come to my aid, but nobody did. This thing began to charge at me, so I drove off. I didn't feel comfortable sharing this with anybody. Most people wouldn't have believed me or thought I was crazy. But now that so many sightings are being reported all over the world, I decided it was time to share what happened to me and hope that other officers feel comfortable coming forward. Two thousand one, the Navajo Reservation. A mysterious sighting of a humanoid figure which is similar to the famous Mothman. According to this Navajo witness, his name was Jerry Garcia. He had been on duty with his partner when they saw a white human like standing on top of a mesa rock near Shiprock, New Mexico. The flashing light revealed a skull shaped head and glowing eyes that were very large. The jaw was covered in long white hairs. The humanoid figure stood eight feet tall and had a wingspan of almost 12 feet after it ascended into the sky. It took about three steps, flapped its wings once, and flew off over the horizon at over 80 miles per hour. So what is this? Is this another Mothman-related sighting or something different? The Navajo are no doubt one of the most famous tribes in U.S. history. Could their land be home to many unknown terrifying creatures? that reside in not just forests, but also remote lands. Please leave your thoughts below this case. Alleged secret government facility in Hawaii being used to train psychic special operations units. 1991. A former employee from an alleged secret government facility in Hawaii has gone on record to describe what has been going on there for years now. A classified unit that deploys psychic warriors trained in remote viewing into other realities and timelines where humans have apparently never existed before. These claims come from William Edgar, an alleged former employee who says he went to the facility in the late 80s to work there. He claims that all military personnel are trained in psychic warfare. They can be deployed into other timelines and universes using clairvoyance and precognition abilities to accomplish their missionary goals. According to this whistleblower, the U.S. government has found a way for classified military units to travel interdimensionally by tricking biophysical bodies into having an out-of-body experience while leaving their physical body behind. 
The secret government is doing this in order to harness the power of time and space by accessing these other universes that exist in what scientists call the same space, but not the same time. When an individual is said to have left their body, they are believed to be in a state known as the biophysical phase. According to conspiracy theory lore, once you leave your physical form behind, you can walk through walls and even fly. You can even travel into different timelines or parallel universes where everything is possible especially traveling back in a time before human civilization was created on Earth. Mr. Edgar claims that people are being recruited from our top universities all across America. Many students showing great potential for having psychic abilities due to their age. These recruits are put through rigorous training programs to hone in their abilities before being sent on field missions. Edgar was killed shortly after releasing this information from a fatal car accident in 1993. The Hawaiian government and United States government have quickly responded and dismissed all claims as ridiculous and absurd. In 1985, a bad storm had just passed through Burlington County when Officer A.J. Quinn spotted something hovering over Route 130, which runs between Burlington and Bordentown. On June 20th, at approximately 6.40 p.m., I was traveling on Route 563, south of Chatsworth, near the Franklin Parker Reserve Speedwell entrance. I was looking to see what the parking situation there was for future hikes, so my eyes were on the right side of the road when out of the periphery, I saw what I thought was a groundhog on the left. At least, it looked like it. It was very large. I realized it would have had been huge for one to be like that. So the size I saw was roughly four feet tall, standing on two legs. It reminded me physically of a groundhog. I did not get a good look at the face, and I almost continued to decide to turn around about 150 yards up on a dirt road to the right. I pulled in, turned around, and headed back to that location. There is a bend in the road there. It bends around to the right and on the way back as I made it past the bend, approximately 30 yards in front of me. The creature was still there. It was now fully turned towards me. I could see that it looked like a cross between Curious George and the character Chaka from The Land of the Lost. Its face and hands as well as the tops of its feet were hairless and light tan in color. The fur it was covered with was golden brown, a little darker than a golden retriever, very much like the color of a groundhog. I could not see the nose. When I locked eyes with it, I could see just the whites. I stood there for a second or two when I rounded the bend and then took off past back into the swampy area. It ducked behind a short bush. When I drove past it, I could no longer see it. I turned the car around yet again and when I went by a second time, it was gone. I waited there a bit to see if I could see anything moving in the field. I couldn't, so I considered it done and took off. It was a couple of days before I shared the experience with my family and friends. In that period of time, I thought for sure somebody was going to report a missing kid in a Halloween costume. When the thing took off running, it was fast. I would describe it as the fastest kid on the 10-12 baseball team. We had really bad storms that night, and my commute was a disaster. It poured all through that area, and I thought it was odd that the thing I saw appeared to be dry, at least its fur was, which would lead me to believe it was under some sort of covering or underground. Of course, there are always skeptics out there suggesting this type of ferocious cryptid is just some innocent child dressed up in a puffy Halloween costume on Hallow's Eve. But why would it be out there of all places? Or maybe Officer A.J. Quinn simply mistook an actual groundhog for something bipedal. Unfortunately, for those skeptics and doubters, A.J. Quinn is a legitimate officer who was on duty at the time of the sighting and has never been known to mislead. Over the years, there have been reports of other sightings in this area of Bordentown, New Jersey, where the creature is said to dwell. Still, others suggest that terrifying entities as the winged humanoid and red eyes are merely overactive imaginations that produce nothing more than tall tales and fictitious stories about little green men from Mars 
or aggressive Bigfoot-like creatures with pointy ears and glowing eyes. Crazy UFO accounts and outlandish conspiracy theories aside, Officer A.J. Quinn's frightening account of his eyewitness experience in Bordentown, New Jersey is simply evidence that he and other witnesses did truly see something unusual and terrifying. A police officer was critically injured after being attacked by a large and powerful unknown creature. The attack took place one night in an abandoned building on the outskirts of town. A close friend and colleague of the victim describes what he witnessed that night. I was there with him. We were searching the building for a suspect when all of a sudden, something came rushing out of the one of the rooms. It knocked me off my feet when I got back up. He was being attacked by this monster. He was much stronger than anything I have seen. He was able to throw Jeff ten feet in the air with ease. I pulled out my firearm, firing it several times, but it wouldn't budge an inch. Like the bullets didn't even bother it. I don't know what happened after that. I blacked out for several moments. When I came to, the creature had already disappeared and Jeff was unconscious badly injured and bleeding, with a head injury and broken ribs. The victim describes how he was seeing his partner pointing his firearm at an unknown creature. Jeff felt his gun jam when he looked up. The unknown being seemed to disappear in front of him. Jeff went to check on his partner and found him not breathing. The victim was able to regain consciousness, but quickly collapsed again shortly thereafter. Police officers were immediately dispatched to the scene. They took both men to a nearby hospital for treatment. Both sustained serious injuries and were unable to work for several months during the recovery period. Nineteen eighty, a Navajo officer says he encountered a white skeletal creature on the Navajo Indian Reservation in Arizona. The officer and two others said they encountered the thing one night as they were patrolling the desert near Shiprock. I thought it was a bear or some other kind of animal, said Joe Bailey, now an investigator for the tribe's division of public safety. It looked like something with high cheekbones and deep set in eyes. It had shorter arms, but its front legs were short. And Bailey says he didn't realize it wasn't an animal until he got out of his patrol car to investigate, noticed and heard the footfalls echoing off to either side. He also noticed that there were no tracks. Bailey says the creature was nearly seven feet. The other two witnesses, who requested anonymity, also said the animal was hairless and had carroty red eyes. Bailey said it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. He added that he felt a sensation akin to pins and needles when he looked at it. It disappeared before reaching a telephone booth. Bailey claims that he contacted Navajo Tribal Police Chief Samuel Pete about his experience after reading newspaper accounts of sightings in northeastern Arizona, right near the Navajo Mountain. This is where others have reported seeing a giant man with white skin that leaves no tracks or scent behind. The report also went on to include a local scientist's theory that the animal was potentially a genetic aberration, resulting from nuclear experiments in nearby Area 51 or quite possibly a descendant of species of bear, known to have been in the area thousands of years ago. A few days before Bailey's alleged encounter, two other Navajo officers had reported seeing a huge hairless dog that stood up about five feet tall. This is in the same vicinity on July 4th. One Leland Joe saw an unidentified five-foot-tall being with white skin and glowing green eyes running across a field, again leaving no tracks. Also, a retired military man said he saw another creature one night. His car suddenly stopped mid-drive for no apparent reason, suffering from electronic issues. He turned off the ignition, turned on the lights to find that he was surrounded by several of these beings. These beings reportedly had glowing green eyes and fang-like teeth. They surrounded his car. He screamed and they appeared to just disintegrate into the air. As soon as they did, his entire car shot on again, and he was able to successfully drive away. We're not exactly sure what we're dealing with, but there is something definitely supernatural lingering in the state of Arizona.
September 1st, 2012. A police officer from the area I live in was patrolling Route 563 two weeks ago and saw a seven-foot-tall, goblin-like creature standing right next to a tree around 1.45 in the morning. He pulled over and the thing took off running. He chased it for almost a mile before it disappeared into the thin air. It was vomit green color, with short horns on top of its head, and large red eyes. That eye shine was activated by car headlights. The officer said that he could see the eyes and they were definitely red. The officer also says that it appeared to have a short tail, very muscular arms and legs, like a runner or a wrestler, and had a very reptilian-like appearance. Even though it was most certainly bipedal, there was another officer who had a similar sighting back in 1989. He says that he was traveling at about 2 in the morning, and he saw what he estimated to be a 6-foot-tall, a green reptilian creature standing next to the road. He slowed down to get a closer look at it before running off. I'm not sure what to make of all this, if anything, but I felt compelled to share my story. It could be connected to others out there who've had similar experiences. The area in Franklin Park is not far from Route 563, and it's deep in the woods where nobody really goes anymore, unless they know somebody who lives back there. It didn't surprise me. I've heard several stories over the years about people seeing things like Bigfoots, Sasquatches. Back when I was in high school, I had my own sighting of something like this, so things like that didn't really bother me too much. I consider myself to have thick skin. My friends and I saw two hairy, black, tall figures crossing the road. They were much taller than an average human, only they weren't apes, nor were they completely human either. It was hard to make out exactly what they were due to the moonlight being behind them and shining in our eyes so much we couldn't see the exact detail but their size was considerable, at minimum seven feet. Do you have any insight to what these creatures are? Is there more than one? Can you tell me if they are somehow related to the Chupacabra or other known cryptids that exist? Thank you for all your work. At approximately 7.04 p.m., Officer Linda Seabrook was driving home from work on the Garden State Parkway when she saw a human-like creature that can only be described as gargoyle-like, having dark reddish skin and scaly reptilian wings. Officer Seabrook stated her disbelief in fact that such things even existed, but remains adamant of what she had seen. Officer Scott Kimball had a sighting of a gargoyle reptilian on Route 33 near Union at approximately 4.35 a.m. Police Officer Scott Kimball was making his usual patrol rounds on Route 33 near the town of Union when he happened to see what could only be described as a gargoyle. The creature stood nearly six foot tall, scaly, wings protruding from its back. Its face had the general shape of a human, but with larger than normal eyes and canine teeth. When it landed briefly on top of an abandoned building, Officer Kimball could make out the creature's tail which was approximately five feet in length. Police dispatch receives calls of gargoyle sighting in Cherry Hill Township at also approximately 8.43. Dispatch received multiple calls coming into their office reporting something that looked like a gargoyle atop one of the buildings located along Haddonfield Road. According to the witnesses, they too described a creature standing nearly seven feet tall with wings that were large and bat-like behind the shoulders. The wingspan itself was estimated to be around 13 feet across. Other witnesses have sightings of reptilian humanoids in the Pensacon Township at approximately 3.17 a.m. Multiple witnesses called into the PD to report what they can only be described as a strange flying reptilian creature. They said it had red glowing eyes, large wings, and massive black talons. Two thousand ten, right around five thirty AM, Officer Blacksmith received a call about a hulking figure seen lurking about near the intersection of US two and forty one. He arrived at the scene to discover that a female motorist had witnessed the creature crossing in front of her vehicle as she traveled along US two into town. Additionally, 
Officer Blacksmith talked with two hunters who had also seen the same creature. The first hunter stated that he was nearly run off the road by it, while the other told him directly that he had encountered it firsthand. The witnesses are all experienced hunters familiar with what they should be seeing out there in order to safely navigate their way through these woods, all during deer season. One witness specifically said that he has never seen anything like this before, but it definitely was not human. It was massive. It was black or really dark brown. I could not tell what direction it was headed. It all happened so fast. Officer Blacksmith described the area near where he made contact with the witness as being very wet and overgrown. Lots of thick underbrush. He also said that it's known to be an area where hunters have complained about encountering strange phenomena while out in the woods during hunting season. Blacksmith stated that normally when he receives calls like this, they come from local townspeople who are also unfamiliar with the territory, making them easily identifiable when spotted by officers on patrol. Blacksmith went on to state that these two specific eyewitnesses were definitely not locals. Having spent most of their lives living in part of the Upper Peninsula, he said that his well over a decade of patrolling the area, he's never had to respond to something like this before, although it's no doubt harvested his interest in researching and hunting these reported creatures. Nineteen ninety nine reports of a large bipedal canine resembling a hyena have been reported around Grand Rapids in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Officer Blackburn reports his incident. February second, nineteen ninety nine. I responded to a call for an unidentified animal spotted on King Highway near Riesland Drive in Comstock Park, since we serve the entire county. The witnesses said that they were driving when they saw something run across the road and into some nearby woods. They described it as about six feet tall, black fur, and a long tail that was moving quickly. Its movements were very fluid and similar to that of a kangaroo. They kept expecting to see it jump over a ditch, but it never did. The one thing they were sure of was that it ran on two legs. I went into the wooded area, immediately began seeing tracks in the snow. I followed them for about 15 minutes, until I lost them at a steep embankment. There was no way anyone could scale that bank with feet like those, about 20 inches long, massive canine feet, without using their hands too. It should be noted that these sounds are heard during daylight hours only, and thus far, there has been no sighting of what would be construed as Bigfoot during darkness, which is considered very unusual, if indeed this creature exists as most Bigfoot sightings occur at night or dusk and dawn conditions. Witnesses have been exclusively rural residents. They claim to have been hunting, hiking, etc. when they heard the sounds and then spotted a large bipedal canine figure in their vicinity. It really makes you wonder. An unknown bipedal canine was reported being sighted by a police officer just west of Highway 164 in Richfield, Wisconsin. On July 18th, 2021, 8.30 p.m., a police officer who will remain anonymous was driving eastbound on Pleasant Hill Road, roughly one and a half miles west of Highway 164 in Richfield. He caught something moving just off the side of the road. He slowed down to have a look and got out for a better look, as well as shining his flashlight over in the darkness. His attention turned towards something in the trees, and he saw two large eyes staring back at him, which were apparently high up. It took him several seconds to find their source, supposedly what looked like legs. It was standing there, completely motionless. At least, that's how it appeared to him, and was reflecting light from its eyes. The officer describes the figure as being very tall, well over seven feet, covered in very fine hair, having long arms and two legs that were proportionally large. It was upright, like a person, hawks in the legs like a dog. The officer claims there is no sound at all, just complete silence from this thing and outside. After observing it for several seconds, he gets back in his car, drives off. He is 100% sure 
That is what he saw. It was not a bear or anything like that. He has seen bear hunting on his off time multiple times. This was far more canine-like in appearance. The area near where the setting took place is reportedly known for unexplained sounds and apparently screams coming from the forest. Think like strange cries. The officer has also seen strange things before while patrolling the same area. Footprints, sounds, sightings. Now, I myself have a very good friend who has also reported seeing two large-legged figures covered in fur right around the same location. These figures were standing right next to a tree on the south side of the road, close to the shoulder. The road in this area is curvy. He also said he caught eye shine, and the eyes were very large. We said he probably saw this for about three seconds. His headlights caught this, and he is 100% positive he saw something. He said his heart dropped, and he immediately called me while still driving. I knew something unique based on his demeanor and tone had happened. About 45 minutes after he had called me, I went back to the site with him. We brought our dog. Every time we stopped or approached this area, where the sighting was, he started to whimper, and the dog would not let us get any closer. As we were getting close and in a place where we could actually pull off and stop, something very loud happened behind us that startled both of us. A loud growl. I swear, it came from one spot, right next to the road, then moved into these trees where it sounded like at least two animals fighting for five seconds. That's what my friend said. It made me start talking. Then, his question got cut off by another sound. This disturbance causing our dog to start whining and whimpering would not go any further. We stood there for a good while listening to the woods, but did not proceed further. The area where we parked is very secluded. Nobody was out there. It was like 10 p.m., we knew what we heard. We knew it was not a bear or any other large animal that is known, because of how it sounded. Its proximity to the road, and the fact you could pinpoint its location. It also was moving in a way that made us think person. This creature seemed aggressive because of what just happened. We then decided to back off into top speed on our vehicle, so we would get out of the area quickly, should other disturbances happen, which still caused me to call my friend while driving stupidly fast down this road. The noises stopped, so I felt better. Thank you for your time to read this. I know it was long, but I just want to make sure you had all the information you needed. I'm going to remain anonymous for this, but I had a sighting of something that I can't explain in 2011, springtime. And during the time, I was working as a police officer for a small town in northwestern Oklahoma. What made me take an interest in this particular case was the description given to me by the witness. It sounded just like how other witnesses have described other abnormals, to include Sasquatch. I had one individual come to the department as they were reporting what they thought they saw appeared to be a man with long black hair, no shirt or clothes, standing near their pond at about one o'clock in the morning. Apparently, it looked like they were holding a knife or some sort of weapon. As he noticed them, looking out their window, he began walking into the woodline, disappearing from view nonetheless, never returning, only after several attempts of trying to find him by the reporting party. I'm not sure what he had actually had in his hand. I never asked of a description of it specifically, but... I began to do some research on my own. I came across several websites dedicated to Bigfoot sightings, where individuals could almost describe perfectly, with many others, what they had seen. In my years as an officer, before retiring from law enforcement, I've come across multiple reports of unusual creatures being seen all throughout Oklahoma, as well as neighboring states. In fact, just last year alone, I had another retired law enforcement officer tell me all about an experience that their own individual mother-in-law had while she lived out on a farm near Elk City. She told him about a time she had gone out to her chicken coop and had a face-to-face -face encounter with a small monkey-type animal, standing on two feet without hair, looked like it was wearing pants, who began making loud sounds before running away. It appeared as if it had jumped over multiple fences, 
only to disappear into the tree line. I also know that many people have reported seeing humanoid creatures looking similar to how Bigfoot looked and how Bigfoot is described, all through various areas all around Elk City, Shawnee as well, and even the town I grew up in, Guthrie, where witnesses and victims claim these creatures prey on livestock, chickens, goats, pigs, everything. This is also not the only time I've received reports involving unusual creatures that match what has been described by the witness to include Bigfoot or Sasquatch. I'm sure these things happen all the time throughout the U.S. and even other countries throughout the world. However, I'm most familiar with Oklahoma, and it appears to be designated for many areas of things like this. I really doubt a lot of these stories are made up. If you got a chance to sit down and talk to these witnesses, they're terrified. Something is happening here. What could these creatures be? How does somebody prove their existence without anyone ever actually catching one? Do they really exist in different forms? January of 2001. Officer Bradwick encountered what he described as a tall being reminding him of Nosferatu. It terrified him. His story is one of the scariest reports on record. This story has remained unsolved to this day, and has had more eyes on it than anything I've ever written about yet. He saw something, and I could tell you fairly certainly that whatever it was could not just be simply explained away. I was driving down the road in Franklin County, Texas. It was around 2.30 in the morning. I had just passed under a streetlight. It was very dim, but I could see everything outside of its illumination. I was looking up at some movement on the right side of the road. There were cow paths through this area, and it looked like something large had ran across my path. I slowed down to about 45 miles per hour, thinking I would let whatever it was pass me if I wanted to cross here. Now, as soon as I did this, what appeared to be a man traveling on all fours jumped up from off the ground, flying and leaping over my car. The being that Bradwick saw was well over eight feet tall, pale white, and had a sickly looking face and skin. Long claws, eyes that were yellow and green, a very pronounced face, sharp features, bald, sharp pointy ears, and whitish, deathly bluish skin which is why he made the Nosferatu reference. He said it also kind of reminded him of a vampire bat in the face. Could this be some sort of ancient creature, like a vampire or a demon? Is it out here eating cows? Or perhaps this is the mysterious chupacabra, responsible for draining the blood out of many livestock animals. What do you think? August of 2000 Detective Jason Schaefer says he saw an 8-9 to nine foot tall upright figure at about 1.53 a.m. He was in pursuit of three suspicious men in a vehicle. The entity in question was standing in the middle of the road, blocking his way. The detective slammed on his brakes, but got out of the car to make sure that he was not hallucinating. The creature ran probably about 40 to 50 miles an hour clearing the highway in two leaps. For more than half an hour after this experience, Schaefer's hands shook uncontrollably to such an extent he could not even hold a cup of coffee. He has not returned to that location since his encounter. It's been speculated that this entity is a form of Bigfoot, but since no other sightings have been reported at the time, I cannot conclude that with any certainty. However, I have heard several stories of what is being called shadow people all throughout the Atlanta area. This leads me to believe that the general population are not coming forward with their own sightings, for fear of ridicule, humiliation, while some do not even know that these entities exist. I'm sure there are many more people out there who have had encounters or experienced paranormal phenomena. They just don't realize it. They've never had any prior knowledge of them. This is why I'm sharing his story. Please feel free to share this experience with your friends and family. But remember, keep an open mind. Thank you for taking the time to read about Mr. Schaefer's experience. Eight o three a.m., 
officer was dispatched to a disturbance in the downtown area. Upon arrival, was flagged down by a college student who had been walking back to a friend's house. The student stated that she had been walking down the street and heard weird cat-type noises, as if there were two large cats fighting around the corner of the apartment building. As she got closer, it sounded as though the fight was moving away from her at a much faster speed. The officer made his way towards the direction that was being described and found nothing upon arriving at said location. Officer then began driving through the neighborhood, hearing no further reports, stopping at one point to observe some kids playing basketball. While stopped and idling, however, he heard and saw what can only be described as a very large, very dark, bipedal animal darting behind one of the buildings. The officer immediately turned around to investigate, found nothing upon arrival at said location. Note, this has been cross-referenced with a police report from earlier this year, detailing a similar occurrence in January, involving an unknown creature standing on two legs and looking in through an apartment window before disappearing behind the building that it was seen by side. The woman involved in that case stated she had seen previous issues with her cat going missing. This is after behaving strangely for several days on end, preceding each disappearance and death, since this is not the first cat to have happened to. These two cases could not be related, as no direct correlation could be made between either person's statement or their prior history with any type of animal life. The officer found nothing upon arriving at said location. However, the second sighting occurred within 60 days. As such, it does indeed constitute a second sighting. The animal was characterized by being bipedal, dark in color, with two glowing yellow eyes, which also were described as feline. No further information is exactly available at this time. No correlation between the sightings have been established. A search of the area involved turned up no signs of any animals matching either officer's description. No correlating reports have been made from neighboring precincts. However, Further investigation into any possible link with that case from January is currently ongoing. I'll keep looking for anything else that might be related to this one. But right now, everything points toward a dead end on this one too. June 22nd, 2013. Officer Jameson spotted what he describes as a dogman in the middle of a dirt road, standing on its hind legs looking directly at the officer. This is an interesting case, due to being so close to where I live. The creature, I believe, has been seen many times by locals since 1995, when Officer Jameson had run into this one. I've talked with several people that have seen it, including two that saw the creature at different times, ten months apart. Both people I've talked to had told me they, too, had seen a dogman in the area of Kempner, this is in Texas slash Cotton, Oklahoma. The area is located just off of US-75 between Crum and Sanger. From talking with several people who live in that area, including a former police officer, the creature had been seen many times all throughout the years. The first time I heard about this creature was from a gentleman who was a local government official of one of the nearby towns. He wishes to remain anonymous. He stated that he had family members who live in Kempner. They had told him of their encounters with the dogman, as well as seeing it chasing several deer, on multiple occasions. A little bit more investigating led me to Officer Jameson, and his sighting of the strange creature back in 95, as well as recent cell phone pictures taken by an Oklahoma construction worker, detailing and showing an animal standing upright like a man near the I-35 between Durant and Gainesville, heading into Texas. Officer Jameson's encounter with what we believe may be the very same creature prompted me to contact and reach other officials who deal with cryptozoology. We all agree that this may be a dogman and is possibly related to the two sightings of a strange animal that had been eating livestock in southern Oklahoma near Lawton by ranchers going back many decades. We believe it may even be responsible for killing and eating two calves in northern Fannin County back in 2011 as well as a horse being killed and partially eaten in Cole County, near Bromide, in 2013. This is after a sighting by a school bus driver on Highway 69, east of Tishomingo, who also saw tracks nearby. 
After speaking with several locals about the recent encounters, including one family who had also held several possible Sasquatch encounters near their home, my partner and I will be heading up to study the area and search for possible denning sites. Wish me luck. Two thousand one. Officer N writes this. In late two thousand one, I was patrolling in a mountainous rural area near Las Vegas, New Mexico. My unit, a fully marked police cruiser, was parked on the south side of the road next to some darker woods, while my partner and I sat inside talking while he filled out paperwork. It was about five AM, just getting daylight enough for us to see clearly through the windows without our headlights on. Suddenly, we both noted movement at the edge of the bushes right along where there would be no path or roadway. Something very large began lumbering across the open ground towards us. As it got closer, we could tell it had four legs with hooves, but what really caught our attention were its arms. Long muscular forms swinging back and forth like an ape. The animal covered about a hundred yards in the time it took the headlights to circle through the windshield, since we were still sitting idle and when it cleared the headlights, we could tell it was very, very large, at least eight feet tall. We both jumped out of the car, with my partner behind me, reaching for his gun while I went towards its direction without drawing my weapon. The animal apparently realized this, taking off into the woods on all fours. However, when I entered into these same woods, attempting to follow it, there was no sign of any tracking or disturbance in the thick brush, this would suggest that somebody had ran through there. I talked to the other officers in neighboring towns who later told me they'd also see reports of a wild man in the area. There were other reports from the same period where horses had been talked about being spooked and large human-like footprints being found alongside of them. Our department has spent about an hour tracking it to no avail, and we never saw it again. Nineteen sixty nine. Officer Miller is reported to have encountered a being in the New London County on two separate occasions while patrolling. The first incident took place around midnight, and he saw the creature only fifteen feet away from his parked cruiser. It was large, covered with short dark hair, had no clothes or jewelry on of any kind, and these large grey eyes that glowed similar to the way a flashlight does. The second sighting occurred several months later after Officer Miller received information about an unrelated incident involving three missing people who were hunting in the area while where he sighted the creature once before. Officer Miller stated that they went out to investigate, setting up some traps for it. They did not find anything, though, due to the heavy rainfall. He claims it was around five weeks later, while off-duty at home. The telephone rang. It was the deputy sheriff in charge of investigating the missing people, who wanted to know if he had seen anything unusual. Officer Miller said that due to the heavy rainfall, there was no way for it to leave evidence, but told him what he had saw five weeks prior. The officer described the creature as being around seven to eight feet tall, covered in short dark hair, and a very ugly face. The eyes were also said to be glowing this weird gray faint color. During the summer of 1973, Detective Bradson was called to investigate a complaint about an unknown animal killing livestock. It was first thought to be a wolf or coyote, but that notion was quickly dismissed. While walking through the woods, he came upon what appeared to be large tracks, followed them as they led into a swamp area with very heavy and thick vegetation. He stated that once he had entered the area, it felt like somebody was watching him, and he had noticed a pair of bright green eyes in the distance. Detective Bradson pulled out his gun, firing a warning shot into the air, but the eyes soon disappeared. He stated that he left when it began to get dark, thinking that whatever that was was watching him. It would not bother him if he turned his back on it, so he decided to leave. Bradson described the same creature that was in Miller's report, only four years prior to this happening. 2005. New Orleans, 2005 there had been a call about an individual that had possibly broken into the home of an elderly person who was now deceased. After further investigation into the case, another call came in standing. 
there was two suspicious individuals prowling around the property of a boarded-up house near the swamps. The officers responded and found what they described as two men wearing black suits, which stood about six feet. They were standing in the shadows when they approached. The police officers both made the decision to shoot at them, but somehow these individuals vanished into thin air. There were no signs of any footprints or how they escaped. There had been nothing that could have provided them a bridge for their escape. No cover or anything nearby that would have allowed them. The area had been searched thoroughly and could not find a single trace of the two men that were described. The second sighting took place just weeks later when another individual who was out late claimed that he had been abducted by an unknown creature. They believe it may have been the same two men as before that they described, creatures being very tall and very pale, with no hair, the face appearing to be more skull-like, but there were still enough features present that they could see it was very human-like. The witness said that it tried to talk to them, but their vocal cords were not made for speaking the language that they heard. They had no clue what language they were speaking, but it was something very different about these creatures than most people would expect to ever find out in the swamps of New Orleans. New Orleans PD officer Mike Farrell stated to the media that he had been able to find any information online about these creatures. It would be unlikely for people to believe their story if they did not see it for themselves. He said that there have also been other sightings in the area, but nothing else is substantial as to what was reported by his own partners. There were no traces of blood or any other kind of medical equipment anything that would have been used to transport the body from the scene where they found it. Their reports seemed to indicate that somebody had just dropped an elderly woman on the front lawn and left her body. Now, the latest story had been relayed by a man who was a senior officer at the New Orleans PD. He was an off-duty cop, but had stopped into a local bar to grab something to eat and drink before heading home. While eating, he saw another officer walk in looking rather disturbed about something that had happened on the shift. The senior officer asked him if everything was alright. He responded by saying they had been sent to do a welfare check on an elderly woman. When they arrived, nobody was at the location. The house did not appear to have been entered, so they went back to check on the vehicle, continue with surveillance on the property. They noticed a light on in the window, which made them decide to rush into the house. But again, there were no signs somehow of electricity even being turned on or connected, which doesn't make any sense. They checked the entire place, didn't find anyone or anything, so they went back out to resume surveillance. While standing by the front door, an officer said he saw movement in his peripheral. It startled him. He looked into the shadows that were cast by the trees, and he saw movement, which made him believe that something was coming towards them. A second officer stepped closer, to see what he was looking at, and both of them realized they were staring at two figures walking up to the house. The first one they described as being very tall, walking with very long strides. The other was quite small in comparison. They are not sure if it was a child or someone shorter than average height. The officers that night decided not to pursue these figures. I think it was a combination of being a little too spooked, and the fact that these figures evaded them by disappearing into the shadows. One of the accompanying officers on the scene also reported a strange electrical feeling in the air, but wasn't sure if that had anything to do with any of the strange occurrences around the elderly woman missing or the fact that she had no electricity running to her house, yet there were still lights on in the room. All very strange things that cannot be explained. In this report, the officer wishes to remain completely anonymous but had a sighting of a strange humanoid werewolf-looking creature while patrolling a rural section of Baxter County, Arkansas. The creature had been spotted on a four-way stop by another officer, and as such, the first-handed officer was sent to investigate. When he arrived at the location, the strange-looking humanoid made its appearance, beginning to walk across one of the roads into some nearby brush. As it turns out, this area is part of a long history that includes werewolf-type activity, as well as strange, unexplainable animal deaths and disappearances. There was no time to see how big this creature was. It very quickly disappeared into a nearby wooded area. The officer did make a search of the location 
and discovered several sets of tracks in the dirt roads. But because it had rained recently, they were not enough for a clear picture of what might have been responsible. The report went on to state, while this particular section does not get its share of strange activity, including other types of animal mutilations and sightings by local residents, this is the only official complaint from an officer thus far. Other officers from the same department have also come forward to discuss their knowledge of the area, including one who claimed that his own grandfather had told him about a werewolf-type creature living around here. Because his location was so remote, few people ever went there. There were no other reports until now. Since then, there have been a string of stories from around the world on some very strange and disturbing creatures, including a few, like on sites like Reddit, where people have also claimed to see werewolf-type creatures. Although this is nothing new, as there have been reports of these beings seen back for centuries here in America, there was one interesting note that made this one stand out among all others. That was an incident involving a mother and child who saw what they thought was a Bigfoot moving along near their home just outside of town. They got into position with their camera and began recording. What happened next is something that those who have seen werewolves before will only find it too familiar. The description given sounds like it could be a dog or a wolf that is suffering from mange possibly, which causes hair loss and other physical ailments. However, there is one important note here, and it has to do with the apparent bad smell that was given off by this sickly looking animal. That's right, dogmen, Bigfoot, werewolves, they've all been reported in association with some very bad odors and this particular sighting seems more than likely when you consider its location. There have been reports of similar sightings around these parts, so people do live in here and are aware of what they might be seeing. Yet another report involved two separate officers, each having their own stories to tell about the incidents they've had while patrolling this particular part of Arkansas, with most of these reports occurred during the night. Although there is very little known about these encounters, most people who have seen them describe them as being around five to six feet tall, looking very gaunt and thin. There is also a mention of glowing eyes, which, if you read many reports, seems to be a common link among all these types. One officer stated that he had been out in the same area, and he saw something moving quickly through the trees. At first, he thought it might be an animal, but then another report came over his radio about a Bigfoot sighting nearby, so this was close enough to make him feel uneasy about what he might actually have seen. And yet another report. A Kessna pilot was flying his small plane at about 5 a.m. He came upon what looked like a huge hairy creature that had also been spotted by several other pilots in this rural region of Arkansas. This particular officer stated that people who live in these areas have been telling stories for years now about how they've encountered these strange creatures, and even some said they knew of some who hunt them. Out of the most interesting encounters I found, this one involved a police officer from the Callan County who responded to an animal complaint one evening near the town of De Quincey. As he arrived on scene, he saw two sets of eyes coming up from behind a nearby tree, which he described as being extremely bright. This was the first sighting of what he thought was a huge canine-type creature, but then it opened its mouth and let out this unearthly growl causing him to back up in fear. The officer who saw this said that whatever it was, it must have been eight feet tall, grayish dark smoky fur all over its body. And lastly, the final sighting occurred on Highway 165 near Wilmer, where another cop had responded to a call about kids who claimed they'd seen a Bigfoot or werewolf type of person. According to their description, this thing had very long arms, raccoon or human-like hands, and it was enough to scare the officer away from the sighting. On the evening of July 7, 2007, police officer Jim Corder was patrolling an area of the swamp in Lauderdale County, Mississippi. He noticed two red dots reflecting in his headlights. The object turned out to be an animal which appeared similar to that of an alligator, but had legs and arms with thumbs on each hand. According to reports, it walked upright like a human being, or like a man. The sighting lasted for about 20 seconds, before the creature quickly moved off into the darkness under the tree canopy. 
Officer Corder stated that there were no houses in the immediate vicinity, and that this was not far from one of several alligators were spotted earlier in the week. He said that there is no way it could have been mistaken for any other type of animal. Corder immediately reported the incident to his supervisor, who was completely surprised by what he had said. A chopper with thermal imaging devices was requested after daybreak, but nothing could be found or the following morning. It's speculated that this creature was the lizard man, also in part of the Mothman legend. Supposedly, one of the first lizard man sightings came from an oil rig worker who saw it crossing nearby in Scarberry, West Virginia in December. Local residents claimed there are caves along the swamps where bodies were taken to be experimented on during World War II, all done by Japanese scientists who were brought here for the purpose under Operation Paperclip. Some believe these experiments created what are now called lizard men, but keep in mind it's all speculation. Of course, there's other infamous cases, like the 1980s lizard man of Scape or Swamp in South Carolina, detailing a young man who stopped on the side of the road to deal something with his car, when out of the swamp came a large humanoid lizard that chased him. Yet there was another encounter. A man claimed he was hunting in the swamp, and he saw something that looked like what he described as a seven-foot-tall lizard walking out into the swamp, turning to look at him before wading off into the water. This is a not-so-popular account, and easily is overshadowed by the young man's, although this hunter's account came roughly three years after the boys did. He claims it had scales, bright green eyes, and was only about 30 feet away from him. When shown the drawing of the young boy from the scape or swamp situation in 1984, he said it looked identical. Another local resident who claims to have seen this creature states, I don't know what I saw, but whatever it was, it wasn't human, and it has scared me so bad. I'm still afraid to go back out there alone. Sightings of similar creatures have been reported in many of the areas around the world. Central and South America, Africa, Australia, Japan, and China. In most cases where witnesses have been able to give detailed descriptions, it's been closely related to a bipedal reptile with scales. Even Native Americans have told their stories about these creatures. They speak of a giant lizard-like monster that hunts and eats humans, especially human children. Some cultures held lizardmen as gods, while others believe them to be man-eaters and more like animals than men, while others believe them to be demonic deities. Lauderdale County Sheriff Billy Soley states, We're not saying this thing doesn't exist. We just haven't come up with any evidence yet to prove it. Those who live in or near this area claim they will continue looking until they find some evidence. In conclusion of this report, I would like to state that there are many other first-hand reports of witness sightings, experiences, and encounters. These should not be taken lightly, as they could very well cause panic if released to the wrong people or put into the wrong hands. If you have any more information detailing this creature, or know anybody who has had an encounter with it, please contact me by email. There is several sightings reported all around Sedgwick County, all by different law enforcement officials. Sightings are rare, but they do happen. The day of October 17th, 2010, yet another officer working out of Sedgwick County had his very own sighting. He was on patrol in the backwoods of the Wichita area, and he saw something that will never leave him. An unknown, large, horned humanoid was seen by this officer, and it is hard to believe what he wrote in the report of what really happened. At approximately 7 a.m., I was dispatched to an abandoned residence for a suspicion person call. I arrived at the location, did not see anybody or anything suspicious around the house, so I ran tracks north into some nearby woods along with the sergeant. As we were tracking, I believed and I saw something along the east hilltop through the brush, I could not tell what it was, but I thought it was a person hunched over, moving northbound behind some covering. I alerted Sergeant A to be on the lookout for whatever it was that I had seen. Sergeant A caught up to where I was at, asked me, what did you see? As he approached, 
both of us clearly heard very heavy footsteps coming from our 10 o'clock position. We saw nothing, so we proceeded west towards our vehicle, where we would have had better lighting to investigate the area, because whatever this thing or person was, they were being extremely cautious in their movement. Both Sergeant and I saw what appeared to be an extremely tall, six-foot grayish or possibly brown-colored subject, standing upright but hunched over. As this being noticed our presence, it turned to its left side, as if it was attempting to conceal itself with some tree coverage. Sergeant A asked me if I had seen the same thing that he just saw. We both then observed what happened to be a large set of horns pointing up from around its head area, very reminiscent to a goat or a ram. What we saw next froze us in our tracks. This being lifted up its right arm over its head, which allowed us to see that it had a huge hand with large black claws. It resembled a paw, but much more like that of a hand. There are no reports that match this particular sighting, but the area has a plethora of Bigfoot sightings reported by other officers, and yet another sighting report by a deputy sheriff. He was called by a citizen reporting Bigfoot activity in the area. The deputy sheriff met the witness at the location where the sighting had taken place. The deputy describes what he saw. As he started to investigate the area, my partner and I clearly saw something standing about 200 yards away from us. It did not appear human. We could only see its head and shoulders as it appeared to be looking into a ravine, or possibly at something coming up out of the ravine. What I remember seeing are two very bright eyes above some vegetation. My partner stated, It's Bigfoot. We both took off toward an open field nearby, trying to cut it off before it got back over the hillside close to Highway 54. But we lost sight of it. My partner went up to the spot where we had seen it, staying back near the ravine, thinking that Bigfoot was still standing at the bottom of our viewing area. My partner stated, I don't see anything. We both began to walk toward each other, and as we did, we noticed a very large grayish colored subject looking above us from an embankment. It seemed to be watching us as if curious about what we were doing. The creature then ran down into a heavily wooded area on top of a hillside which would have put it close to the highway again, even though my partner and I were fairly deep into this open field with no trees or other obstacles between us and it. My partner and I both got a clear look at it running away from us. It did not stand up and walk like a human does, but it did appear to be on two legs, although its speed was very incredible for something large. I have been in law enforcement for over 22 years now, and I've never had anything come close to happening like this did. Other than evidence left behind, we did not get any pictures or videos of the creature, but my partner, I think, got some footage while we were chasing what we thought was going to be a Bigfoot back into the wooded area after having lost sight of it earlier when we first ran through the brush trying to cut it off before it got past us. Unfortunately, he lost access to that camera, taken by his supervisors. My partner and I both felt that the creature knew which direction we would go to cut it off. So by going opposite directions, it caused us to split up, allowing it time to get away from us. During this encounter, I was wearing my uniform but not my body armor or equipment belt, which can be limiting at times, especially when trying to chase someone or something heavily through the brush. I have read the setting report filed by Officer B, which also reported a large upright grayish colored subject only about 20 feet away from him at around 8.25 in the morning near Highway 54 just outside of Sedgwick County, Kansas on December 5th, 2011. This is also right around the same time, approximately, that myself and my partner were chasing a very large unknown subject through the field. My partner and I both heard something walking through the tall grass around us, moving in another direction. It sounded far too heavy to be a human. We did not hear it running, but we did get a clear view of it, approximately 150 yards away from us, looking down. That's a day I'll never forget. This report details an unusual and frightening nighttime encounter with a large canine creature during an overnight patrol shift by two Dallas County Sheriff's Office police deputies. The report states that the officers, parking on the shoulder of 135 southbound, 
underneath Interstate 35 between mile markers 142 and 141 near West Des Moines, Iowa. At around 2.30 a.m., as they observed northbound traffic, a very large and identified canine creature emerged from some nearby cornfields headed towards their vehicle. The first deputy stated that it ran across the road in front of them very, very quickly. He estimated that it was about 30 yards away before disappearing into the black. The animal made no sound as it approached or when it crossed the highway. He said that not only was its gait unlike a dog, but it was very large and covered a wider distance with each stride. Further, its light tan coloring blended in with the gravel road. The deputy also stated he noticed some unusual features, such as very long hair, like a horse's mane, down the middle of its back. He considered this to be abnormal for a canine creature, as all the other dogs have seen short hair on their backs. The second deputy said that she first saw the animal at about 45 degrees from her right window as it crossed directly in front of them without ever slowing down or deviating from its straight path. She estimated that it ran at least 30 feet before becoming obscured by darkness as it entered a cornfield alongside the interstate. She also said that she noticed long hair from its back as well. The first deputy stated that the animal's gait was not normal for a canine as it traveled much wider than a man with each stride and that during the few moments before it entered the field of corn, he could not make out any discernible features, but did notice an odd coloration, which matched the ground. He added that this creature was like a bipedal German shepherd, but very, very large. Both officers were able to observe this creature for only a few short seconds before it disappeared ultimately into the darkness, and they described a very moonlit night with pretty good visibility. The very first deputy felt he had seen something unusual, but both officers decided to maintain radio silence about their sighting, out of concern they would be perceived as crazy. Afterwards, the first deputy immediately asked to do a search on Google Earth for any Iowa landowner who may have used horses in an unusual manner, which could indicate a possible connection with this canine. He said he quickly located what appeared to be a horse stable surrounded by cornfields nearby, discovered it belonged to a man who was originally from Arizona, and had experience with such animals like mountain lions, bears, and even skinwalkers, apparently. The deputy decided to make further inquiries to this lead. However, he did not want to risk being seen as suspicious or appears if this primary purpose was for getting information related to the sighting. The owner of the property declined an interview. The Des Moines County Sheriff's Office, Iowa Department of Natural Resources, and a senior biologist from the Iowa Department of Natural Resources was unable to identify any native species which matched this officer's description. A Texas veterinarian who specializes in examining hair samples was consulted, but stated that she would need a blood sample or tissue sample for proper analysis. The first deputy obtained some hair found on the shoulder of 135 southbound. However, it was disposed of after being improperly preserved due to procedural error. A second attempt at obtaining a sample from that area, although another source proved unsuccessful as well. In August of 2010, I had my very own sighting of something similar while working third shift patrol with another deputy for Dallas County Precinct 3, Constable's Office near Forney, Texas. I was stopped at the intersection of County Road 298 and Stell Bridge Road, facing eastbound on CR-298, with my emergency lights activated, I observed something unusual traveling northbound off to my left, or north, in a small wooded area. At first, it looked like it might be a large armadillo, or some other form of rodent that had crawled into the brush for shelter. But this thing was moving very fast, and it was moving through thick undergrowth. It didn't seem too large at first, but it certainly kept its distance across the drainage ditch as it continued northbound towards me at about 15 miles an hour, zigzagging back and forth between trees, sometimes losing ground. As it got closer, I noticed that this creature, too, had a long mane and shaggy hair, reminding me of a horse, but the motion was different. The most unusual thing I observed about this animal is that it seemed almost 
alien and robotic in its movements, walking upright on two legs but with very long strides, like how somebody would run through tall grass while pretending to be Tarzan or something. As it approached my location, about 65 feet away, I got out of my vehicle and I could hear some dogs barking in the distance at what seemed like the same time when this thing emerged from the trees on the other side of CR-298. After observing me, this thing turned around, running back into the brush where it disappeared, with an expression on its face like, uh-oh, I didn't mean to be caught. As far as size, I would estimate it to be roughly five feet tall, but very slender, covered with thick hair. I remained on the scene for about 15 minutes afterwards, thinking the same thing might exit the brush on the other side, but it never did. I felt if there were any aggressive thoughts in its mind towards me, simply because I was a stranger, it could have easily taken me down, since we were only separated by a ditch and several trees. Witnesses who live in that area report that they frequently see stray dogs and feral hogs near their homes. People dump unwanted pets into those woods all the time, but nobody seems to know what this thing actually is. Maybe all those pets make for a food source of whatever that is. Now, a third deputy had also reported seeing tracks, which he believed to be from the same creature at a very similar location. After several weeks, though, of attempting to relocate the tracks, they were lost. I find it strange that this is not more widely known about, since I have been told by state and local authorities, numerous people have reported seeing something very similar over the years in that area. A few others claim to have heard extremely loud screams, which sound like a woman being murdered coming from deep in those same woods. Since there's never been any evidence found of violent deaths or missing persons who match the description, official explanations for these events usually range from wild dogs and coyotes to escaped exotic pets, such as monkeys and lions. However, some locals believe it could be an undiscovered species that we know nothing about, such as a Sasquatch or an undocumented breed of primate. The only clue we have ever found was a single set of prints, which were discovered to be from a man's work boot, maybe accidentally dropped during his normal duties. Perhaps there really is something out there, and it could be right under our noses. This report details the sighting made by a police officer to an apparent bipedal canid in a suburban township of a large city along the Navajo. The original sighting came from two boys who were riding their bicycles. They spotted what they thought was a man walking with a dog, but upon closer inspection, they realized it was not a man. It wasn't very long after this that an officer also reported seeing something very similar during his own patrol shift. It had been raining for some time, so there was plenty of mud to have casted footprints and possibly even made impressions upon leading up to the officer's first encounter. The police officer first noticed some sort of unusual activity at around 7.30 p.m. on May 23, 2011. It was very shortly after this, he got out of his vehicle to investigate, leaving the engine running in case he needed to make a quick getaway. The officer had seen something large beneath some trees on the other side of a wire fence that had been knocked down beneath the power lines. As it looked up at him, he saw what appeared to be a canine but standing on two legs instead of four. The creature did not stay around for too long. There's no more information about its exact size or weight available. It was described as being at least six feet tall, reddish-brown fur all over its body, which could be interpreted by some people as being fur-like. Whatever this creature was, it sure knew how to quickly escape from the officer, as there's no clear information on its speed or general mannerisms. The boys immediately had called their father, described what they had seen as a tall man. The sighting drew a lot of attention to the area, and soon, other people began reporting seeing similar creatures. In fact, a Navajo tribal officer also witnessed what he would call a skinwalker, reported it to be at least six to seven feet tall and walking around the same neighborhood, although that was a separate incident altogether and occurred right after some time after the boy's own sighting. This report included a statement by a third witness, 
who claimed the creature may have been used for some sort of camouflage or stealth while hiding in some trees or brush about 50 feet away. Shortly before seeing the officer, this man said he had heard dogs barking and howling in a terrible way. This bipedal canine was also described as being covered in dark hair that was more reddish-brown. This eyewitness account came from an 18-year-old Navajo male who claimed to have also seen the creature on May 24, 2011, right around 12.30 a.m. near his home. It is unknown whether or not all three witnesses were together during any part of their sighting, but it seems likely due to the creature's size being so similar. The police officer's sighting happened within less than a mile away from where these two others had saw this. Thanks to Lyle Blackburn for his assistance with this report. On March 22, 2013, Officer Mike Milnor was checking out a report of missing livestock in the area around Luca Chukai, Arizona. Officer Milnor and Navajo officers joined in on the search and investigation in an attempt to find some clues as to where they could find where the animals had been taken since there was no sign of any dead animals immediately. It wasn't long when Officer Larry Wanuka came upon heavy footprints, which would eventually conclude belonged to only one set of tracks. These tracks led them towards a valley, along two cliffs, which were close together. It was there they found where the mutilated animals had been killed and taken, their throats ripped open, and tongues removed. Officer Milnor climbed up into one of the cliff's areas, armed with his rifle, keeping watch of what he believed to be more than one of these things here. What happened next was simply amazing. The officer would tell cryptozoologist exclusively that while he was at his post, he heard the sound of something large walking towards him. He said this, I couldn't see anything, but I kept hearing it get closer and closer. I turned on my light and saw this very large dark figure about 15 to 20 feet away. He describes it as being huge, but having nothing specific in its features. Not even eyes or a mouth, just plain skin all over its body, completely naked. No new genitalia of any kind either. And once spotted, before the officer could promptly react, the being darted off. It was just a crazy moment. I've been working in the area for about 10 years now. I've never heard of or seen anything like that. I've heard of talk of skinwalkers, but I never thought that that's what they would look like, assuming that was a skinwalker. He adds that he does not believe it was a skinwalker, but admits he's not the most educated person when it comes to Navajo mythology and folklore. However, his department chief is well aware of what has been seen and states they do know who the creature might be referencing, one particular shaman. At first, we all laughed it off. Officer Milnor concludes, but after seeing what this thing did to our animals, there's no doubt in my mind, whatever this is, it does exist. Keep in mind, there's been a lot of speculation before about skinwalkers. Sure, many of the Navajo people believe them, but a lot of the state and law enforcement officials do not. Back in 2009, a video that supposedly showed one upright walking man went viral this is apparently the first time that an officer had ever had an up-and-close personal encounter with what might be one of these creatures. The FBI put out documents back in 2011 about skinwalkers, but they were not taken seriously at all and were shut down before ever reaching mainstream media. These documents were leaked at some point, but are now almost impossible to find. The Navajo Nation Police Department, otherwise known as NNPD, was contacted for their take on the story but no comment was made at the time of publication. Whatever the case may be, the NNPD is being very careful on what they choose to publicize and what they choose to respond to, trying to downplay any stories they are accused of. Two deputy sheriffs believe that they have seen a tall, dark figure just outside the city limits of Oceanside, California. They both stated that they were viewing this creature standing on the other side of an eight-foot-tall chain-link fence. The officers state they saw it moving its head back and forth, as if looking around at the area. This is when one of the deputies decides to go get his light for more illumination. 
When he returned, he says that whatever it was on the other side of the fence had moved off into some bushes out of sight range, leaving him with no idea of what he had just witnessed. Another sighting comes from two teenagers who were driving alongside Beach Boulevard in Oceanside on the 14th. They spotted what they thought was a bear on the side of the road, but this soon proved to be incorrect. One of the teens stated that he got out his light, shined it at the thing only to find that there were no eyes. This is when they both ran back to their car and took off in fear, not wanting to see any more. During November of 2012, there had also been numerous UFO sightings all across California. Could these so-called sightings be related somehow? People are always reporting strange lights over cities here in America. What makes these reports any different? What do you think about all these weird happenings taking place today? Is this some sort of warning or sign for humans? Or are people simply making these up because we're desperate for attention? They went on to mention that there were several people that had filed reports of tall, dark figures in the area. They also stated that they were not sure if these incidents were connected, but it seems highly possible since they occurred on the same day. Now, our final report comes from yet another deputy from Graham County, Arizona. He states that while he was on duty around 3 in the morning, he heard a very strange noise coming from outside this location. When he went to investigate what the sound could have been, he says there was a tall, dark figure standing out there in front of him, near an old abandoned meat facility. What makes this sighting even more interesting is that this site was surrounded by open fields and little else. There is no way possible for somebody to hide out there. So, what was this thing doing, just standing there, staring at the deputy? When asked why he didn't do anything to apprehend it, or even fire upon it, he said that he felt paralyzed with fear. He claims that his mind was telling him one thing, but his body would simply not listen. This is when he went back inside the building, calling for backup. When other deputies arrived on location, they could find no sign of any type of activity taking place. There were also no footprints found near the fence line or anywhere else throughout the dirt road leading up to where this creature had been seen standing. Imagine living in a world where you fear everything around you. You never know if something is lurking in the shadows or waiting for its next victim. Those are the people who have to live with this kind of anxiety all the time. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a world where every dark corner could hold some unseen danger. What if there was something out there that was watching your every move, hiding when needed, only to return once again when you least expect it to strike without any warning? These are just some questions that many individuals could ask themselves whenever they hear stories about strange sightings taking place somewhere in or near their own city. Every day, somebody else is coming forward claiming, too, that they have seen something out of this world, or not quite human in appearance. Whether these claims are true or not is anybody's guess at this point. But, what if one day, whatever is hiding in the shadows decides that we are not the ones who should be living on this planet anymore? That is a very deep and creepy thought to ponder about during one's downtime. Hopefully, these stories of strange encounters will just turn out to be lurking in the shadows, and not actually be true. In 2013, Officer Torg managed to secure an actual live DNA sample from a livestock kill while investigating the supposed Lizard Man case out in Bishopville, South Carolina. 8.01 a.m. He had responded to several calls of a large unknown predator supposedly killing livestock, to which he promptly responded. Upon arriving and following standard protocol for such a call, he quickly realized the severity of the situation establishing a perimeter around the kill site to keep onlookers away. 8.20 a.m. Torg obtained saliva from an unknown source on one of the cattle. He reported that it was not possible to tell if it was human or animal. 9.30 a.m. All evidence had been gathered and moved to evidence room waiting analysis. Officer Torg will have DNA results in approximately three weeks, he was told. As always, we strongly urge anybody with information regarding this incident to please report to your local authorities immediately so these investigations can be taken care of under proper jurisdiction. 
two young men also reportedly saw what they described as a lizard man along a very rural road in eastern South Carolina Sunday night. According to reports, two 19-year-old men were driving along a stretch of highway near Bishopville, and they came upon something in the road. They turned around and saw what they described as a seven-foot-tall lizard man and quickly drove off. When asked further for comment, they both said this was no man in a costume, that this was a real-life lizard man, and must have been the same one seen back in the 80s by the young man who had his own sighting in Skateboard Swamp in 1984. In 2002, I had just responded to a call outside of Glendale, Rhode Island. We were called to the area because a hunter had been chased by what he believed was a large bat humanoid. Its face and eyes looked like a ball about two inches across, very bright, and seemed to be grinning at him, full of sharp teeth. The wings did not flap, but somehow glided away from the man who was still standing in amazement at what he just saw. It flew off into the trees and never came back out. I searched for an over an hour, trying to find this creature without success. I heard no other sightings since then. Either there is a bit of hunting that goes on in the area throughout the year. Officer B, who will remain anonymous for this report, indicates that it wasn't something that could have easily been explained. They are very hesitant to share their full encounter due to ridicule. He did, however, describe the creature and did not indicate that it did not seem to be something that could have easily been misidentified as any known animal. Officer B has also indicated that there was also a constant stream of hunters in this area during his time of search, but no other reports were noted for this specific area at the time. He did state that he had heard stories from other officers regarding strange sightings and experiences with various large bat-like creatures all around Glendale, Rhode Island. Over the course of several years, dating back prior to 2002. Of note, Officer B has indicated that they are considered by some members of law enforcement as reliable witnesses due to their hard-earned reputation for truthful reporting of facts associated with their profession. This creature's sighting remains unexplained. Officer B stated that he has seen other reports in the area and has indicated similar sightings in the general area, though no other locations in Glendale match these reports. There is also note that a man by the name of John Bagleary was doing some work in a cemetery in Glendale. He claims to have seen a large creature in one section of the cemetery back in 1994. He described it as demonic, tall, black, with large wings, he claimed that it flew directly over his head. He believes it came from a portal from hell. He equates its size to be roughly eight feet tall if standing Though this report isn't specific to Glendale, I did extensive research for any type of flying humanoid report from all around the area, and only three, including Officer B's sightings, popped up. All other similar sightings I located were across the country, not limited to southern New England. Officer B later sent me an email indicating that there have been other strange incidents prior to his own sighting. Two years previously, a local youth had been severely mauled by something he described as a big hairy thing with wings. No other reports came out from the area regarding the incident. The boy was never interviewed or heard from again. Although, I think a large part of that is the media jumping in to shut that down before the public got word and began to mass panic. Officer B indicated that it appeared to him that law enforcement was trying their best not to mention the incident to the public. At one point or another, Government officials had stepped in and took control over the case. Officer B had also contacted me later, indicating that he had also spoken to a retired officer. They said they were involved in an incident where one of their colleagues was attacked by something very large and unidentified. This was after responding to a call in the same general vicinity. This is likely what led them to investigate further when they received the initial hunter's report. I'm aware of several areas across New England and the world that have, on occasion, had incidents like these. There's usually some kind of game or animal to blame, though what is described by Officer B doesn't appear to be anything like an owl or other known species of flying animal. As always, I welcome any further information regarding this type of report. 
if you have experienced similar events, feel free to contact me. I am also looking for input from individuals who are interested in real research and would enjoy being involved with a group working together on finding explanations for currently unexplained mysteries across New England and beyond. Officer B, whose name will be kept confidential to protect their employment and identity status, also indicated that immediately following the sightings, there had been government officials reporting the same thing, documented as looking like a big person with wings. Other than a few hunters who claim they've seen something large and unidentified flying around at night, nothing has been said about the incident. It is assumed that law enforcement will follow up with further investigation if they can confirm something was actually sighted that evening near Glendale. But, since we are relying largely on bureaucracy, I wouldn't hold my breath. In this report, a group of five police officers all heard a very loud scream in the distance. One officer immediately identified it as a cougar, but when they got to investigate, they found no such cougar existed in the whole area. They know it was not a human due to its volume and inhuman nature. Second and third interviews with Gregory Riddle in this report. The witness talks about seeing an unknown animal twice from his car while driving down a road at night. He quickly gets out there after seeing the animal on both occasions. He knows something is off about it. It gives him chills just looking at it. This report also has some good information within the first interview, where the only witness discusses other cryptids that he has seen before. This is not the only sighting, but it has affected his way of thinking. Here is the first interview. January 27th, 2012. I want to report a cryptid that was seen in the vicinity of Maine on October 5th, 2010. This is around 9.35 p.m. by myself and one other person. The creature was about eight and a half feet tall or more, white or light in color. No skin, no hair. It looked almost skeletal or as I would call mummified. It looked very large, standing up straight it was walking upright when we first saw it. We only caught sight of it through our headlights when we were driving on a two-lane road right where it crossed onto another smaller road. It had been walking along the edge of the woods, disappearing into them after we saw it, before we could really get out and get a good look at it. We did not see its face or hands at this point, since it moved so quickly. We turned off our headlights and stopped near when we lost sight of it. We could not see anything in front of us with our high beams on anyway. It surprised me when I'm driving at night with my high beams on. Nothing is too bright for me to see. Even deer standing in the middle of the road, or other cars coming from behind. I told my friend that there was something big in front of us, to slow down and watch for it. After we stopped, turned off our headlights, we could see that there was something in the road, about a hundred feet away from us, but could not tell what it was due to the snow on the ground making everything appear darker than usual. It's really hard to explain. We sat there looking at it while my friend backed up slowly. It was still standing there when he had to put enough distance between us so it could not see us anymore. As I mentioned, this thing looked like a large mummified skeleton. It was easily the creepiest, most closest thing to Night of the Living Dead you can ever imagine. But it looked far more animalistic than just some huge human skeleton walking around. Either way, the whole incident took less than a couple minutes until it passed. The other interviews included in this report have been since whited out and unfortunately am unable to be included in this database. Thank you for your understanding. I will be telling you what I saw and heard while on duty in the evening of Thursday, July 15th, 2004. I was dispatched to an area. There had been reports of a lot of screaming. Once arriving at the scene, I am met with two other officers, who we will refer to as A and B. We proceeded into a wooded area that led out onto a street near a housing development. It was from that same location that we had heard these crazy yelling screaming coming from behind us in the woods, just off the side of the street. They were very loud, very high pitched. There were some lower pitches mixed in there as well. I have never heard anything like this before since being on duty here in Plymouth County. 
since my partner and I were the only ones who actually heard this, we talked about it. Both of us think that we'd heard some type of Bigfoot-like creature. While not necessarily believers, we like to say we keep our options open. We had Officer C with us as well, but he never heard the screams or anything else. One other thing I'd like to add is there were no residences on the street at the time. Nothing back off the road when we first came out into the woods. There were no vehicles either. This whole area has been developed since then, though there are a few houses now back off the street where we first came out on. The noise we heard down in those woods could be best described as a long scream or yell, mixed with a howl and growl. It sent chills down my spine that night, even as a trained law enforcement official. I never saw anything like this before, and I have not seen or heard it since either. I do hope that one day, I will see something like that again. I know there are certain things out there we cannot explain, and that's what makes it all the more intriguing. It should also be included that Officer A had a previous sighting of the same type of size of creature back in the early 90s. It might have been 91 or 92. I actually spoke with him about it. He described to me what he saw. It was very similar to the way I would describe our screams that evening. The most striking thing was that his, he just stated that it stood there staring at him for almost 10 minutes. Or so he said it felt like it, but it was probably only 30 seconds. Again, all this took place out in Plymouth County. In 1981, an officer claims that he was on patrol with another officer. They received a call about something large in a wooded area of Sand Ridge State Forest. When they went to investigate, lo and behold, they saw what appeared to be a hair-covered man standing on two legs, watching them from about 200 feet away. The creature quickly ran off into the woods before either could get a good look at it but both stated it looked like something out of this world. The following is an excerpt from the witness's report about what happened. As we pulled up, it walked on two legs until reaching a tree, then knelt down behind it, rose up back on two legs, and continued staring at us. Officer Odia got out of the car, rifle in hand. I got out, putting my spare revolver in my waistband, pulling out my shotgun from its bracket under the dash, we both walked to the front of the cruiser, each taking a side scanning for it when Odia said loudly, There it is. I didn't see anything, so shouted where. He told me where it was behind a tree, about 45 yards away, crouched down, watching us. He instructed me to stay back while he approached it for a better look. Odia stated that he watched as this thing kept looking left and right, making sure nobody else was coming. Once satisfied that they were alone, it began running back towards us. That's when I took my first shot at it with my 12 gauge. It was just beginning to rise up though, so all that happened was Buckshot spring into the tree behind it. Odia then grabbed me, told me to follow him back to the car. Once we got back in the car, he told me we needed to leave now. It was very dark, but still light enough for us to see. This thing was hideous. Odia has since passed away, before he died, though, he wanted to come out and get this story for all these years. I just never knew how or what the right time was. Most people have a hard time believing that policemen would not take into account shooting an unknown cryptid. However, when working with Odia, he claimed he would never shoot and kill a Bigfoot because there was simply too much paperwork. One of the scariest things about this whole incident is that whatever these officers saw, Something using intelligence as well as somehow knowing when other people are coming. Police officers from Beaver Township, Ohio, report a bizarre bipedal creature that they witnessed in the early morning hours. On October 25, 2018, at around 5.03 in the morning, four separate police officers from Beaver Police Department all had a terrifying encounter with an unknown bipedal creature. Investigators were on patrol driving down an isolated road, known as Davis Road. They noticed something strange near the edge of the road, pulled up to see what it was. Out of nowhere, a large man-like figure appeared and stood about seven feet tall, so close to the car that they could have reached out and touched him. The officers described seeing features, like a very elongated bony face, huge fangs sticking out of its mouth, 
and black eyes, akin to that of a shark's. Prior to the sighting, the officers noticed something moving along one of the roads in their line of sight, but they weren't exactly sure what it was. Their curiosity got the best of them, so they decided to investigate. When they reached where it had been spotted, all four officers were able to see the creature in full view. They described it being so close that if it wanted to, this thing looked like it was going to jump out at them. One of them said, It was like nothing I've ever seen before. While the other officers agreed with him. According to one officer who did not want to go on camera about what he saw that morning, he knew immediately that it was not a bear or any type of person or thing. He also said it only took seconds for their eyes to adjust and see exactly what he was witnessing. It seemed as if this creature had its own light source, being able to be easily spotted as well. This is some strange stuff. Weird places are all out there. And to add to their statements, after it had disappeared into the nearby bush, two of the officers left their posts to join other two to make the group and investigate. They came up with nothing, except a large hoof mark in the area where they found some broken bones, among other things. They told me that I can't find any evidence of that myself. It would have been on the news if it was proof. And they informed me that there will never be evidence for such things like this, and that if it ever got on the news, it would be very quickly retracted. I have a pretty good job, a loving wife, and two beautiful boys. I love to spend time with my family. My parents live close by, and we get together often for family dinners or gatherings. The day of the incident, I had been at work all day doing some remodeling on an old building downtown. The project was near completion, so I was finishing up, cleaning up before heading out. At about 7.30 in the evening, I jumped in my truck to head home. My office is only about five minutes from our house. It is completely dark outside at this point, but the city was alive with holiday lights and traffic. It's very rare that you can see stars here in El Paso. It's always so bright. I usually drive home along the route that passes through downtown. It provides an excellent view of the night sky as long as you look up. I never let my eyes wander to the side or down, especially when there are cars around me. I am always prepared for somebody to run a red light and strike me. So anyway, on this particular evening, I had just passed by the convention center and was heading down Pesano Drive. The traffic on my side of the road at this point was non-existent. There were no streetlights either. As soon as I was past Myrtle Street, I noticed something on the sidewalk about 15 yards ahead of me. It's worth noting that throughout all of this sighting, my truck was still in overdrive and the engine was running. I call it overdrive because I like to think my truck was cool, but really, it was just in drive. So, I slowed down to get a better look at whatever it was. There was no other cars on the road at this point, but there was streetlights illuminating the area. The object was laying in a fetal position in a small alcove formed by a wall that bordered a building on my right and a closed business on my left. As I approached it, I noticed that it looked like one of those zombie characters from Dawn of the Dead. Torn clothes and dirty skin, dead-looking eyes. But this thing wasn't moving, so it must have just been someone intoxicated or maybe asleep. I don't know. As I passed by the alcove for about 5-10 to ten yards away from it, there was a small metallic object lying on the ground next to it. It looked like a shiny bent nail or something, and I was going to stop and take a look. But as soon as my headlights hit the thing in the alcove, its arms shot up, almost into a perfect 90 degree angle. I was shocked, and began to quickly run out towards my car. I could see pretty quick that this wasn't a human being, like I initially thought. There was actually dead flesh coming off of this person's or thing's body. Its ribcage being exposed, and part of its face was missing and it looked a lot more animalistic than I had ever envisioned. Its face was actually much more elongated, and had sort of a snout, while its legs were actually hawked like that of a dog's, but it wasn't feline or canid. I don't know what this was, but it scared me. 
and so I moved really fast to get out of sight, because I knew as soon if I stopped, it would have got inside the car as it was heading straight for my driver's side door. That's all for this story. I am a 20-year-old American college student who is currently residing in Spain. I've been in Spain for about six months and have already had two experiences with what I believe to be the paranormal. One in particular was very similar to an experience posted. My girlfriend, her mother, and I were returning when we decided that it would be best if we took a day to Ronda. Ronda is known to be one of the most beautiful cities in all of Europe, and it's certainly worth a visit. We made our way across the mountainous region and all through the Spanish countryside. We arrived. We parked where my girlfriend's mom usually parks and began to explore the city. The great thing about it here is it's a very small city. You can explore a lot of the architecture and other points of interest in only a couple hours. After walking around a bit, we decided to make our way towards the bridge. But as soon as I looked at the bridge, I froze solid. The first word that popped into my head was demon. What stood was not human. It looked to be on two legs and had appeared to be wings folded against its back. My stomach dropped out from under me and I felt an intense feeling of dread washing over my body. This wasn't your typical look at that scary creature moment. This thing scared me down to my very core. I didn't have one ounce of courage in me, just intense fear. My girlfriend and her mother hadn't seen it yet. They were still a couple hundred feet away. Although, I did try to point it out to them. But the second they looked its way, it took off straight up into the sky, flying back over the mountains that we had driven through on our way there. Needless to say, we immediately got out of there, or I got us out of there. Traveled back home that day because none of us felt safe remaining in the city after what happened. I do not know what this thing was or why it was standing outside Rhonda's bridge, but I'll never go back to that city again. Even ever since then, my girlfriend has refused to speak to me about it. It's just not been the same. She's even been acting weird ever since I took her, as if she isn't happy or used to being around me anymore. I need help. Please tell me what I saw was in a demon or any other kind of monster. Try as I might. My mind keeps going back to that thing standing on the bridge and what it could have possibly been doing there. Or worse, what it would have done to me had I not seen it. I'm a pretty ordinary girl, 19 years old at the time of the sighting. I have lived in the same place my whole life and have never seen anything strange. It was Halloween night, 2012. I was out with my friends at the time, trick-or-treating. It was just about 8.30, and we had just finished up for the day. We were going home. We decided to take a shortcut through this one neighborhood. There was nobody there, and the streetlights were far and few between. We always took the shortcut. There would be less people around and less cars. We were walking down the road, about halfway through this neighborhood, and we all noticed it. There was a weird, really tall figure standing on top of this hill that you could clearly see from the road. Now, normally, I might not have thought anything of it, since it's Halloween and all, but there was something really off. First off, it was perfectly still. I couldn't see it breathing or swaying in the breeze like normal people do, just perfectly still, like a statue. Also, every time I looked directly at it, my eyes would water up for some reason, so I had to keep them at an angle to look at it, which made everything else blurry. I took out my phone, which is something I wish I hadn't done, pressed record and pointed it towards the figure. When I tried to zoom in, it had this weird glitch, and the phone shut off, even though my battery was at 81%. I turned it back on, only to find out that the video did not record anything. The figure definitely looked human, but it just felt wrong. It was too tall and too white. Not a normal person. Like a pale, dead kind of white. I did not see a face or eyes or mouth from the zoom-in, or what little I did see. We all kind of just stared at it, until we couldn't anymore. All of our eyes began watering so bad. And finally, 
one of my friends said, let's get out of here. And we booked it home. When we got home, my friend who was actually in the video went down to her house so she could show it off to her mom. Her mom is really into ghosts and that kind of stuff, so she watched the video with us before trying to upload it to YouTube, only to find the app would not work. We were planning it on uploading it anyway, but we went back up there a few days later, and when we got home, I opened up my laptop to try and upload it again, only to find out the USB ports had stopped working. As far as I know, nobody has seen this thing that night. What do you think? Have you ever heard about anything like this? Have you had any thoughts or opinions? I would love to get some feedback from anybody. You can call me Greg. I'm a student in a field of wildlife biology and conservation. I love anything outdoorsy or sci-fi related. This encounter occurs towards the end of summer when I was only 16 years old. It happened off a trail deep in the Apache National Forest here in northern Arizona, approximately two hours away from Flagstaff by car. My friends and I had just finished a nine-mile hike. Yes, we were that fit at that age. And the wilderness was thick. Lots of energy. We had finally found a good spot with our camping gear to set up camp. I think we were planning on doing some stargazing. I can't remember... We arrived at our destination around sunset, which was right around 8 p.m., if I'm remembering correctly. And there were three tents set up, with all of our sleeping bags laid out, ready for us. A cooler, albeit small, and a healthy fire. I was sitting on a log at the outskirts of our camp, just listening to my friend A playing acoustic guitar, while another kid from our school was setting up his rifle for some much-needed target practice. I remember looking over towards my other friend, who was sitting in front of him, and all of a sudden, this huge bright orange light appears, almost blinding us. The first thing that pops into my head was a UFO. I quickly laid flat down on my stomach, staring at it, while all my friends are looking puzzled. It had this aura around it that never seemed to dissipate, and seemed very low, almost near the tree line. It was absolutely silent and I could see it getting closer, so I got up to my feet and began walking towards it. Because my curiosity kind of just overcame me, my friends yelled at me, asking what I was doing. As soon as they said that, this orange light glowed even brighter, making everybody squint in pain. We were all looking away after that point, trying to cover our eyes, still in pain. Now, for this part, I remember very clearly. Once the light had dimmed down, somewhat, we looked up and saw a figure crouching on top of one of the top pine trees, surrounding our camp, directly at us, with his arms outstretched like he wanted to give everybody a welcoming hug. Now remember, this was pretty dark. There was no moon in the sky. The only light given off by the fire were the hot embers and the flames, and, of course, using our flashlights and phones were providing us enough visibility to vaguely see what we were doing but not much else. I think where the figure was crouching on looked like a large, huge branch of a pine tree. He held his gaze for probably about 30 seconds before disappearing. We all got up and ran inside the tents. Even though it made us look like we were panicking, we just stayed in there until we couldn't see him anymore and waited for another hour before going back outside again to put more wood on the fire and continue with our just camping trip. I don't really want to go into detail about the long story, but the short story is we went on for three days straight, every night, except the last one where he didn't show up quite as bright, although he still showed up. His presence made everybody agitated and quite moody. It was very, very strange. Now, about a week later, my friend's mom who knows that I came along with them told him that she had heard some hikers passing by our camp that also saw the figure in the distance, this white, glowing, almost bioilluminescent humanoid. They said it also had yellow glowing eyes. I've seen many people post about the same thing before, but nobody seems to know anything about it. It was not a bear, or any other animal that we could think of. My friend even tried shooting at it with his rifle, but the bolts did nothing, and the fact that it was there in the first place was unnerving. 
I could go on about quite a lot of details, but I'll keep this short for now. There have been quite a few other encounters with this thing in the weeks after, but I'll end this here. This is my first time posting, so hopefully nobody gives me crap about that. Thank you for listening to my story. I've had a fair amount of experiences with the paranormal, but I don't know if I'm quite ready to call myself agnostic as of yet. I was walking around my neighborhood. Well, let's be honest. It's not like anyone is trying to steal anything. The worst crime you can expect is just some vandalism or people stealing your trash cans out of spite. So anyway, I was walking around and somehow ended up back behind one of the houses, towards where I knew there was some woods and farmland. Now this woods and farmland spanned for miles and miles. It was also dark at this point, and was about midnight. This was right on Halloween night as well. I walked down this old gravel road to the edge of this area, and just as expected, there was a dirt path leading into the woods that I could barely see. This is just from my memory. At first, I decided to just stand still, listening for any noises. I thought it would be pretty cool to find some creature hanging out in these woods on Halloween night. I heard nothing, though, for about ten minutes, but then I decided to finally walk into the wilderness. It was very creepy, walking through this old abandoned farmland with absolutely zero light. The only thing keeping me from being completely blind walking in there was my cell phone flashlight turned on. I had it on the lowest setting, so that way my surrounding wouldn't be completely pitch black. So far, it wasn't anything too scary, except for the fact that all these weird noises were coming out of nowhere, echoing throughout the whole trees and area. I'm not talking about the usual crickets or owls either. I mean stuff like weird crunching noises and what sounded like bone snapping. It was very bizarre. Anyway, I had been walking for about ten minutes or so and made it to this point where there looked like there were several pathways you could follow through the forest. It kind of reminded me of one of those adventure games with mazes. Max Payne, for example. So I walked on the first path and ended up back on the gravel road after a little bit. Then decided to try another path, but eventually I got lost. After realizing that my phone battery would probably not last very long after being on the flashlight setting the entire time, I checked my phone's GP settings to see which direction I needed to go in so I could get out of there without getting too lost. I turned off the flashlight, turned on my phone's GPS, followed it to what looked like a road or something. As I'm walking towards it, I see all these leaves and sticks rustling around me, as if something had just ran past very quickly. It even got near to this point. Whatever it was sounded like it was trying to mimic my footsteps. Now does that sound familiar? I'm not sure that's the first time someone has heard that before. Anyway, so I'm now paranoid and I'm walking down this road for about another 10 minutes before I come across yet another dirt path. I didn't care how much longer it'd take me to get out of there. If anything, it'd be better than being stuck here. I proceeded down this path, and eventually, I start to see a little bit of light between the trees, which meant that I was getting closer to an opening. So at that point, I just ran out of there, because I knew whatever it was had to be safer than being in there for the next 30 minutes. As I begin to run, I hear this deep, guttural growl from behind me, and I hear something running fast behind me on two legs. I didn't dare turn around to look. I just ran. It turns out, I got out of there by going through another residential neighborhood's backyard and over a fence, never once looking behind me. There was definitely something there. I was not alone. It's a night I'll never forget. It scared me. I'm an amateur cryptozoologist, which you can probably tell from my post. I do not hold any degrees in anything remotely related to the paranormal or cryptozoology, but I am currently working on getting into graduate school. I recently had a sighting that has shaken me to my core. Today was absolute hell. Let me give you some information. As many of you know, today... Myself and a fellow cryptozoologist have been obsessively searching for Bigfoot through heavily wooded areas along the border of Oklahoma. 
we had searched at least 10 times in various locations. We always came up empty. Today, however, it would be much different. This day, in 2013, our first stop was around noon. Venturing into Arkansas, specifically into the Ozark Mountains National Forest. We were driving on some winding roads, and we came across an area called Bear Hollow Lake. There, we saw two deer running away from us. We got out of our car and walked towards them. They're normally pretty shy creatures. They ran away pretty quickly, or so I thought. As I looked back towards the car, I saw one of them staring it had a very piercing glare in its eyes, and I'm not usually afraid of deer. But this deer, or should I say, this pair of deer, looked different. There was just something about them I can sense that was strange. Something about it just did not feel right deep down. We kept walking after that. We actually ended up hiking up the mountain for roughly an hour or two, and we finally began to hear what sounded like a creek running along with some leaves rustling in the breeze. Since we're both somewhat experienced hikers, we knew that it was commonplace for sounds like this to be heard all around these woods. At this point, it seemed like hours had passed, and nothing was happening. Eventually, my friend decided that he wanted to take a break, and spend time at the lookout points in the path. But something told me to stop, and I'm really glad I didn't. Instead, I kept moving, I began getting this strange feeling. We're not alone. I don't know what it was, or who was around us, but we were not alone. I told my friend we should keep moving, keep pressing forward. He reluctantly agreed, and stopped at all the waypoints. We decided to continue on to the trail, and make our way back down to the vehicle. There's something about this presence around us. It just did not feel warm and inviting. We did not feel safe by any stretch of the means. And as we made haste back to the vehicle, the feelings of being unsafe kept intensifying over and over. Fortunately, we made it back to the vehicle, safe and sound. But one thing I found that was very odd, by the time we got back to the car, the entire forest was completely silent. When we got out before, you could hear the creak even from the distance we were away. But now, everything was quiet. It was so eerie, and along with the deafening silence was this eerie presence. It was so thick in the air, you can cut it with a knife. It was a complete and total change in atmosphere. And this is where my story ends. While I didn't end up seeing anything, I felt it. It was terrifying. I can only imagine what was up there with us. I'm surprised it didn't show itself, but maybe, for my sanity, it's probably for the better. I don't like driving at night. I can't see very well. Because of this, I usually use the high beams or just try to avoid night driving altogether, but nights like this, I didn't have much of a choice. After about 45 minutes of driving in darkness, with barely any streetlights, the full moon lighting the areas in my high beams. I was still and already apprehensive. No cars on the road but me. Ah, uh, that made it a lot worse. So, I'm slowly driving, deathly afraid of some dead man's curve or something. All it takes is a deer to just jump out, and my car is done. And like I said, I'm pretty fearful of night driving. I'm always worried. I just drive around a deer if it does jump. And of course, something like this happens to me. Just on the left side, or should I say the passenger side, this thing that I'll call it ran on two legs, but had a gait that made it look like it was on four. It was also not far away. Driving by, I could see that the arms were thin and reached far below its knees. The head wasn't very large. That's what I remember. It was kind of a bluish green and scaly, and I saw enough to get a profile, and as soon as I did, I veered sharply into the woods. The sighting of this thing made me physically ill. I was sick to my stomach. I got home, told my wife, went to bed, and decided I'm going to take the long way from now on. I 
I used to work about 20 miles away from where I lived. One evening, I had been stuck in traffic. I was on my way home from work at the time. I had a very long day, and I was just ready to be home at this point. I was about to turn onto an upcoming street when another car pulled out, burning rubber, and left the scene. I shrugged it off as the driver wanted to get home or get somewhere, but as soon as he went around me, I saw what had gotten him in such a rush to leave. This thing was massive and black, shaped like a human, but it was hard to tell because it was night out, but I see this giant silhouette just running right by. It made no noise whatsoever, but it scared the crap out of me. I think it could have been a Bigfoot, but I don't know. To this day, I still do not know what it could have been. I'm very curious and would love to hear what you think it could have been. The other driver in front of me saw it, though, which spooked the hell out of him. It caused him to floor it and turn down the road. Who knows what this really was. During the nighttime, all around my house, I had been hearing all these strange noises and sounds. So one night, I went out to go check things out, because I heard something I never had before. As I approached the end of my driveway, where it meets the country road, there was a sidewalk, about three to four feet long, and nothing but farmland on both sides of the road. This went on continuously until you hit very thick bush. So, I walked towards the sidewalk, and I saw movement from what appeared to be an animal from not far away. As I got closer, I realized this was not an animal at all, because it was standing up. The sighting of this alone terrified me. It let out this scream a sound and mixture between a woman screaming and a horse neighing. It bolted, running into the tree line, back over where my house is, about a hundred yards deep into the wooded area, deep behind my house. There is a lot of history surrounding this area. It is, after all, a very old native settlement. There have been numerous sightings in the past which I knew nothing about until now. There was also recently a sighting by my next-door neighbor, well, more like a mile away neighbor. She had described what sounded like the same creature I saw. The only difference here is that she says its face clearly resembled more of a man than a wolf. I think what I saw is known as a werewolf. It was pretty tall, around eight to nine feet, standing upright. Its skin was more grayish though, and its eyes were more sunken in. It looked starved, actually. Very lean. Really, I don't know what it was, but I know that what I saw is terrifying, and I never want to see it anymore. I'm going to be heavily equipped if it's around here again. It won't give the chance to run away next time. I'll make sure of that. Looking back in hindsight at this account, I believe that we had been stalked the entire time, but that is just mere speculation. One morning... My father and I had gone fishing in a very remote section of the Ozark Mountains. We were all by ourselves. We saw something that was very strange. It quickly crossed from one side of the trail to the other, so fast it could not be seen after it went crossing. It was roughly only 9 a.m. when this happened, but the entire morning we could not shake the feeling that something large was following us, and I believe this was the creature. There's been days where I've been terrified to go back to those mountains alone, ever since, due to what we saw that day. And I could sit here and tell you that werewolves exist, because what we saw looked exactly like the creatures from the movie The Howling, but I'm not really sure what it was. The rest of the day was very on edge. Lots of anxiety. There ain't much else to add to this. We finished our day of fishing, and that was pretty much it. Although I'm pretty sure that thing was lingering, near the entire time. I'm just glad it never showed itself another time. I don't think I would have been able to handle that, personally. The following is a true account of what this woman experienced. Though no proper name has been given to provide further identification, she will be referred to as Lauren. When Lauren was 14, she was hunting with her grandfather and her cousin. It was late morning, they were walking along one of the trails where Lauren's grandfather often went hunting on. 
They had already been walking for a couple of hours without any luck or sightings when this particular encounter had taken place. The first thing that alerted her to something being out of the ordinary was her dog was acting very skittish. Her dog's name was Tina, a golden Labrador, always very calm, lax, and reliable. But as they continued up the trail, they began to smell what she described as wet dog mixed with garbage on a hot summer day. The smell became more intense and pungent the farther up they walked, until eventually it became so strong Lauren could no longer ignore it and turn to face whatever it was, demanding it show itself. Before she could turn all the way around, she would refer to as Bigfoot was suddenly standing there next to a tree. It was no higher than her waist. The Bigfoot briefly glanced at Lorne before crossing onto the other side of the trail, disappearing into the tall grass. The sighting was over in a matter of seconds, but Lorne remembers feeling paralyzed with fear in what seemed like an eternity. However, once Lorne came to her senses, she ran past Tina, who had been hiding behind Lorne the entire time, and attempted to get away from whatever it was as fast as she could. In an attempt to get a better look, she stopped, turned around and aimed, considering this thing was still right there in the trees. But, because she did not have a clear shot, she did not take it, and had a fear of wasting a bullet on a creature she knew nothing about. Realizing how useless her firearm was at such close proximity, she quickly set it down and pulled out the hunting knife she had strapped to her belt. She was fumbling with the clasp on her belt, and it became clear that the Bigfoot had already gotten away from her. The creature never reappeared to Lorne. Although completely terrified, it has not stopped her from going back out hiking many times since then. She still lives with this encounter, and claims to be a lot more aware of her surroundings. I walk towards a trail, towards my destination. I began to hear some very strange noises that I was not familiar with. They were coming from behind a tall pine tree, about five to six feet off the ground. Well, it was then that I came face to face with one of those little gray aliens. You know, with the head being really long and large. I freaked, running back towards my grandma's house. I told her about the little gray alien that I saw face to face on the trail. After about 15 minutes or so, she made me go back up on the same trail to see if I can find his tracks for proof of what I had just seen. She really didn't believe me. Well, about four hours later, after looking for whatever I thought was an alien, well, I still found nothing. But I know what I saw to this day, and it was right there, right in front of me. So close, you could reach out and touch it. The only thing is, is nobody believes me. I just want everyone to know that they are real. And if you see one for sure, don't be alone. If anything, make sure you try to get a picture of it if you can. I had been hiking off in the mountains for quite some time at this point, and I had just set up camp. One thing I found quite interesting, though, was how the weather seemed to be more stormy than usual. Between all the water, wetness, and rain, I pressed on like usual, making my camp and getting comfortable. The following morning, I packed up on my next destination on the mountain. Just a very short ways into my trek, I spotted something far off on the back side of the land. Down below me was a clearing, probably at several hundred yards across. I witnessed a large, dark figure that appeared to have horns on its head, roughly about 40 to 50 meters out. It came out into the clearing from the woodline and kind of just stood there, as if checking its surroundings. Its movements were strange, kind of like that of a bird. It appeared to kneel down on the ground and pick something up, although from the distance I was at, I couldn't exactly make out what it was, but it looked just like a man, except the horns and it being very, very dark. I'd say it was probably completely black. Once it picked something up, it stayed still, and then walked off casually on the other side of the forest. To this day, I'm not exactly sure what I saw, but it was very, very strange. I hope it was nothing paranormal. Two thousand ten. Ontario. I was about 15 when I had a very bizarre experience in the wooded area 
right near our house in a small town in Canada. I was up late with some friends. We were just sitting out in the backyard, playing truth or dare, if I remember right. This one boy who lived around the block from me said he was going to go for a walk, since none of us wanted to play anymore. No big deal, right? So, he took off into the woods by his house. My friend dared me to follow him, without being detected. No problem, I thought at first. I have always thought myself to be a very stealthy person, so sneaking was not tough for me. After all, he was just a little kid, walking through there alone at night. I was about to follow him, and all of a sudden my friend says, Where is he? I can't see him. The rest of the people who were sitting around us just looked up at me, and were all like, What do you mean? Where did he go? I felt uneasy. Not only had the boy vanished from sight, but from sound as well. Anyway, being 15 and slightly stupid, I brushed this off as us playing a practical joke, until I really thought about it for a second. They honestly couldn't see or hear him walking through the forest. Now, you had to remember that we could easily hear this kid walking towards us before we saw him, so why would we suddenly not be able to hear him now? I decided to take a peek to see what was going on. I walked slowly into the woods, trying not to make a sound against my better judgment. As soon as I passed the first few trees, I saw him still walking with his back towards me, about 30 feet away. It kind of looked like he had stopped for a second, but it did not really make sense. I stopped right there, and because when my legs refused to carry me any further, looking at his back, you could tell something just wasn't right. He looked hunched over, and you could not see his arms or shoulders moving up or down, indicating any movement besides a slight shifting side to side. It made no sense what we were looking at. I mean, let's be realistic here. My friend was still standing in the exact same spot he started at, staring into the woods almost dumbfounded. He could not have walked that far already. I stood there for what felt like eternity, trying to convince myself this was all just some dream, until I heard swooshing sounds coming, and it stopped about five feet behind me. When I turned around to face it, there was nothing there. Only trees. It was this energy that came up behind me that I can't quite explain. It was a feeling very much similar to pins and needles. I looked up from looking back down. He was gone. Completely vanished. I felt this strange sensation come over me. Like I was in danger. I ran back to my friends. I told them what had happened. They didn't believe me. They kind of just laughed at me. One of them also said he probably just ran home. But the next couple days, the mom had begun talking to us, asking where her boy went. He never did return home. And to this day, none of us, even as adults, know whatever happened to him. I was driving up Highway 64 to Cherokee from Brevard. I was planning on meeting my wife for dinner. I had just crossed into Swain County, North Carolina, and came upon a very bright full moon over the highway. There are no streetlights where I'm driving, so it is dark out there. As I crested a hill at approximately mile marker 266 or 267, I noticed what looked like a human walking through the road quickly to the woods on the other side. It was moving very fast. I can't say but faster than you would expect any adult to walk across a highway, let alone the fact that there's actually somebody walking across the highway. As soon as I looked to my right, this thing ran off the road into the woods. It was very dark. I could not see any details about this thing. It also stood like a person. I thought it was a man, but it seemed much larger. I want to say it was a person, but... I just got a really bad feeling after watching it. Something about the whole thing just did not sit right in my stomach. On Sunday evening, April 2012, friends and family members Dana and Jordan were fishing along the Conestoga Creek behind the Red Rose Inn near Intercourse, Pennsylvania, right around 6 to 7 p.m. They observed what they thought was a strange animal walking alongside the edge of the creek. 
Rocco and White followed it in their car for a short time, at which they had to stop, due to a traffic congestion. They continued, however, on foot. They proceeded upstream, walking towards the west until they reached an unused bridge, which used to span the Conestoga Creek before it got knocked out in a recent hurricane. Rocco described the humanoid as having scaly, wrinkly skin, a dark brown and green colored. She further elaborated, saying that it had webbed feet and that it looked slightly deformed looking. It also had a long tail and a very reptile-like head. She described the face as fish-like, having a very pronounced upper jaw. She said it kind of reminded her of the creature from the Black Lagoon, crossed with an alien. She also stated she could clearly see the webbing at the base of its legs and feet. White, too, described the creatures having green scaly skin, long limbs ending in clawed hands, teeth like those of a shark, and large piercing black eyes. He was most intimidated by the sighting. I'm a 23-year-old male from Nebraska. I'm a college student studying criminal justice and corrections. The other night, I had a sighting of what I believe was a flying humanoid near Jacksonville, Florida. It was about 10.35 p.m. on a Friday night, November 17th, 2017. It occurred while me and two friends were driving back from going to go eat at Buffalo Wild Wings. Here's what happened. My friend in the front passenger seat saw something flying over us while we were driving. He pointed upwards and said, What is that? We all looked up to see a figure moving very quickly across the sky right above our car. It could be described as a bat or gargoyle-like in form, but with wings that seemed more like skin stretched between its bones rather than skeletal wings. And more specifically, it seemed to be about five feet wide in total wingspan, with a small body attached to the back of it, looking humanoid in form, except for its bat-like wings and skin the way it was stretched over its small bones. It moved extremely fast and flew behind one of the buildings across the street from right where we were driving. There was no sound at all coming from the flying humanoid while it passed over us. When I saw it fly behind the building, that was it. I freaked. Right afterwards, my friends shouted loudly, What the heck was that thing? I replied immediately by saying, I don't know, but whatever it was, flies just like Superman. They asked me what I meant, so I told them what I thought it looked like, that its wings looked like they were made of stretched skin. Then, we all just continued to watch the sky for a few seconds after, and what we saw then, my friend in the passenger seat shouted, There it is again! We all quickly looked to see it flying across many of the rooftops. Just then, it seemed to be moving towards our car, so I started braking hard, pulling over to stop on the side of the road. I knew braking ahead of time would not have been fast enough if it decided to attack our vehicle. Its size was small enough, but I'm sure it proved deadly. Some people might think this was a bat, but I know what a bat looks like, and this was much larger than a bat. Plus, it moved fast enough that if it got stopped in time, there's no way my car would have been able to stop immediately without killing me or breaking something on my vehicle. Not only that, but its body was shaped differently than a bat's body, and it had obvious legs and arms. I've traveled a lot and seen a lot of different things, but I'm at a loss for words to describe this creature's appearance. It was definitely not normal. It looked like an alien that ventured far from its craft. It would have been carrying something either for protection navigation, or possibly collecting samples. There were no cars coming towards us, luckily. We pulled over, stopped on the side of the road, so we got out of the car to look up where we last saw this thing flying. We stood there, looking around. After about 30 seconds, we all started shouting excitedly. It flew behind that building. Then, we noticed other people beginning to come outside. They too saw it, now people are shouting, alien, alien, look, there it is. Now at this point, we're beginning to attract a lot of attention. Clearly, we're not the only ones to have seen this. 
But after this, things did calm down eventually, because we lost sight of it. But we could not stop talking about it the rest of the night. Even about the 20 people that witnessed this thing along with us. There was definitely something in the sky that night. What it was, I'm not sure. Have you ever seen the movie Army of Darkness? Well, if you have, you might remember towards the end of that movie, where this winged flying demon comes down and grabs the girl, takes her away. I'm not saying that's what it looked like, like a flying little imp demon, but it really reminded me of it, the same body. That's all for now. I grew up in a small town in rural North Carolina. I've been camping almost my entire life. I've also been an avid outdoorsman, including hunting. In fact, I started hunting with my old man at five years old, so I'm not one to really get scared of anything by nature or wildlife. However, one day, me and a couple of friends were going through a swampy area. We had to take a boat across at night to get to my friend's house one summer. It was around two in the morning. We reached the other side, but decided we wanted to hang out for a bit. So we stood there on the bank, smoking cigarettes. Bad mistake. After about 15 minutes of this, roughly a seven-foot-tall creature comes out of the woods behind us to our left, walks right past us into the swamp on our side. It was definitely not human. At the angle we were at in the brush, it did not see us, but we saw it. It was about seven feet tall, had a very pointed head that kind of came to a tapered point at the top, no hair. It was extremely broad and bulky. It only had one arm, or so what we can tell. The other appeared to be withered or rotted away, and its skin was a dark green grayish color, very leathery looking. It reminded me of the swamp thing. Its legs were also very long and muscular, but its feet were odd. Its eyes seemed to have this glow as we watched it walk past us on the bank before disappearing into the swamp on our side. We were spooked. I have told my friends about what we saw, the ones that weren't there. They think we were crazy. Now, after that, we never stopped on the embankment. In fact, we even stopped going through his house on the boat. What did we see? I was raised in Idaho, but I've lived at a state for several years now. My family has gone camping together up at the same spot every year after my grandmother moved to a retirement community nearby. This spot is very secluded. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere up in northeastern Idaho. Here's my experience. This happened about six years ago. I can't remember exactly when, but it was during that time frame. We were staying in tents like normal. All four of us were awake one night at around midnight or so, and we all saw lights go by outside near our campsite. Maybe I figured there was a road nearby, but I realized, no, we were several miles away from any road. So where were these lights come from? My mom started freaking out. My dad began asking if it was a bear, and she said no. My mother was starting to freak out, convinced it was some sort of alien. We tried to go outside and look for the lights, but they were gone. But these lights were constant, and there were these large bright whites that would circle around our campsite every few minutes. The third time, we attempted this plan of action. My dad had his rifle in hand. We figured we were getting attacked by some sort of alien. But soon after, the lights disappeared, and the entire atmosphere around us changed entirely. It felt in the air like the same way it does right before a storm. A lot of static build up in the air. We're all out in our tent and campsite, thinking, what are we going to do? My parents are freaking out. My dad is ready to shoot anything that moves. And we all in unison hear this deep growl. Whatever this thing was, it didn't like us trying to get closer. And we immediately gave up on a plan of attack. My dad claims to have seen it, that whatever it was looked like a bear, but walked upright and had not much hair on its body. Basically, more smoother, dark brown skin, but still claimed it had very big claws and teeth, but not like a mangy bear. Something much else. Something far more human. 
the details are still kind of fuzzy, but that's what I remember. It's been years now, and I still think about this very frequently. So I've never heard anything else about similar encounters from anybody else around there. The only other people who have ever camped up at this spot are very secluded other couples, who don't talk much with others. I have been back myself several times, and it always feels very different up there. Like, at any given moment, something can happen. You feel you're not alone. I'm not going to disclose the exact location, but I will say it's just in northern Idaho. Oh, and my uncle on my mother's side did share with me the following story, after I relate to him what my mother and I had experienced, along with my father. My uncle was out hunting for deer one day alone, in the same general area where this experience occurred. He came across a wolf-like creature that was either eating a dead deer or killing something. He couldn't tell which. He didn't get close enough to see it completely. But even at his distance, he could tell its teeth were very long, like a saber-toothed tiger. It let out this unusual loud cry howl before fleeting off into the forest at a very unearthly fast pace. My uncle claims to have not felt any fear whatsoever until he made it back to our truck. He was just so taken out of reality, he describes, incapable of feeling any emotion because he was in such shock. The fear didn't come till afterwards. He found himself shaking uncontrollably. I've always thought about our family about how if they knew that the possibility of werewolves being out there, but I guess they just never knew or thought about it. He shot down the idea of it being a werewolf, but described it being a wolf that he's never seen before. And one more thing. It was also closer to winter. There was a lot of snow up there, so it's not like anything would be able to navigate and just roam around easily. We're talking about a large predator here navigating through all that snow, and quite easily. My thoughts? Well, for quite some time, I've tried to rationalize all of this, but I simply can't come up with anything plausible enough to sound remotely convincing. The whole thing is just far too bizarre. But one thing is for sure. That entire region has something going on with it. Whether it be evil, aliens, or monsters, I don't know. But I feel very apprehensive to even go back. So, this all started when my husband and I were at home. We live in the countryside. Getting ready to go out of town for a trip we had planned for nine months. I had my dogs outside with me in their kennel. I was getting ready to bring them in. They were barking up a storm. So I'm standing on the deck, looking around, trying to see what was freaking them out so much. Well, that's when I saw it. There was this huge creature looking at me from the tree line, about 40 yards away. It had its back to me at first, and then it turned to look at me. And all I could really see besides hair and eyes was just this massive silhouette. If there's one thing I know about dogs, they don't bark up a storm unless there's something really going on. So, I start yelling while backing up towards the door, and it looks at me intently. Now, because it stepped out more to the light, I could see its eyes and face clearly. It looked like a very malformed dog, with the most striking, terrifying eyes I've ever seen. But, instead of feeling terrifying fear, immediate sadness came over me, like the most depressed I've ever been in my life in that very moment. I have never been more sad or depressed in my entire life than in that one singular moment. It was this very bizarre response. And then, my fight or flight kicked in, and I go into survival mode. I was screaming inside, but trying to be very calm and not shake. I told my dogs to get inside. They were hiding behind me, shaking. I was obviously letting them get out of the kennel when I saw this thing. My husband... During all of this, hears the commotion outside, saw what was going on and ran out. He sees it, now yelling at it like it's some big animal to go away. The thing just takes off, turning away from us, going towards the other yard where the woods are. After about ten minutes later, things kind of calmed down. The night sounds came back because there were no crickets when I first went outside. And the dogs finally got settled down. My husband grabbed his gun went outside looking for it, but it never returned that night. However, my dogs seemed very uneasy 
the rest of the evening. Even though they were calmed down, they kept whining. I didn't sleep that much that night. Luckily, we didn't find anything more. I did post about this on Facebook, since my husband is still very skeptical of these kinds of things. It told me it was likely a bear or something. It could have been neither, but I disagree. The way it looked at me, the way it looked into my eyes, it had intelligence, and it looked evil, like no animal I'd ever seen before. Reddit, what do you think it was? This past summer, 2016, was when this all occurred. It's not something that crossed my mind until recently, and why I felt inspired to share it with you lovely people out there on the interwebs. Here we go. I was spending the night over at my grandparents' house due to a rare heat wave. My family does not have AC and could not afford even a decent fan. So yeah, I went over there to sleep. Everything is fine and dandy, and I should have been sleeping, but I was busy playing GameCube until around 3.30 a.m. Then, out of nowhere, the power just goes out, and I start hearing this strange noise outside. It sounded like somebody was walking through the woods and grumbling angrily very loudly. This persisted for about 15 minutes before it all finally stopped. I felt really bad. I didn't dare move an inch, and where I was, something told me not to. After a short amount of time, the power finally came back on, so I tried to ignore it, playing Smash Melee. The next day comes, and my grandparents go into town, but their car isn't running at the moment due to a dead battery. At least it died in town. So while I'm still at my grandparents' house, waiting to have them take me back, I begin to feel the strange feelings again. And this time, I look out the window. That was a huge mistake. Coming out towards the backyard was this very tall figure that I could say looked exactly like Nosferatu, but naked. It was very creepy looking, and it moved in a really spindly fashion, and then it quickly disappeared. Some sort of large white humanoid. I was freaked. Immediately called my grandparents. They were in the middle of having somebody come replace the battery, since my grandfather's not a car guy. They were back home in about an hour and a half where I demanded to be taken home. They did. I explained to them what I saw, and of course they shot me down. I explained it was probably just some coyote or something, since they do get them a lot out where they live. But come on, a coyote does not look like this. Anyway, I dealt with the heat wave for the rest of the time there. Anything was better than being close to that thing. I work in R&D for a large company. I've been an outdoorsy person my entire life. From early on, I've been camping and venturing out into the woods by myself from time to time. But ever since this happened, there's no way I'll ever be doing that again. Ever. I live in a small town in Louisiana. I grew up here. Lots of woods and bayous close by to explore. I used to go out pretty regularly to these areas for fun during my high school years or when I could get away from work. I've been working since I was the age of 16. I'd usually always bring my rifle or shotgun with me on my treks into the woods. I would always be worried about snakes or wild boar. I was raised to respect the outdoors and coexist with nature, so I don't believe in killing something unless it's for food. I have seen bears and boar while out on these adventures of mine, but they were both a safe distance away, so we just went our separate ways, and that was the end of that. Anyway, one evening last week, I was out in my backyard, shooting some cans of coffee off a fence. It wasn't late, but it was getting dark, as daylight saving times ends. The sun sets fast here during the winter months. Before I knew it, it's almost completely dark outside. I heard my neighbor's dog going crazy, but they bark most evenings anyway when the sun begins to set. My parents' dogs are out with me in the backyard, so I wasn't too worried. They're out here most of the time. I had brought my 22 rifle. And don't get me wrong, I know 22s aren't very good for self-defense against anything more than a raccoon, but 
It's all I had with me at the time. Out of nowhere, something large and black came running at me full speed in the woods, beyond up ahead. I thought it to be a very large man at first, and I thought it must be a big bear or maybe a boar advancing towards me. I turned, firing a shot into the ground to scare whatever it was running towards me. The thing stopped, turned and bolted off like a bat out of hell in the opposite direction. I fired off yet another shot, but at an angle, so I would not hit if this thing was a bear. It ran off into the trees, and then all I heard after was silence and my parents' dogs barking up a storm. Whatever I shot at clearly had two legs. I could hear it. It sounded like a big person doing a marathon through the woods. I went back into my house and tried not to think too much of it. The next day, I was told by my neighbor. He lives only about 80 yards away from me. He had heard several shots being fired off from the woods the evening before. He even said his dog had ran off in the direction where I had fired at, at whatever it was running towards me. He also mentioned something else I found odd. He claimed during the day when they were out looking for their dog, there was this weird smell near where I shot at whatever it was that came charging through the woods. It smelled like rotten eggs with an undertone of sulfur. Very unusual, since most wild boar just smell like mud or wet grass to me. This encounter didn't necessarily scare me, but it sure as hell made me think twice about going out at night by myself. I've still been out in the woods during the day since then, just not at night. I posted this to see what you all thought. It might be nothing, but for my own peace of mind, I wanted to share it with somebody other than just my next-door neighbor. I don't know if you guys will think much of this, but if anything, hopefully somebody else out there has experienced something similar around their homes, or possibly while camping. I would love to hear your stories too. Thanks. Back in the early 1990s, when I was 19 or so, I worked nights, unloading trucks at actually a chain retail department store, back before they turned into superstores. It's where me and my best friend slash coworker would go for fun. It became our little secret place. Nobody ever went there, unless you had business at the store. The manager knew we were out there, but he never cared, as long as we came back in before our shift had ended. I can remember, it was hot that night. I can't recall what month probably sometime in the summer. But I know the humidity was unbearable. So I'm standing outside of my car, on the side of the building, smoking a cigarette, and I notice this dark figure on top of an embankment. Keep in mind that this was around 2 a.m., so nothing's really open, except the store and some businesses nearby, which have been closed by now. This is quite possibly one of the more spooky things that have happened. I'm not sure if it is a werewolf, but what I saw is definitely uncanny and worth mentioning. I'll try and describe the creature as best as possible. Note that this was dark outside, so I only caught a glimpse of the thing. It looked like a large canine sitting on its hind legs or crouched down on its front legs, leaning in on its knuckles or elbows from what I could vaguely tell. Long story short... I never saw this thing again after that night, but my girlfriend, now wife, swears she has seen this same creature before. In my opinion, I think it looks a lot more like a werewolf, but that's just me. Those eyes do look dog-like, though. Any other opinions would be greatly appreciated at this point. I don't know what to believe. Thanks for reading. My family has lived outside of Abbeville for generations. We usually live by the White Bridge Road. My grandparents on my mother's side are actually buried behind our house. Fifty feet away from their graves is the grave of a young woman who died in 1815 at the age of 19. She was not native to this area, and her body was brought here for intermittent because it was best known by the family that lived there then, which also happened to be relatives of hers. Her stone has a carving of a hand pointing into the ground, with a type of bat creature or angel hovering over it. The Native American tribe that were forced to walk the Trail of Tears passed right through this area. 
I have personally located old Indian campsites right near my property. There is a very dark history in Red River Parish. People have died here, a lot of them. I've been told that my great-great-grandfather actually came here from Europe to settle for good with his family after coming over as an indentured servant to start a brand new life. My sister and her ex-husband bought the house which sits directly behind mine on Whitebridge Road, roughly 15 years ago. This is shortly after they moved in, is when I started seeing what appeared to be a huge black dog walking around on the front yard late at night. This would generally happen about every morning, 3 or 4 a.m., since I was a kid, actually. I was always a night owl, always suffering from insomnia as far back as I can remember. So for me, this was normal. But seeing this dog, well, not quite. We have a dog ourselves, but our dog is not an outside dog and whines when she's left alone at night. So I never thought anything of it too much until things really got weird. As time went on, the animal would come out only once every few months. But as time passed, people started seeing what appeared to be a large bat flying around my mom's house late at night, screeching loudly that they both woke from their sleep. At first, they just dismissed it as kids being stupid, thinking it was funny to make loud noises in order to scare old ladies, which did work most of the time. But they began hearing the sounds more frequently, and it sounded nothing like they had ever heard before. They both went outside to see what was making that noise, but never saw anything. I finally got my own place two years ago, and my sister her ex-husband, and his girlfriend, and I move into this house out in the sticks on some dirt roads surrounded by farmland. We all pulled our money together, thinking we would be getting a nice big house for what we were paying monthly. The mortgage company just put us into an old fixed rubber, requiring hard labor to fix it up. So now, instead of four bedrooms, there are only two, plus an office-slash-library type room, built in with full bookshelves, I spend a lot of time here. The past weekend, I was over at my sister's house, helping her paint the exterior of the home, which has only been left with one coat of paint for probably about 20 years. It looks like crap. Also, there's this little shack out back nobody ever uses due to it being full of junk. It has not been used since we moved in. But recently, I found myself going out there to read or just relax or listen to music on my cell phone. If I'm trying to escape, then that's my go-to. So, as we're all painting and talking, we hear this loud screeching outside. Everybody stops dead in their tracks, and we see several large bats flying. But we're shocked at what we see. These aren't just large flying bats. These look like human-sized gargoyle flying demons. I'm talking the stereotypical kind you see perched on top of old Gothic city buildings as if they had just come to life and flew off the rooftops. There's about four of these things, and they all seem to be headed in the same direction. I'd say no more than a hundred feet off the ground, given my poor estimates. A few seconds later, we hear their screeches echoing from the sky as they traveled across. We're all pretty shocked by what we're seeing, saying to each other, Did you see that? I think we were all pretty freaked. We stopped painting the rest of the day, going inside, worried if these things were going to return, although I'm not sure they would. I mean, I'm pretty sure they were just passing through, and hopefully did not see our house, but it still freaked me out. My sister is convinced that this was some sort of big bat, and really wants to blow the whole thing off. I think whatever it is, it's definitely not a bat. Bats don't look like this thing did. If so, it is the largest, most human-like bat I've ever seen. Personally, it looked more like a demon. I'm not sure what it was, but I know that's not something you see in the sky every day. That much I can tell you. My little sister is the only one out of my entire family that I could tell this to. This happened years ago, but thanks to the internet... I have been able to connect with others who have had similar experiences. It's hard enough admitting, let alone trying to explain it to somebody else. 
First off, I'm currently 18, but this experience was when I was 15. I've always had an interest in cryptids and aliens growing up, since about the age of eight. When I was younger, my family would go camping just about every weekend, most times at a local campground with our cousins who were nearby. This is where my very first encounter starts. It was late at night, around 11 or 12 p.m. Not quite dark out, but definitely getting there. At this point in time, we had already been camping for several days, just relaxing and enjoying nature for the sake of it. Either me or my cousins decided to venture back into the woods behind our campsite, this area stretched on for what seemed like miles. We didn't have any real flashlights, so for most of the walk, it was just pure, unadulterated darkness. As we ventured on, I began to hear something strange. It sounded like a whirring noise getting closer and closer. Being the naive youth that I was, I didn't think much of it at first, but as it grew louder, I realized with horror that whatever this thing was, its intentions were not pure, as if they are ever. The trees frantically waved back and forth as it approached, sounding almost mechanical in nature now. It gave off no colors besides pure blackness, which seemed to leak out of itself, if that's easy to understand. All three of us, completely petrified, sprint back to our campsite as fast as we could, all of us fearing for our lives. It was hot on our heels the entire way, but luckily, we made it back with no harm done to us. My cousins and I never spoke a word about it to the others. As the experience was so horrific, none of us really wanted to discuss it, forcing you to relive it. We were at a loss for words if nothing had ever happened in the first place, brushing off the whole ordeal as maybe being tired from being outside too much or for too long. The following summer, I had just turned 16. I saw it again. This was in a different area, though, and I don't think as terrifying. It had become almost comfortable with my presence at this point. I would see it every time we went camping that summer, but never when we went in the winters or other times of the year. Now that I think about it, it might have been hunting me. Either way, we stopped going camping after my sister ended up graduating high school, moved to a new house, not too far away from where we were living at that point in time. The reason why? To make an extremely long story short, I think truly it was hunting my sister, and it wanted something to do with her. Although I can't prove it, I just have a feeling. I lived in western Texas for most of my life, raised south of Dallas for most part, I even lived in East Texas for a while, but eventually moved closer to the drier climate. I don't do the humidity. I'll take the desert any day. But I digress. Where was I? Oh yeah. My story starts while I was in Eastern Texas. Although not there for many years, enough that this terrifying thing happened. Towards the end of 2011, my family moved up to a ranch-styled house. It's about 20 minutes west of Tyler, on an old Highway 64. We lived in an older community. We were one of the few younger families there at the time, mostly retired couples and neighbors, which made it nice since we had zero problems with noise or other neighbor issues from disrespectful individuals. No other kids running around and screaming next door, fighting over fences, and so it was peaceful and quiet during the time besides what I'm about to tell you about. Now, the house. It was older, but built in the late 1970s. Three stories tall, two-car garage. I think it was originally a ranch-style house with an addition, an entire floor. We added on an extra room at some point, not long after we had moved in. We carpeted it and made it into our bedroom since my sister was married by then, so she wanted her own place but would stay there frequently, especially when she'd come home from college for breaks or summertime. On February 13th, I was sleeping in our bedroom, which is on the second floor, where all the bedrooms are located going up from the ground level along with a small loft area that we referred to as the bonus room over the garage. This night, I remember waking up sometime in the early morning 
with a very intense feeling as if I was being watched closely from somewhere in the room. Having my eyes open for perhaps five or so minutes, trying to figure out what it could be, before finally drifting back off into a dead, solid sleep. Little did I know, my dogs were sleeping soundly next to my bed that night. They did not wake up or seem disturbed at all by anything in the room, which is a good sign. Maybe it was just me being paranoid. I'm not too sure. Maybe this was a dream. Maybe. At one point, I thought I'd heard what I thought was an animal fight or something going on outside. I heard growling, screaming and hollering, possibly even mechanical noises like a car revving up its engine, but not as much putting on the gear and peeling out, which is how I tried to describe it to my family later that morning when they asked me, here's where things get weird. At first glance, you take your typical backyard, you know, sounds of animals or nearby livestock, maybe some teenage kids partying into the early morning hours, playing loud music or drunk, but we didn't have any of that. Well, the livestock we did, but that was close by, and not too far off. They were never loud in the early morning. This is where things get a little foggy for me, though. I can't remember how long I stayed awake after the commotion outside dwindled down to a dole. I heard shuffling feet, and what sounded like something dragging something heavy. Part of me wanted to look out the window, but for some reason, I could not make myself do it was someone or something watching me. I continued to try and brush it off and go to sleep. This was the start of a massive chain of events that took place. This is when the sightings began. The following day, we found these large canine prints out behind our yard, behind the fence bordering the woodline. Not a lot of animal prints back there, besides two dogs, but this one was very large with four to five clearly defined toes on each foot. We had coyotes in the area. This wasn't our first run-in, but maybe it was a mix of something. I tried to figure out what kind of tracks could have made these prints, since nothing I knew about them were like this. These were the largest canine prints I'd ever seen. We're talking humongous-sized, maybe 12 to 15 inches in length. Massive. A few nights later... We were all sitting down watching TV, late one night, and heard a loud commotion outside. My dad and younger brother went out to check things out, and found fresh footprints all around the backyard. This is where we kept our trash bins. So, they made sure everything was locked up real good, going back inside. The noises continued on and on, and you could tell my father and brother were spooked. My brother went back out there again to check things out told me he saw a large shadow that really freaked him out. He only saw a silhouette, but it looked like a large dog walking on two legs. My father, of course, scoffed at him saying that can't be true. Went out there himself to check and didn't see a thing. The entire rest of that evening felt extremely eerie. We all felt on edge like something can happen at any given moment. It did not feel good. The following night right after, we had our first sighting of this creature as it was walking behind our fence line right where the forest starts and ends. Right in that area where you can clearly see from the backyard. This is also where we found the tracks the previous day. Dad saw it first out of all of us, began shining his light, thinking it was maybe a large coyote or dog, but had no idea what he was about to witness. It did not necessarily have a discernible snout or features, even though its ears were pointed, and it did have somewhat of a human-like face. I should probably be more specific. I use discernible in a way that relates it to looking like a dog, because while this thing did look canine to an extent, it also looked very human. Hopefully that makes sense, as in this thing looked partially human, partially canine. The eyes were large and red, at least they glowed red since my dad could not get a very good angle with the light off of it. He only got a quick glimpse though through the trees because it moved very quickly when it saw him. He didn't see much detail besides the pair of glowing eyes and how they were reflective. He said it looked very angry and the way it walked it had a hunch over stance, kind of like an ape would walk. 
he figured it was definitely at this point not a coyote. Even when they're out hunting at night, they don't do this. They won't hold your gaze for more than a split second before darting, and they certainly don't stand up on two legs like this, or are this size. This thing was trying to scare us away. We were not going to be intimidated. This sighting alone scared my father. He comes from the denial generation, as I like to call it. After this, we would see this thing several more times while it tried to even break into our home. My father always kept a loaded weapon nearby, just in case. This was the beginning of our nightmare. One night, that I won't forget, my brother was sleeping over at the house. He heard a huge crashing noise outside which woke him up. Seconds later, something violently slammed against the wall of his room, directly to the left where he laid in bed. He was living out of the house at the time, so we heard this massive crash and something like a loud, bellowing growl all at once. We all go running outside, thinking somebody must have drove their car into the house, and we see this thing, what I would describe as a werewolf, running off into the distance at light speed. It was going so fast, my dad swore in front of us for the first time ever that he was so frightened by seeing this thing, demanding we get inside now. I was shaken up, and I thought my father, for the first time, would need a change of pants. Another night, at around one in the morning, I was up watching TV, and I swore I heard the front door handle start to jiggle, like something or somebody was trying to get in. We don't have neighbors close by, and everybody else around us who lives near us are older couples. Certainly, no nightly intruder from them. This would only mean one thing. Quick note, the door doesn't lock by the way because the latch is broken, and my father has never bothered to want to fix it. Imagine that. So, it's only closed by pressure, or by propping something in front of the door. Now, oftentimes, my dad would always wear his hunting boots around, and many times would forget to put them away. He would leave them right in front of the door or right by the door. Because of the angle in which he would take them off at, or leave them, the door could never fully open. Meaning that if this was a night he forgot his boots there, well, good luck getting in. So I run into my room, next door, grab the loaded pistol that my dad had, just in case. I may have been younger, but I still know how to shoot. I run back into the living room, after grabbing it, and see something moving around in the backyard, right next to the sliding glass door. For some reason, this thing was trying to get into the house, but could not seem to figure out the latch on the door handle. Come to find out, what do you know? My dad had placed his hunting boots accidentally right in front of the door at an angle, keeping it from opening all the way. Talk about a lifesaver. So, I see this thing start running around there now. I'm terrified, not sure what to do. So I slowly start walking toward the door while trying to keep my eyes on it, and trying to ensure this thing doesn't come busting through the glass sliding door. I open the door. It immediately rams right into the glass, like something that was super pissed off, wanting to get inside. Judging by the impact, I'm surprised the glass did not shatter, but I nearly flew back, soiling my pants. All the commotion woke my brother and father up, who come running down the hallway. I could hear my dad whispering loudly some things I won't repeat, and runs to his gun safe. I have never seen that man work so quickly. He pulls out his 12 gauge, like he's in business, gives it a good cock, and runs right to the window, and he's scanning. I have never seen him so analytical. I figured he was about to shoot right through the window if need be. Well, we are all trying to keep our eyes on this thing, but it appeared to disappear. It didn't come back for a while after that. I believe this thing was trying to use intimidation tactics to drive us away. After all, before we moved in, this house that we had been told had been vacant for several years. I wonder why. Anyway, a few months go by now, and we go through a similar situation again. The next time, to my memory, my mom and brother were out in the garage one night, probably 10.30 p.m., looking for something or another. My brother swears up and down he hears something large moving outside the garage. My mom looks at him and goes pale. 
She had heard the same thing, but did not want to say anything to my brother. They were too afraid to open the door. But now at this point, they begin to hear this thing breathing really heavily. Here's where it gets scary. The thing slowly puts its hands on the garage door, dragging its nails slowly across it, like it was deep scratching into the wood. It was this, I'm here, and I want to scare you, kind of thing. My mom and brother freaked, and they run into the house, locking the door. My father was gone at this time. I believe out with a few buddies for a couple of nights and days, so he wasn't there. I was gone this night too, over at a friend's house. This panicked phone call from my brother, telling me what had just happened in the garage. I lost my cool, and decided I was going to come back and get that thing. I was tired of this thing terrorizing my family. I'd had enough. I got in my truck, drove home at about 80 miles an hour. Well, maybe not that fast. It was pretty fast, though. I didn't care about getting pulled over. And I knew all the backwards anyway. My mom, after this, started heavily putting up sage all around and outside the house after this, in hopes of warding this thing off. She'd also put multiple lines of salt all around the house and property. I'm not sure in hindsight if this helped it or just pissed this thing off. So now a week goes by and we have zero activity. We think we got our way and won, but it's a short-lived victory. About another week or so, maybe two weeks in total, I can't remember. This thing started making appearances yet again. This creature takes a dead deer with its innards torn out and chucks it at the house. I'll never forget it. I'm sitting there playing video games and I hear this really, really loud thud against the house. Boom! And I think, oh no, not again. I run outside to look, and there's clearly this deer carcass, a mutilated one, that was thrown well over 50 feet into the house like a football. It was a doe, and a good-sized one at that. I don't know anyone or anything that can launch an adult doe over 50 feet into the air at a house. And the impact was loud. I could tell it hit hard. There was blood and guts spotted all over the house from the impact. This freaked me out and not to mention sucked. I was the one who had to clean it all up. After that though, these sightings began to diminish severely. But we started smelling a very bad lingering odor of rotting meat and must. It would be really bad in the evening times, but not every evening. It was also never there in the mornings. I'm not sure what that was all about. I never noticed an odor when it was around, but I find all of this that I just told you about very interesting, to say the least. So there you go. That's the rundown of what happened and how it looked and acted. I'm pretty sure that whatever this was, it could smell me and would be able to find me if it wanted to. I don't know what this was or what it wanted. I believe it was evil, unnatural, and also very intelligent. I wonder where it went. Not too long after, maybe two years later, we ended up moving to West Texas. And while we still did have more encounters, they were very minor, to say the least. All the ones I told you about in this story were all the major ones. Afterwards, my father and the rest of my family pretty much refused to speak about it. I think they were too scared. But once we moved out to West Texas, we had no more weird stuff going on. No more hauntings, no more weird smells, no more encounters with strange animals we did not know. However, I'm very interested in knowing what this thing is though, and other people's encounters with it if they've had one. I've told a few friends of mine, and I've heard everything from skinwalkers to dogmen, but I'm curious to know, what is your opinion? This happened on my very first trip ever up to Alaska to go camping. Don't worry, I went during the warm months, or warm to Alaska standard. Anyway, I wanted to go out camping for a while now, seeing some beautiful pictures on the Alaskan outdoors on EarthPorn subreddit. I had booked months off and managed to get enough money for the plane fares. During my stay there, I was going to be camping up north of Anchorage for quite a while. I had been reading up some of the local legends and lore about this town 
and surrounding areas in the weeks leading up to my trip. I was aware of the mysterious weeping lady, apparently associated with the area. But these were only mere local legends. I didn't believe in this sort of thing. I just thought they were exaggerations, made up by bored campers who had nothing better to do. So, I was by myself on this trip. I considered it a research trip of sorts. As much as I loved camping alone, sometimes it could be a little bit scary. I was, after all, in the depths of Alaska. It would have been stupid to think that nothing could go wrong. After a long day of flying and arriving in Anchorage, I managed to hire a car from the local rental agency. The drive towards my destination was mostly just tundra, which looked very nice in its way. I brought along my laptop so I could work on some research I'd been doing for the weeks leading up to this. Eventually, I found my way towards the campground after a long journey I found myself in front of my campsite. The site was very nice and secluded, which I loved. The site wasn't too far from the road. It would not be too difficult to get there or back. The road itself was pretty isolated. I hadn't seen any other cars during my whole journey to the campsite. Well, I call it a campsite. It wasn't a public campground, that's for sure. I actually had to have a moose guide take me all the way out here. Paid him a lot of money to do it. After setting up my tent, I fired up my little propane barbecue, cooked myself some dinner. At this point, it was around 7 o'clock. It would be dark soon. I sat and watched the sunset over the horizon as I ate my meal, thought about all the things that could happen to me during the next few weeks that I would be out there. Even though this was my first real trip ever, I had done ample research on camping in general to have a basic knowledge of what I should be doing while out on my own. After eating, I quickly brushed my teeth, then headed inside the tent for a sleep. I decided not to light any fires that night, nothing too crazy on my first day. It was getting to around 11 p.m. or so. I had been settling down into my sleeping bag for about an hour. As I was slowly dozing off, I had heard a strange sound coming from outside. I tried to ignore it, but the noise just got louder lasting longer. Without really knowing how to respond, I decided that the only logical course of action was to just lie in wait, wait for it to be over. The sound is what I could describe to you as a loud, mechanical humming. It sounded like heavy construction machinery, but it was very muffled sounding, like it was coming from underground, I guess you could say. That's impossible. I'm miles out here, in the middle of the Alaskan bush, there is nothing mechanical around me, for miles. I wasn't sure what to make of it. I tried to ignore it, and just focus on falling asleep. After a few more moments, the noise gradually began fading away. But I could not get it out of my head. What was making this noise? Maybe a plane or a helicopter passing, but none of those really added up. As sleep overcame me, I eventually forgot about the noise, and fell fast asleep. I woke up in the morning, found nothing odd was out of place or had happened during the night. I ate my breakfast, packed up my things, ready to go and make camp the next following day. After getting everything all together, I set out. At this point, it was around noon. The weather was getting pretty nice. The sun was out and it wasn't too chilly. It made walking a little more pleasant. After about an hour, I decided to take a quick break, eat a little snack. I noticed something immediately as I began taking bites out of my rations. Everything around me was completely silent. It was eerily quiet. All you could hear was the wind blowing through the trees, apart what it sounded like nothing else existed. This made me feel uneasy. Usually there's always sounds going on in the woods. I quickly finished my small rations and got up from my spot, decided to keep going to my next campsite. I would say that it only took me an extra hour or two to get there. The spot was gorgeous, had a wonderful view of the river, and was right next to a large clearing. I set up my tent here, ate dinner, and eventually just stared at the fire as it burnt out. I was completely overly exhausted from the hike. I know I didn't tell you, but I had hiked probably about a good four or five hours overall. So as soon as the sun had set, I went to sleep. Nothing eventful that night either. The next day, I woke up, 
I did the same routine. Breakfast and a hike to my new campsite. When I got there, something was different. This place wasn't as scenic or as nice as the last. It was actually quite depressing and drab, but I figured it would do, since I didn't want to hike an extra few miles. I didn't notice this until the evening either, but there seemed to be this energy surrounding this particular spot. I don't know how else to put my finger on it, really. Even the air felt different. It was colder and harsher, like there was just this chill to the air. I felt unwanted and like I should leave. Quick side note. I've heard of legends and things like the Kushtaka, but I never paid any mind to it at all. I always just thought it was stuff of folklore and things to scare people. Maybe that's what visited me. I'll get to that in a moment. I felt even more drained after this day. As the sun began setting, I figured it was now better than ever to decide to turn in for the evening. I was already pretty spent, so that's exactly what I did. I pushed a little harder this day, going roughly about eight hours of hiking. I'm laying there in my sleeping bag, staring at the ceiling of my tent. Not quite ready to shut my mind down, but my body was exhausted. I did not feel safe out there, staying by my now dying fire. I didn't hear any noise like before, but I knew something was out there. Call it instinctual or what, but I could just tell. And all of a sudden, I heard what sounded like somebody walking all around the campsite. It sounded like it was coming from all directions, so I couldn't pinpoint where exactly it was. It did not matter. I knew that somebody or something was there. Footfalls grew louder and louder and closer until I could make out what it was. Hooves. It was coming out from the distance of the forest, maybe no more than 100 to 200 feet away. My eyes begin to grow wider and wider more and more as I hear this thing approaching. As this is happening, I'm trying to calm myself, thinking, wait a minute, this is simply a bison or caribou or muskox, something, you're fine. But I listened very intently to the footfalls. They were not quadrupedal. They were bipedal. And it was big. Whatever it was. Last I checked, none of those animals I just listed were bipeds or can function and move bipedally. Unless, of course, the animal kingdom out here felt like throwing me a wild card. I might have encountered something far more dangerous. I pulled my sleeping bag tight around me, with fear now gripping me, paralyzing me, expecting the worse. This animal, assuming it was one, got closer and closer and closer, and now was probably no more than 20 to 30 feet away from the sounds of it, and it just stops dead in its tracks. I can hear it breathing and snorting. Now I'm certain that this is by no means a muskox or a caribou in any way, shape, or form. The night at this point is completely silent too, just like the day before as I sat in the woods eating my snack. I hear this thing start to move again, after being still for what felt like an hour, but it was really only about 10 seconds probably. It now circles my entire campsite, like it's scouting the perimeter, looking for signs of something, perhaps a person. My tent had no light coming from it, no reason to draw its attention towards me. Thank God. I was a few feet from the edge of the fire pit from where my tent was located. So I'm thinking to myself at this point, where is it looking? At the fire pit? Or is it looking at my tent? What's it looking for? Why is it circling me? After what I think was about 10 minutes of this thing just circling my tent over and over, not making much of a sound except heavy footfalls, I hear it stop right outside the backside of my tent and starts crouching down, it sounds like, breathing very heavily. It sounded to me like someone who has smoked their entire life and had just ran a marathon. Very labored breathing, raspy, very deep. I was petrified. So much so, I could have been made of stone. I think my knuckles were white from gripping my sleeping bag so hard. This is easily the scariest moment of what I'm about to tell you. I hear this thing start speaking. This deep, demonic voice just starts speaking. 
no, chanting, in this language I'd never heard. It sounded kind of like German, but much more guttural and tribal, if that makes any sense at all. But it wasn't talking. It was chanting or something. And as it began chanting, it started spitting and snarling more, and continued chanting while walking around my camp. I was not sure what to do. Everything seemed to be happening so fast, I, my world was changing. It occurred to me that this might just be screwing with me. But it could very well be an evil spirit, or some form of demon. I had no idea. I have never even heard of this before. It may not have been chanting, but that's the only way I know how to describe what it was doing. I'm pretty certain that whatever was out there, had I left my tent, I would probably be a goner. I could not grow the courage to do something so brave, to unzip my tent and to see what was out there. I was too petrified. I sat there, waiting for this thing to disappear, which eventually it did. I stayed awake the entirety of the rest of the night, not wanting to risk this thing coming back at all. I kept running different scenarios through my mind. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do if this thing comes back? How am I going to be prepared? What if it tries to break into the tent, drag me out, etc., etc.? It felt like time had stretched on forever until the sun began to come up. When I saw the first glint of light coming over the horizon from my tent, I got the hint. It was now time to pack things up and leave. I was not going to waste another second here, and I had no desire to. I was gone. Completely sleep-deprived at this point, plus not getting a wink of sleep at all, I packed everything up and headed out back to where my pickup spot would be to meet my moose hunting guide. When I got back to the pickup point, the guy who was the owner was waiting for me with the biggest grin on his face. He had an over-the-top amused look and I could tell he was trying not to laugh at me. I just returned the grin and pretty much gave him a look and said, yeah, okay, you're right. It was a bad idea. And he asked me, did you ran into the thing? I assumed what he was talking about and told him, yeah. He tells me it's extremely dangerous to go out where I did, and that I was in that thing's territory. It doesn't much like strangers, he tells me, and he's lucky this thing did not rip me out of my tent. He believes this thing is responsible for the many missing hikers in this area of Alaska alone. Sure, there are things like hikers dying from exposure, grizzly bears, all that natural occurring stuff, but then there's this entity, he called it. It will take your life and your soul if it can. I kept asking him on the way back, what is it? He wouldn't answer. Just kept saying it's best we don't talk about things we don't fully understand. He did say even many of the natives warned him and others about being where we are during the trip. They too refused to speak about it in fear of it putting a mark on their very souls. That's my camping trip from hell. I hope you enjoyed and sorry for any errors. I still have nightmares often about this trip. Maybe one day I'll have peace about it all. Me and my girlfriend decided on taking a hike at one of our favorite places, the Big Thicket National Preserve. It's an amazing place about an hour west of where we live. It's even supposedly got bunkers from World War II that are torn down and looted but some remain intact. We always bring hiking gear and spend the whole day there until sundown. And then when we're ready, head back home or find somewhere to camp out if we have time left. On this occasion, I had my girlfriend drive so I could focus on just being completely alert, eyes looking out the whole time. This is where it starts. As we were driving, I noticed a figure on my side of the road running parallel to us, about 40 to 50 feet in front of the car, actually. At first, I thought it was another hiker, but something didn't seem right, so I asked my girlfriend if she saw it too. She did. It appeared to be canine in nature, but not really sure. It ran alongside us for about two miles, turning into the woods once we passed an old bunker that is still intact. I guess there are many more others in this area, all apart 
of the World War II era. We arrived at our hiking spot, which has a creek and several trails leading to different parts of Big Thicket. We decided what trailhead we wanted to start with, parked the car and proceeded to hike. Neither of us talked much about the upright canine we saw. Surprising, right? We hiked for about 30 or so minutes, and we took a break on the way. I had my eyes peeled, ears on high alert. I was secretly looking for that figure, but would be surprised if I saw it again. After our break, we kept on hiking until we reached another trail junction. This is where two roads led up separate hills. At this point, I felt something staring at us from behind a tree trunk directly next to me. It wasn't movement, though, because the area around us was still due to wind being blocked by foliage of said tree. It just felt like somebody or something staring at my backside with intent. I stopped dead in my tracks, slowly pivoted my head around with a full body turn to face the tree. I don't know if it's because I actually turned around or what, but when I looked, there was nothing there anymore. We kept on hiking and finally reached the end of that particular trail, where it's met up with another one that led to a different section of Big Thicket. We decided not to hike all the way in, about two or three more miles. Instead, head back up after exploring for about 30 minutes. It was at this point that me and my girlfriend split up. Don't ask why. And both of us wanted to explore, so we took our own separate trails to an area further into the big thicket. We found each other again, by chance or luck, since it's easy to get lost. But we had pretty good heads on our shoulders. We were not newbies to camping, or hiking for that matter. This time... I took the lead. My girlfriend was getting tired. And this is where my story takes a rather freaky turn. It was maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, and it started getting dark. The sun sets fairly late out here, but still, the darkness can surprise you out of nowhere if you're not prepared. I had a good flashlight on me, though, and I turned it on. So I'm shutting my light around, trying to find us the way back. And I saw something that almost made my heart stop with fear. It looked like a canine, but not quite like an ordinary dog creature. I'm referring to werewolves now, because this thing was standing upright on two legs. I told my girlfriend behind me. She believed me, and she said she also saw it too, briefly before it disappeared. I have no doubt in my mind that if she didn't lose sight of this thing so quickly, she would have seen all of it as vividly as I did. I made sure to ask her questions to get details about what she saw. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me hallucinating. The whole time we were out there, we were both shining our phones around, trying to get back to the car. And we could feel this thing's eyes on us, like it was watching us the entire time. I don't know what it is, but that forest felt like it was alive. Everything was watching us. Anyway, we eventually make it back. But as you can probably tell... Big Thicket has its own unique vibe. Some parts are inviting and beautiful, while others can be terrifyingly ominous. That place holds some memories for sure. And I normally don't believe in monsters or spirits, but after my experience in Big Thicket, my girlfriend and I aren't so sure anymore. Me and two buddies was hunting for elk, and had set up camp alongside a state park. Early morning, we guys were standing around a fire, talking, and getting ready to have some breakfast. Afterwards, we all got up, got ready to head off down towards a very popular game trail towards one of our several stands. This was in the early morning. It was beautiful outside. There's nothing like fresh morning air. It's so crisp. And I remember the morning so well, the sky was blue. There were even few clouds in the sky. It was out, and the water was just sparkling crystal clear over the pond. The birds were singing in the trees, and an occasional squirrel leaping from branch to branch. And then there was all those green leaves swaying in the breeze that had just started to turn yellow and gold from fall. We had all been walking for about an hour into the woods when we started to hear a sound it was like somebody else's voice, just murmuring in the trees and over the water. 
We all kept looking at each other and exchanging glances, slowing down and listening closely. Then it would stop. We walked in silence for several more moments, and we'd hear it again. We could not quite place where the sounds were coming from, whether that be to the left or right, ahead or behind, above or below. It sounded as if it was coming from everywhere. This time, it became more clear and began to sound like whispering or mumbling in some strange language we did not understand. The longer we walked, the louder the sounds got. And now, the tone of this murmuring began to sound angry. Then, the birds stopped singing, and every once in a while, you could still hear that strange language being muttered from somewhere deep inside these remote woods. All four of us were beginning to sweat from being so nervous. I could see the other guys were beginning to get very uncomfortable, but we kept walking towards our stand. Finally, after about another hour of walking, so now we're up to about two hours at this point, we come up to our first stand, and my buddy Scott stopped us. Looking down in the soil, you could see a large footprint, a print we did not recognize. It was clawed and strange looking. If you looked, you could see what made out to be three toes, and large claws set on each one. It had to have been easily four to five hundred pounds, judging by the indentation into the dirt. We did not see a secondary print along with it, just a single step. We all looked at each other, like, is this for real? What could leave such a print? A bear? No, not this deep. Those claws were huge. It was like nothing we ever saw before. We all agreed that it would be best to move a little bit more into the trees and brush, up over a hill in the distance to the second stand. This definitely made things creepy. The sun was just starting to come up as we're walking up the hill. The timber around us was very, very thick, and we could not see very far out. About another hour had passed, and we're still talking about what that print most likely was. And my buddy Joe stopped and let out a loud yell. He had saw something. He was pointing at something straight ahead, up in the trees. As we all looked, what we saw was the most terrifying thing I have ever laid my eyes on. It was several feet tall and clutched to the trees, like some sort of freak of nature. It looked like a darn spider or something, but also very distinctly human. It turned to look at us and made this horrifying grin. It reminded me if you crossed a human and a spider together. I can't even describe it. He just screamed run, and we turned and ran as fast as we could. This thing being behind us let out a screech like no other. We ran as fast as we could with all of our equipment on, and were hauling it back in the direction we came. We stopped after about ten minutes to try and catch our breath, and the rest of the hike back to camp was silent. Nobody said a word. It didn't sound like this thing was following us, but we did not stop until we made it back to camp, where we were several miles away. Hunting for us just wasn't in the cards that day. When we got back to camp, we could hear this loud, eerie howling coming from the area behind the other side of the lake, nearby. We never went back to our stands, and we've been too scared to share this with anybody. I'm curious if there's been anybody else who's had a similar sighting or experience that they would like to share. We'd love to hear them. Maybe we can figure out what happened that day. I generally am not one to talk about this kind of stuff, but I can't refute what happened this day back in September of 2013. For starters, I wouldn't call myself an avid outdoorsman, but I do enjoy to camp quite a bit and I hike a lot. I would like to think of myself as in pretty good shape. I try to stay as physical as possible, using the elliptical and the treadmill when I'm not hiking. I enjoy being able to hike 5-10 to 10 miles at a time, so I try to stay in tip-top shape, even though by many standards that is nowhere near tip-top shape, but I hope you get the point. Anyway, my friend is the same way, and we often consider each other hiking buddies. We've hiked in many places and done many things, so the story I'm about to share with you is really the only time we've had a weird experience, seeing something we cannot explain. Before I mention the story, 
I'll also say that we've never seen weird tracks or a Bigfoot or anything like that. No UFO phenomenon, none of that stuff. While I have heard many eyewitness reports of that kind of thing, I never have experienced such bizarre things. But this sighting that I'm going to share with you definitely would fit into that category. Alright, so anyway, we had just made a camp and just made our fire. He just finished setting up his tent and I was sitting there, pulling out the beef jerky. We were talking about something that I don't remember. And he kind of looks off in the distance and has this weird look on his face. And he says, hey, what animal is that? And we both look over and we see this long white figure running off on the hillside in the distance. Now, quick note. All around us is thick timber. To the right of us, off where we're looking, the land dips down and a small hill. There's a creek. The land dips down a small hill to a very small creek. This is where we get our water from. Then the land ascends back up a larger hill, up to more timber. Between us, the creek, and the other part of the timber is a large clearing, or a meadow. There's maybe a tree here and there, but for the most part it's pretty open. And that morning as we were setting up camp, there was a big bull elk just sitting out there. It's quite beautiful. So when this thing comes trotting out into the clearing, it sticks out like a sore thumb against the bright green background of the grass. And I think ultimately when my friend saw it, he points to it, I look, and I see this strange thing. And I'm thinking to myself, what the? And I stand up too to get a better look. And now my friend and I are just staring at it. I'll describe it to you as best I can. It was like a person walking on all fours, but now take them, make them naked, make them stark white, and have really long arms and legs. It was bizarre looking, and the way it walked was like if somebody had crab walked or something. It was very, very strange. We see it walk from one part of the clearing, come to about the middle, stop, and sit there, like a statue, perfectly still, then turn and venture off into the other portion of the clearing, up north. Then it was gone. We kind of just looked at each other, trying to figure out what we just saw, but none of us really had the answers. It didn't really creep us out as much as it confused us. Although, after about 20 minutes of conversation about it, we kind of forgot about it, went on about our normal day. We never had any experience like this ever again. I have quite the scary story to share. My boyfriend and I had gone camping. This was several years ago. We are still together. We got to our camp spot, set everything up, and the night itself went pretty smoothly. However, right as we were turning in for bed, my boyfriend and I got into a very huge fight, a very heated argument. It resulted in him storming out of the tent, and he told me, fine, I'll just sleep in the truck, which we were so pissed off at each other. I thought, whatever, fine, be that way. So I slept in the comfort of the tent, but it's not like it was cold outside. This was in late June, so it was pretty comfortable. I think he just laid down the seat or something. I don't know. Don't really care. I woke up at about 1.30 in the morning. I checked my phone, and I just had this feeling in the pit of my stomach. I should probably go check on him. Maybe a part of me just somehow felt sorry for the guy. I don't know. I get up out of my sleeping bag, go outside the tent, and the cab light is on. Huh, that's strange. I go up to the window and knock on it. But something's wrong. He's sitting there shaking, and his eyes are wide. He's also very pale. Now I open the door and I ask, What's going on? Are you okay? And he slowly turns to me. The dude looks like he's seen a flipping tornado. He shakes his head no. And you could tell he's terrified by something. He quickly grabs me, pulls me in the cab of the truck, closes the door and locks it. And now I'm beginning to get very concerned. What's wrong? Why are you freaking out? He pauses, looks back at me. This is the most scared I've ever seen him. And he's still trembling. He asks me, is it out there? I didn't see it. And I'm saying, what are you talking about? What do you mean, is it out there? I have no idea what you're talking about. He puts his finger over my mouth to a shh motion. And he says, listen. I couldn't hear anything. And he says, exactly. There's no crickets, nothing. So I tell him, you're beginning to scare me. What's going on? 
but he doesn't say anything. He just makes it stay quiet. And after maybe about 30 seconds, he jumps over me, pushes me into the passenger side seat, turns the truck on, the headlights go on. He puts the car into drive and drives off. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? Are you crazy? We can't just leave all of our supplies back there. What's going on? And he doesn't say a word. He gets maybe five, six miles and just stops the car in the middle of the road, puts it in park, and just sits there and turns very slowly towards me. And he says in the most calm voice, something, I don't know what it was, a skeleton or something, tapped on the glass, tried to get in the truck, was pulling on the cab doors, then stops. I'm thinking to myself, okay, you're obviously spooked by something, maybe you had a bad dream. But he immediately became emotionally very irrational, said no, this was not a dream. Whatever this was looked like some sort of demon, not a bear, not a wolf, not a dog, not a raccoon, a fox, nothing. And it was trying to get into the cab of the truck. My boyfriend isn't one to prank me like this or make up stories. He was genuinely petrified. I mean, the man was trembling and white. You can just see the genuine fear pouring out of him, like such a raw emotion. I didn't really know what to say or do, but just try my best to comfort him. Clearly, he had seen something that spooked him. I didn't say anything for a while, and just held on. Maybe a couple minutes go by, and I asked him if he wanted to go rent a hotel, which is what we did. We came back in the morning, once there was plenty of sunlight. We came back and got all of our supplies, including our tent, everything. That was the end of that camping trip, and still by far the most spookiest, scariest thing I could ever imagine. Although now if I ask him about it, he doesn't like to talk about it or answer questions on it, so I still don't know for sure what he saw. But whatever it was, it clearly traumatized him. I had gone camping with my family up on Little Deer Creek on Forest Road, 1820. This is also right in the Finney Creek area on the Skagit Valley. This was in the spring of 2011. Now, where I was at is completely surrounded by a lot of forest. To my south is full of thick cedar and fir, intermixed with some alder. This is also an amazing place to go fishing. Since I've been here before several times and have gone fishing for trout many times in the same area. But as I was passing a portion of a small bridge that crosses the creek, I got this feeling like I was not alone. I was with my family, but they were not with me on the small little hike. They were back at camp. I was alone entirely, but I could feel that something else was in the woods with me. Now, I'm not going to say it was a monster, but maybe it was somebody stalking me. I don't know. You know that feeling you get in the pit of your stomach, where you feel like you're in danger? Well, that's what that was. And my first thing that came to mind was I'm going to get jumped and murdered out here. That there's some crazy axe-wielding murderer just waiting behind the trees, waiting for the right moment to strike. I kept looking around but didn't see anything, so I kind of just brushed it off and thought it would be best for me to head back to camp. I was only about three miles from camp, so I walked all of it very briskly. Even though it was springtime, this particular day was very warm, like May days are. I tried to do my best to follow the creek, just to make sure that I was safe. I don't know if following a creek makes you safer automatically, but it made me feel safer, because I feel if anything happened, the creek will always lead you to the right place. I always grew up knowing that. After getting back to my camp, finally, the feeling subsided, and I did not go out on my own for the rest of that entire trip. Maybe it was just a feeling, but I've never just been out in the woods by myself and felt like I wasn't alone. Always trust your gut instinct. Always. Four Boy Scouts on a backpacking trip in Wyoming's Wind River Range were exploring the shores of Junction Lake at twilight, when suddenly they saw something in the trees to their left. They say this, we started hearing this sound that was like somebody moaning. One of the scouts said, it was super eerie. 
and the noise kept getting closer. It became clear that there was more than one thing moving toward them. And then they saw the silhouette of a tall man-like figure walk out of the woods, straight across the meadow, right in front of them. He didn't look human at all, recalls another scout named Alex. At first, he looked really bulky, then his arms kind of dragged behind him. We could see his torso, it was all black. We couldn't see any face at all, due to how dark out it was, but it scared us. It disappeared in the shadows. The boys went home after that. The next morning, they went back to search for evidence, but ultimately found nothing. Although they saw something unexplained that night, none of them believe in cryptids or Bigfoot or any other paranormal explanations. I'm not really sure what we saw, says Alex, but I know it was not human. It did not act like any animal we've ever seen before. I feel like my story is one that defies all odds. You see, I'm quite aware of everything that exists in the animal kingdom, or so I thought. I always thought we were the top predator. Well, underneath a few things, maybe like sharks and bears and lions and whatnot. But this day would prove me entirely wrong. It would prove to me there's something far beyond humans. Far beyond any other predatory animal that exists, actually. I'll tell you about that now. So, me and a good friend of mine, we were camping in Yosemite National Park. We were staying for six days and six nights. Everything was pretty much your standard protocol. We'd get up, hike around most of the day, come back, eat dinner, relax, go to bed. We did this the entire time. However, on the fifth day, we hiked into a different section of the park we'd never had before. And, like usual, we like to go off trail. I feel like we get to see more and experience more the park has to offer than just the standard trails, even though many of the rangers say it's a big no-no. We were more on the reckless side, however. What we did probably wasn't safe, but, well, that's what you get with two young men in their 20s who are starving for adventure. After starting up a small rocky incline, we're now probably three or four miles off the nearest trail, and we come upon a very, very disturbing sight. Just so you know, to my knowledge, there's nothing in the known animal kingdom that can do what we saw. But there it was. I have to assume it was another bear, but to my knowledge, bears do not kill other bears like this. We found an adult male grizzly bear, torn in half. I'm not talking about like killed by another bear and eaten on. I'm talking physically torn from about the midsection, completely in half as if some sort of giant had grabbed one end of each of the bear and ripped it completely in half. You could see where its innards had completely spilled out all over the rock, and the flesh was torn. The bear looked like it did not even stand a chance. My friend and I just stood there completely shocked and baffled at what we were seeing. It was truly a sight to behold. I don't even think we said anything for a good two, three minutes, before we both started walking around trying to investigate what would kill an adult male grizzly bear. It had to have been an adult male. I mean, this was a very, very large brown bear. So I have no way to prove it was a grizzly, but I'm pretty sure brown bear don't get this big. And if you Google a grizzly bear, it pretty much fits right in line with the size and everything else. My friend looked at it a little more closely. I was a little bit more disturbed by all the blood and gore. He's always been more of the analytical one, and he thought that the way the flesh was torn was very interesting. He noted that it seemed to be by force, as if something grabbed this thing and literally tore the bear in half. The way the flesh will thin and begin to tear, that's exactly the way this looked. One other thing he made note of is that there were no other wounds on this bear. There were no claw marks or any sort of bloody marks indicating a fight meaning that it probably wasn't in a fight with another bear. Or wolves, since I know they're here. But I know wolves will also bite at the back legs. There was no indications that there was any bite marks on the back legs. No blood, nothing. Just from being torn in half and this middle section being ripped open. There were also no signs at all of this bear having been eaten on. Meaning that whatever killed it had not tried to eat it or anything. Just simply killed it as is where it stood and left. We quickly scouted 
in the nearby 10-20 feet around the bear. Nothing. There was no flattened grass, no signs of a disturbance or a fight. Usually soil is upturned and it will look like there was some sort of standoff. Nothing. It's as if something large picked up this bear, tore it in half, set it down here, and left. There was no footprints, no tracks, nothing. We just sat there, completely horrified, disturbed, confused, thinking, what out here is going to kill a grizzly bear, rip it in half without any sort of bite marks, eating, anything, and leave it? The kill looked somewhat fresh, maybe in the last 12 hours. There were no flies buzzing around it, so I don't know if that has anything to do with the time of date or the time of kill. This was about noon. It was roughly 70-75 degrees outside. We got back down to camp, which took us a little longer than usual. We immediately told a park ranger, and they just informed us they would go check it out and take care of it. We obviously never heard anything back about it, and we didn't want to. The following day, we went and did another hike in a separate area of the park. And that was pretty much the end of that. Then to this day, I still try and speculate what killed that bear and why. Nothing adds up. Nothing makes sense. My family and I would try and go camping just about every summer, like many other traditional North American families. So, this is when I was a teenager. I was roughly 14, if I'm remembering correctly. I was with two close friends. We were all in our own tent. Oh, and by the way, this was in the Rockefeller State Park Reserve. So, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on a backstory or pointless, useless information. We'll get right to it. On the first night, I woke up to go use the bathroom. So, I step out of the tent and, kind of in a half daze of sleep and being awake, stumble to a tree, maybe 15 feet away. I whip it out and begin peeing. Well, about halfway through my stream, I notice these two glowing yellow lights. But I'm trying to look at them and trying to make out what they could be, and I believe they're eyes, and they're just kind of swaying back and forth, as if whoever they belong to is drunk, or that's what the movement reminded me of. They were maybe about 70 feet away, and slowly coming toward me. Instantly, I had this really bad feeling come over me. It was like complete and total dread, just sitting in the pit of my stomach. I cut myself off, almost about three-fourths of my stream, zipped up, and I ran back to that tent so fast. You might as well call me Usain Bolt. Surprisingly, my friends didn't wake up. They sleep like rocks. I mean, there could have been a hurricane, Category 5, and they would have been snoring away. I sat there, awake for what felt like hours afterwards, terrified by what I saw. There's no animal I know that matches that description. The eyes were pretty high off the ground, and the area in which I was looking was a small meadow not too far away. During the daytime, there's about two trees there, and we're not too far away from Swan Lake. My problem here with the whole thing of people debunking that it might be a deer or a bear is that generally for eyes to glow like that, there has to be light being shined into them to reflect, to give it that sort of illusion. There was no light coming from anywhere. It was pretty dark. I mean, sure, we did have an LED lantern, probably about 30 feet away off to my left, but there's no way that that would have caused that much of a glow in whatever animals this was eyes that were roughly almost 100 feet away. I mean, they were eerily glowing. It reminded me of some sort of Halloween prop. That's why it freaked me out so much. And it was moving, slowly towards me in my direction. Nothing ever happened the rest of the night. I eventually fell asleep and just that was the end of that. Never mentioned it to my friends or family. Nobody ever mentioned anything to me. Anyway, just wanted to share my own creepy camping experience. Have a great day and a safe October. My sighting takes place around halfway between Cody and Yellowstone, where my friend and I noticed something staring at us off in the distance. It was down a slope in a clearing, moving very slowly. In fact, it was the movement that caught our attention. When we saw the creature, we realized right away that this was not a person. It was too large, 
far too bulky, and covered in long matted hair, the same way a bear's had. Except when bears walk on two legs, they don't walk this comfortably. The gait was different too. It was also roughly eight to nine feet, if measured appropriately, and was anywhere between 120 to 150 yards away. It was moving from southwest to northwest, so we saw the back side of it, and also part of the side, in much the same way the creature looked in the Patterson and Gimli film. It was also very wide and very broad in build. My cousin is actually a biologist, who I told him about this encounter, and he's not exactly sure what this was. I think he briefly entertained the idea of a Bigfoot, but to him, that's all nonsense. I think he believes it's just a misidentification of a bear. But I'm telling you, I've seen and hunted bear for years. I know what they do. I know what they look like, and I know what they look like when they're walking on two legs. This was no way a bear. It looked like a large person, to be honest, with a huge fur coat on, and a more cone-shaped head, no neck at all, very broad shoulders. I don't want to go off the rails and say that this was a Bigfoot, but it was definitely a very interesting sighting. Now, after about an hour or two after the sighting, we were still in the area, and we heard some wood knocking off in the distance. I almost wonder if that was caused by whatever this was. I'm no Bigfoot expert by any means, but part of me can't help but pinpoint these two things together. I don't know if this detail is important, but there was also some elk bugles earlier that day. They seemed to stop and quiet down after the sighting of whatever this was. I went hiking all alone by myself, out in the great woods. This wasn't in any national forest or anything, just a large section of woods, far off the beaten path where or near my property. There's just something about going camping up by yourself where you feel so at touch and at peace with nature. If you're a nature bug like me, you'll understand what I mean. I had just gotten a fire going. It was around 4 or 5 p.m. at this point. Not quite dusk yet, but getting there. I got the impression that I was no longer alone. I could feel a presence around me, but could not see anybody else nearby. It wasn't like the feeling that it was anything evil, just somebody watching me. I heard a branch snapping, and I thought I'd go to check it out, but I didn't see anything around. Now, I sat back down by the fire, and it remained quiet for quite some time. I kind of got lost in my own thoughts, as the woods often makes me do. 4 p.m. quickly became 5. 5 became 6, and 6 became 7. It had stayed very quiet the entire time, and I could not shake the feeling that somebody was looking at me. Although, after checking religiously, I never saw anybody, saw any eyes or any animals nearby. I thought it was very odd. So at one point or another, I decided to just retire for the night. After setting up my tent, I just laid there in my sleeping bag, tried to doze off to sleep, forget it all. It was a very uncomfortable night. It did not take very long for me to realize that I was not going to be asleep. The feeling and awareness of something watching me was still very much there. So I finally got up and decided I would go looking for whatever it was. Nothing seemed strange or out of place necessarily. As I was looking around though, I could feel multiple sets of eyes on me. At least that's how it felt. Now this only lasted for a few moments and I heard what sounded like somebody really big running away from my direction. I was very frightened at the time, but couldn't see anything out of place. There's no way it could have been a man, as I would have seen him from left to right after the noise. There was no way of telling how long this person or thing had been watching me, the thing that I never saw. It's safe to say I didn't fall asleep till very late that night. I think from now on, I'll probably just stick to camping with other people that I know, or go during the day at least. Who knows what kind of wildlife may have been watching me. We had just established base camp at the base of the mountain. This was right before dark, so we wanted to make sure everything was set up properly before visibility got too poor. My cousins who were with me were not so outdoor savvy like I. They had been complaining the entire time. 
One of the reasons I was so thankful for this trip was over is to hear them finally shut up. Our camp was settled on a small bluff that was backed up by three sides of very thick brush. The right area in front of our tents was clear enough to set up a campfire for the night. I suggested we go down to a nearby creek so they can cool off for about 30 minutes later, and they had returned cleaned and refreshed, or as clean and refreshed as you can. We talked and chit-chatted for a little bit around the fire, ate snacks and told stories. You know, all the usual stuff you do. Then we said our goodbyes, went goodnight, and got into the tent to get ready for bed. At this point, it was roughly 8 or 9 p.m., I decided I was going to take a walk around the camp and check things out. As I walked toward the creek, it may be 150 yards from our own campsite, the same creek that my cousins earlier went and washed up at. I heard what sounded like something very large moving slowly through the brush. For some reason, it didn't sound like a deer or anything on four legs. It sounded like a person who was very heavy moving. After making sure it wasn't my cousins messing with me, I moved towards the sounds more and more. Whoever this was was going more left to right and not back. As I got closer to the creek bed, I saw what looked like a very large man coming out and standing on a large rock, about to cross the stream. What I saw did not look anywhere near human, as it had too much hair and was far too tall and big. I didn't see a face because of how dark it was, but I could tell by its motion and body language. It saw me as I saw it through the brush, now roughly 30 to 40 feet away. As far as I can tell, it seemed to be startled as much as I was by first seeing it. We kind of just looked at each other there and it suddenly bolted off. I was spooked by this, but I quickly retreated hastily back to camp, not saying a word and trying my best to forget about it. I climbed to my tent not saying a word. The following day, we had to hike down to the river. There was also one place we found a lot of blood and bits of fur and even clothes lying there. Very odd. We decided not to look too much into it. My cousins were already on edge. However, it was on our way back down the mountain when we made camp again, and I heard something in the woods stop us dead in our tracks. Now, my cousins were terrified I just listened to confirm that it wasn't them just being scared little girls. It started again, this time louder, screaming and tree crashing followed by, and it sounded much closer. I decided to take some action this time, and boy, did that really get my cousins moving. This was enough to really scare them, so we did a double time back down the mountainside into the timber below. I can't say for sure what I saw that night, or what kind of animal it could have been, but I know for a fact this was not a bear or a human in any way, shape, or form. I know that for a fact. I'm just thankful my cousins never saw it. Although they had heard the noises which really scared them. I'll admit, it scared me too. I still go back to that area and hunt in the fall time. Haven't heard or seen anything like that since. I hope I never... My wife and I were camped out in a campground in the Indiana State Forest. The day itself had gone great. We had already made friends with several people in the camp and started a bonfire in the pit. After having dinner, we all decided to go exploring in the woods for a bit. I was walking with my wife and another couple and we came upon a cave entrance. The others were intrigued, so we went inside. It wasn't very big as far as caverns go, but... It was for fun, and my wife and I liked to explore a little bit. She even took some pictures of me standing in some of the chambers. Then we went back out to rejoin the others. When we got back outside, we noticed that her camera was now missing. She asked me if I had it, and I said no. We both knew there was no way she could have dropped it inside without us seeing, and none of them had taken it. There was also not much light in the cave, so the only explanation was they did not want us to find something or see something. Luckily, it was just a crappy little Kodak disposable camera, not like it was an expensive DSLR or anything. We just counted our losses, continued on with the evening. We continued on with our newfound friends to a meeting spot in the woods 
and made s'mores from the fire pit there. After a while, we stopped talking, turning our attention toward the clear sky. After some much-needed conversation and company, we counted our goodbyes and went to bed. Now, we had gone to bed and I woke up to use the bathroom. I walked outside our tent, down the path a few feet, turned and saw something standing there, blocking my way to the camping area. It, because it was not a person, was six feet tall. It looked like it weighed about 250 pounds. It was this dirty gray color, long arms and a very pig boar type face and nose. I was frozen in fear, and it looked at me for about 10 seconds, and then turned around and casually walked off. I tried to wake my wife up so we could pack up and leave, but she had drinking quite a bit of wine before bedtime and was very, very out. I ended up staying awake most of the night for fear of it coming back. Well, just a few days later, I told my wife that I saw something out in the woods. She told me she had been seeing the same thing nights ago in the woods when she was walking back to our tent. She said it just looked at her but didn't do anything. It turned around and too walked off. She was afraid to speak up. I can't believe she saw the same thing I did and did not call me crazy. I guess the real question is, what did we see? In the fall of 2014, my family and I were camping in the National Forest near Hot Springs, Arkansas. We had been going to this area for years now, no problems. The morning after arriving in our camp, my husband went out looking for firewood while me and my children stayed back at camp, relaxing. My daughter was practicing her archery skills and asked if she can go stir up the fire to get it started. We didn't have to wait so long for the wood to burn before being able to do anything else. She left her bow on a chair by the picnic table about 30 feet from where I was laying in the hammock between two trees reading a book. While stirring up the fire, she thought that she heard something walking into the woods and turning to look, but didn't see anything. She went back to the fire, cut up some parts of a tree limb that we had brought with us and began to feed it in when she heard her bow fall. Knowing at all that she had not touched it since putting it there when she left to get the fire going, this made her ever more curious. So she walks over there to where she had put it down, found it laying on the ground about five feet away from the chair. She picked up her arrows and her bow, walked back towards camp, and just as our son came out of the camper, asking if anybody else could hear the weird noises in the woods, he could hear something really, really strange. My daughter told him to go get his bow, so he walked back around the camper and grabbed his compound bow as well. And now they were walking together. By this time, I had woken up from my nap that I had slowly dozed off from, asked where everybody was going, thinking they were just trying to scare me. They both replied that they thought the noise in the woods came from something very close by, and they really wanted to go check it out. I told them not to worry about how weird the sound was. They ran back to camp totally blank-faced and white. They told me in deep breaths. We saw it. It looked like a large hairy man was hiding behind the trees, and it scared them. The rest of the evening, they didn't do anything but sat there. I can tell it was pretty frightening for them. But my husband and I never saw anything. Nothing ever became of it, thankfully. Going back about two years ago, my friends and I had gone camping outside of Loveland, Ohio. This is a very old state park, built around the time of the Great Depression. It is also extremely secluded, no civilization for at least three to four miles if you drove to the entrance. We decided to camp at night. Even though it had rained quite heavily during the week, we set up our tent on one side of a ravine so we could have some shelter from the heavy winds if they came up suddenly. At first, everything was fine, but as it got darker outside, things started to get strange. We would hear odd noises off in the distance, and at one point... One of my friends was almost certain that he had heard a scream. We've kind of began to get freaked out and stayed in our tents for the majority of the night, contemplating why did we choose this location again. One friend had talked about how he heard that this place was haunted at one point or another. Either that, 
where they had done a mass amount of satanic cultic rituals, which would explain all the creepy noises and atmosphere. I can't validate that in any way, but it would make sense. This was a camping experience that was pretty spooky, to say the least. At one point, we had to get up and go use the restroom, which was just a nearby tree. The second you step outside, everything felt different. The atmosphere was thick, like you can cut it with a knife, and you just felt on edge like something was about to happen at any given moment. Although nothing did, it felt like you were being watched by a thousand eyes all around you. So we had to go and take shifts on who could use the bathroom first. The night itself was pretty uneventful, thankfully, and in the morning, we packed everything up and moved on to a totally different camping spot. This was a no-go for future occurrences. Twenty nineteen, the last summer before the pandemic, and before everything went strange and haywire. It's a time I'm sure we all remember very fondly. Well, I have a story of going camping out with a friend that I'm sure will spook you. This friend and I craved adventure, and we decided to go out climbing up a very steep rocky incline. We had always wanted to see what was on top of the ridge. I mean probably nothing exciting but a tremendous view. Once we make our way, after about 20 minutes, up to this ridge, there's blood everywhere. And I mean everywhere. All over the rocks. It looks like something splattered. And I don't mean enough blood that an animal was eaten and killed up here. I mean easily over 9 feet surface area. And it did not look that old. Maybe a couple days at most. Like maybe there had been a massacre up here or something. But other than the dried blood... There was no clothes, no hair, fur, bones, any sign that any animal or anything was even killed up here, other than the blood. We were pretty freaked out by this, so we decided to climb back down the ridge and head back to camp. We told his parents about it, and they kind of wrote it off and brushed it off as whatever, right? Typical parents. So the next day comes, and we decide to go up there again. Maybe we should explore and see if there's a cause for this. I mean, it was so out of place to have this much dried blood everywhere. So we climb all the way back up there another 20 or so minutes. Now this time we get up there and there's no trace of the blood ever being there. It was completely gone. And now my friend and I are questioning each other's sanity, saying, we just saw this yesterday, right? We were both here. We both witnessed it. And now it's as if the blood was never here in the first place. We're a little distraught by the fact that the blood's not here anymore, so we have no way to investigate what could have caused it. So we head back down the ridge, tell his parents the blood's not there anymore, and they completely don't believe us. They thought we're just trying to make the whole thing up just to get a rise out of them. You know, get them to engage in our story, which we just kind of figured, let's just stop talking to them because they don't believe us at all. Well, the second day passes, and the third day comes, and we get the idea... Maybe we should go back up there again and see if there's any hint to where the blood could have gone. Because the last two days, we had just gone up there, and that was it. We hadn't really tried to go up there and explore around at all, at least not to the extent we should have. So we climb back up there, and we look around more. And this time, instead of seeing a huge splatter of blood like we did before, or no blood at all, we see a small blood trail. It's kind of like a little spickle of blood like droplets, like something or somebody was bleeding and walked a small way. We followed the blood trail. This led to a small opening in a cavern wall maybe a hundred feet away. It was kind of in a rocky outcropping, so you couldn't really see it. But the hole wasn't very big, maybe three feet in diameter, if we had to guess, and it quickly, sharply angled down. You'd basically have to drop down into it. We had no idea what was down there but that's where the blood had led. We figured maybe a coyote or something got hurt or injured, and this is where it jumped down into. We didn't have any flashlights, but we wanted to explore it further. As we're observing the outside, my friend tells me to shh, and we hear something. It's a person's voice in there, calling out to us, but it sounded all crackly and distorted, like it was coming from an old AM radio box or something. It was really creepy sounding. And the voice wasn't saying, I'm in here, help me, do something. It was, I hear you boys out there, 
Come in here. Come in. Come inside. Come down. Over and over again. My friend and I were more than creeped out. So we ran away back towards where we saw the blood initially, running down the ridge, back to camp. When we got back to the campsite, we told his parents yet again, but of course they wrote us off and did not believe us. Well, that night things got a bit eventful. My friend shakes me up in the middle of the night. We are in our own tent. His parents are in the other. And we can hear screaming off in the distance. Not like any screaming I've ever heard in my life. This sounded like somebody screaming through a megaphone. Again, it kind of had that AM radio quality. Very crackly and distorted. Like they were screaming through a voice box. But it had like two tones into it. Like two voices screaming at the same time. And it was coming from the same ridge that we were at earlier in the past three days. I don't know what it was we almost ran into. I don't know what was down in that hole. I don't know where the blood went. But all I know is I never want to see it face to face. I would usually go camping with my family just about every spring and summer when I was a kid. All the way to being a teenager. This stopped once I turned 18 and began off to college. We would sometimes go camping three times a year if my father could get the time off work, but that was not always possible, at least once a year for sure. So our story takes place in spring of 2015, a little over three years ago. My father was going to work one morning and I saw a bright green light in the sky directly above him as he drove along an empty road to get to our campsite. He figured it was just a helicopter, but realized helicopters don't usually fly at night or before dawn, which is about what it would have been from his perspective. The sighting lasted about 20 seconds until he could not see it anymore due to the surrounding homes blocking his view and the thick timber. My dad continued on like nothing else would said. I remember my mom made a comment about aliens, although none of us really believed her. Well, that night, however, as we're setting up our tent, I see the green light in the sky yet again, and I make a comment about it to my parents. They're quick to brush it off, as if nothing happened. And the rest of that camping trip felt very off. I would hear noises off in the distance. Sometimes it sounded like a scream. One time, I remember sitting there in my chair, crocheting, since it's a hobby I like to do, don't judge me. And it literally sounded like an 18-wheeler had a head-on collision with a truck, maybe about 500 feet away from me. I'm just using really basic estimations here. I really have no idea how far away it was, but it sounded close by. Nobody around me, including my entire family, even seemed to notice it was only me. The sound was so loud, I jumped up from my chair, looking around, screaming, what was that? Did you guys hear that? And my entire family looked at me very confused and wondering if I was having a psychotic breakdown. I wasn't. I had clearly seen it. Well, later that evening, we were doing s'mores, and I saw that green light up in the sky again. I tried to pinpoint it out to my father, but he quickly dismissed it. It's probably just a helicopter again. Gah, I can't believe people can be so daft and ignorant. Well... The rest of that small camping trip just felt very on edge. I don't want to say it was aliens, but I definitely think we had an encounter or some sort of experience with a UFO in the sky. As far as that loud crashing sound, I have no idea, but it was the equivalent to a ship or something crashing into a tree. Although, from where it sounded like, no trees are moving. There's really no way to explain that sound logically or physically, and I still don't understand why I'm the only one who had heard it. I don't know if this was a ghost or what, but we arrived at our camping site, set everything up, and got everything ready. We were eating dinner, just finishing making hot dogs and mashed potatoes. Instant mashed potatoes if you have to ask. And my wife notices a man next door, who's kind of hunched over and looks old. He smiles at us. He acted very friendly. He went back inside of his camper. Well, we finished eating dinner and just sat around the fire having conversation. He comes back out, and now he's acting strange. He's moving very weird and kind of fidgety, but also robotic at the same time. 
I made a comment to my wife about it, but she just said, oh, well, he's probably old. Maybe he has a medical condition. And I thought to myself, yeah, maybe. Although it was very odd. He then comes out from behind his camper and walks off out towards the other end of the road. Now, a bit of information. So where our campsite was, if you go left, that leads towards where the camp host is. If you go to the right, there's another set of bathrooms, and I believe a water spigot. There was not that many people in this campground at the time. If you were to go directly ahead and not either left or right, it would lead to a smaller lake. And it's getting pretty dark out, so we see him walk off, but we're not really watching him. We're minding our own business and eating s'mores and are in conversation. Well, he's gone for quite a while. And the only reason I know this is because when he comes back, we realize how long it had been. Now, let me explain this, how it did not make any sense. I'm going to guess that it had been maybe 30 minutes. I start to see this man running our direction through the darkness, but naked by the way. And it's only because of the angle in which I'm sitting. My chair and where I'm facing is directly at his campsite where his trailer is, as well as the road that turns right. Behind me is the road that leads west, or towards the camp post, in the entryway of the park. So I'm sitting there, facing my wife, talking to her, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this naked man running on the road. It immediately catches my attention, and I go to look, and I see it's the same old man from before. Although he's running and he's completely naked, I mean full-on birthday suit, and he almost falls and stops landing on his knees and his hands, and begins vomiting up blood profusely, a large amount, just hacking away. My wife and I jump up from our seat, and as we go to run towards him to ask him if he's okay, he jumps up, blood and vomit all over him, and he's almost psychotic. He runs off screaming sideways into the woods towards the lake. At this point, he's disappeared, and we have no other choice but to contact the camp host, let him know what's going on. We were freaked out, but we were definitely very concerned for this old man's well-being. We have no way to understand why he was acting like this. So we hop in the car, drive down to the camp host very quickly, and of course they're not there. So we figured we'd wait around for maybe about 5 or 10 minutes, and after that long, the camp host did not reappear. We figured we'd try again later, but keep our eye on this old man. We get back in the car, drive about a minute down the road, back to our campsite, his entire camp is cleared out. No camper, no tent, nothing. And keep in mind that when we first pulled into this camp spot, he had everything set up. Everything. He had propane tanks out, he had his awning set up. I mean, it looked like the dude had been camping there for weeks. There's no way that somebody can move a camper, a fifth wheel mind you, and everything he had out in a matter of under 10 minutes. But the campsite was completely empty. Nothing. In fact, from the looks of it, there was no trace or sign there was ever anybody in that camp spot, at least any time recent. My wife and I were completely confused and startled by this, so we waited about 30 more minutes, a very nerve-wracking 30 more minutes, and in this time, remember, no sign of the crazy old man. So we get back up, go back towards where the camp post is, driving a little faster this time, even though they're only probably about 60 seconds of a drive away. They're there. We start waving our arms at them, telling them, there's a crazy old naked dude running out by the campsite who just vomited a ton of blood. Can you help us? Now she's freaked out and looks at her records. There's nobody who's been in that camp spot for well over six weeks. It's been vacant. We simply tell her that's impossible. We just pulled in earlier this evening. There was an old man there who looked like he had been there for quite a while. She just shook her head in denial. That's impossible, sir. We go through and we check each camping spot every evening. Nobody has been in that spot for weeks. So I told her, come back with me. I could show you the exact spot where he vomited blood on the road. So she did, and we walked maybe about 60 feet up from our campsite on the road, where he fell onto his knees and hands and vomited blood. There was nothing there. No sign of bile, vomit, or blood. And the road, since it was mostly gravel, did not look disturbed in any way. Meaning, it's like this old man just never existed. 
So what? You're supposed to tell me that I'm supposed to believe that me and my wife just hallucinated the whole thing. That he never existed, like we're living in some sort of alternate reality. I told the lady, and my wife saw him too. I said, lady, I can tell you exactly what he was wearing, what he looked like. I'm telling you what happened, I have no reason to make this up. But basically, it ended with her saying, I don't know what to tell you. I have my paper records here, and I go through here every evening. Nobody has been here. I think the conversation ended with her being a bit annoyed at me for trying to convince her that somebody here that clearly wasn't here, judging by her records. She very politely ended the conversation and wished me a happy rest of my camping trip. My wife and I were not sure what to make of the whole thing. We were not cracked out. We did not have a history of mental illness on either of our sides of the family. We're also very young, in our later 30s. We've never hallucinated anything before in our lives. Never saw anything that wasn't there. We're both clean as a whistle. Don't drink, smoke, do drugs, nothing. And this lady is meaning to tell me that we magically just saw this old naked man running, vomit blood all over himself, and then run off screaming like a banshee. Okay. And somehow, he doesn't exist. And was also somehow able to pack up and move his entire campsite, including his awning and fifth wheel, in under 10 minutes flat, without any signs of disturbance of the ground or area around him. I don't believe it. I felt like this was something straight out of the Twilight Zone. It was the third day of deer season, and I was going to try my luck. This part of the state, there's a large deer population. I wanted to get to it before the season had ended. It was very snowy, and I had to be careful to leave before it got too late due to snowfall. I parked just outside the park, walking about 30 minutes in. It was snowing lightly, but I didn't mind. The snow crunched under my feet. I had not seen any deer yet, so I decided to head back to my vehicle for some time before trying again. I got close to my car and caught something. A pair of eye shine, 50 feet away, glowing with a bright orange light. My first thought that it wasn't a deer, since there were not two little white dots like you usually see with a deer. My heart stopped as the lights on this figure stood up and began walking towards me, very slowly. I felt a moment of panic and fear come over me, and nearly slipping. The figure vanished, but I could still hear crunching footsteps coming closer, where I laid. I could feel my body shutting down from fear, and all I wanted to do was curl up tight in a ball and disappear, into nothingness. I felt like I was waiting for death. I lost consciousness for about ten minutes, got in my car and left. This sighting happened to me when I was just 16. I used to go camping with my two best friends, Andrew and Cameron. It was summertime in Seattle, Washington, when this took place. It was also during the day. Now, forgive me if I forget the name of the creek, but I really believe it was Rock Creek. However, I could be wrong. Anyway, we had spent a few days down there before heading back to our hometowns, since none of us lived in the same hometown, and this is the only time of year we all got to get together. It started off pretty classy. We hiked up the wrong mountain. The name is pretty ironic given its small size compared to the others in the area. After we gave up on finding the correct trail, we decided to come back and set up camp. We brought some booze along with us. Yes, our parents let us do this all by ourselves. We were all 16 and 17 at the time. Now, this part of the creek we were on is very quiet, very secluded. No trails nearby. We were off-trail hikers only. We were better than that, or so we thought. Prideful young men. We thought it would be a great opportunity to camp, get drunk, and mess around with our flashlights. Probably trying to tell stupid ghost stories, and you know how it is. We had already drank around half the day's worth of alcohol, and we were getting pretty hungry. You know what it's like to get the drunk munchies. So we headed back down where we found our campsite, and prepared some snacks and firewood. Cameron went off to collect some kind of ingredients for food. Andrew and I stayed back to start a fire. While starting a fire, I looked up at the sky as it was now beginning to get dark outside. We needed to hurry it up. But something got my attention. Over at the tree, 
where I initially thought I saw movement. The bark, where I thought was the bark, began moving, as if somebody had painted it white. I stared for a moment, trying to figure out what I was looking at, and it looked like the figure, or what I thought was the tree, but it turned out to be a figure behind the tree it began almost swaying and dancing. Not actually dancing, but just that's the only way to describe the pattern of movement that I was watching. I quickly turned to Andrew and explained what I was looking at. The tree wasn't a tree at all, but an old woman with her head in between her long bony arms that was raised up high. She had no face, no eyes, no mouth, but had long stringy gray hair down to her waist. I don't know if we saw a demon or if this was a ghost or what, but Andrew and I ran out screaming at the top of our lungs. We did not look back. We left what little campsite we had there, ran into Cameron and told him, there's a freaking demon in the woods. We needed to leave. He laughed in our faces, assuming we had just drank too much booze. But the booze we drank that day, we had drank it all throughout the day, so we weren't in any way buzzed at this point. We said, screw you, man. You can stay here if you want, but we're leaving. But I think he got a little frightened, because we left a little ways and he screamed for us to not leave him behind. We did not look back over our shoulders once. And until this day, even my two friends, Andrew and Cameron, do not want to talk about what happened that night. My dog always came camping with me, no matter what the circumstances. I named him Buddy. I know, how original, right? But that didn't matter. He stuck with me through thick and thin. He's the reason why I was alerted to what I witnessed this night while I camped alone with him in the dark woods. I had just got up from the fire I built, and it had now burned down to having red coals. I was looking for more kindling. Lighting was tough. There was no moon outside. The only light came from the stars, and I could see everything in front of me without a problem. My eyesight wasn't all that perfect. So when I saw something move on the other side of the trees, roughly 200 feet away from me, I didn't think much of it at first, and thought it might be a bear or deer out there, so I stood still waiting for one of them to come back into view. Maybe I could identify what it was I was looking at. Well, that's when I spotted this large black shape coming towards me, not making any noise whatsoever, while moving through the woods. It kind of just floated across and crashed into the trees, like it was gliding along. I thought it might be a person, but it took the shape of this large black garbage bag or something. This thing kind of came closer, but from where I stood... It didn't really seem to have much of a shape. It looked like this large black mass kind of just floating and bubbling through the air and then dissipated like smoke. I don't know what it was, but it certainly scared me. It was supposed to be just an overnight stay close to where we live. We had arrived there 10 p.m. on a Friday night, October 16th. It was not the best of places for a camping trip, but... It was convenient, and free, after all. So, yeah, that wasn't bad either. We had our car parked near a small opening in the trees where two paths met. We set up camp close to the car. It was already fairly dark when I ran out of gas lanterns, so I would go restock in the morning, before the sun got too hot. I woke up around 6 a.m. on Saturday. The sun was already high in the sky. We had planned on leaving early to go to my mom's house for breakfast. I treated myself with a good cup of coffee while packing our things in the car. When I took another one before leaving, it would be a long drive, over an hour, and I did not want to get too thirsty. My daughter Stephanie was in the passenger seat, and my daughter Ashley in the back. As we were driving towards my mother's house, coming out of the corner with another car on the road ahead of me, it seems that it had been forced off the road and was resting in a ditch. We slowed down, kept our eyes on the car, since we were so close to it. Strangely, we didn't hear any engine noise or see any exhaust coming from it. That's when I noticed there was nobody around. The driver door should have been wide open, due to the ditch it was in. But there were no broken windows. There was nothing that could have stopped the noise of this car's engine. Now my kids began looking around too, looking for the driver who just abandoned their vehicle. There were also no emergency vehicles present. We all at the same time saw something very peculiar 
hanging from a tree to our right. A large animal, brown in color with a hairy face and big black eyes, looking at us. It was not a bear. It wasn't a deer. It did not look like any kind of animal I had ever seen before. It took off immediately from the tree it was on, jumped to another one, and it took off running on the other side of the woods. We had never heard of a thing before. It looked like some kind of large ape, but definitely not an orangutan. Maybe we would have been braver if it had been daytime. We could see more things around us. Maybe somebody would have believed what we saw. I'm still amazed by this and can hardly believe it. We were not daydreaming. My kids saw the same thing I did, and we all agree on what we saw. This is when we had just come back from camping, actually. I had just went solo with my mom, and because the camping trip was easily three hours away from where we lived, it took quite the drive to get home. And so now, we're driving later on at night, maybe about 10.15, if I remember correctly. And off to my side of the road, which I'm in the passenger side seat, my mom is driving. We're just having conversation. And I see this tall, white, lanky figure quickly dart into the trees on the right side. It freaks me out, but I don't bother to mention anything to my mother. Of course, I know she'll just ridicule me, like she always does. Accuse me of it being my imagination. As soon as we drove past the area, this thing steps out onto the road, and my mother and I both get a full frontal view of this thing. There's no mistaking what it was. It was something from another dimension, or so I feel. My mom starts screaming and flooring the car. This thing dives out of the way, and my mom is now doing 70 miles an hour on a road that you're only supposed to be doing 45. I try to calm her down, but she tells me to shut up, and so I just sit back in the car and not say anything. So we fly home in like 40 minutes versus an hour. My mom does not say a word the rest of the night, nor did she say a word the rest of the drive home. I have no idea how to explain what it is that I saw. However, after trying to get online and do some research myself, I'm convinced that what my mother and I saw was either one of three things. A bear, which I don't think it's very likely. Judging by the figure, its stature, and its coloration, I mean, where was the fur? It was not a bear. Number two, an alien. While this seems the most plausible, it's still hard for me to even recognize as an option. And of course, number three, Bigfoot. Again, like number one, I don't think it really works. Aren't Bigfoot supposed to be hairy? I mean, this was lanky and hairless, and its skin was white and pale and dead looking. Pretty sure that's not what Bigfoot looked like. I did not get a good chance to look at its face, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm not sure it's something I would want to look at. I'm 35 now. This was when I was a kid, maybe 12 or 13. I used to hang out all the time with this neighborhood kid. He kind of had a very troubled home life, so I won't really get into that, but I think his parents were pretty abusive. For a segment of time there, him and I used to play many afternoons together, and a lot of times, it involved us getting into mischief, smoking cigarettes, and even going back far into the woods, finding things and looking for stuff to make spears and things with. We built forts, we made makeshift weapons, the stuff that 12, 13 year old boys usually do. But I can remember one time in particular that we found this old abandoned cab in our house, whatever you want to call it, that really sent a scare down our spines. I remember it was summertime, and he started telling me about how there's supposedly this haunted cabin that goes far out in the woods. I guess it used to be a house that was abandoned by a long time ago. I don't really remember all the details. And so me being 12 and 13, I thought that was just the coolest thing in the world. So I asked him to take me to it. But he told me I needed to be very careful. There's a demon that lives in the house. And if you get too close, it'll come out, pull you in, and eat your flesh. I ate up every bit of information he was telling me. So we walked probably maybe no more than two miles back. I don't really remember. But I remember we had to walk along a creek and find a place where the edge to edge was more shallow so we can get over. This took a little bit of time. And every time I'd keep asking him how much further, he would just keep saying the same thing. 
It's not much farther now. It's right up ahead. Well, we finally came to it. And it did look like an old one-story house or cabin just casually put right here in the middle of the forest. But there were no doors, no windows. It looked in pretty bad condition. I wouldn't say it was entirely dilapidated, but it had definitely seen better days. But one thing that really made me feel creepy about the whole thing was how dark the house was. It was no later than 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And so why is the house this dark? We stood from afar, just watching the house. And he was telling me about it. How the demon lives in there. And anybody who wanders back in here, it'll take them. Then, he did what most 13-year-old boys do. Dared me to go inside. Of course, I was also pumped full of adrenaline and freaked out. I refused to. Then he started doing the usual. What's wrong? Are you a chicken? And so me puffing up my chest and pretending I was brave for about five seconds, I said, you know what? No, I can do this. And so I promptly stood my ground and I walked right up to that old house. Now, I got within probably about 10 feet from the front door, well, or what used to be the door. I should say the entryway where it was pitch black inside. And I got almost right up to the door what sounded like an incredibly large glass vase shatter all over a wooden floor. It sent me screaming and running as fast as I could. Even Chuck's face was wide-eyed and kind of pale, if I remember. And he ran after with me, back to where our houses were. And he just kept saying over and over, The demon's real. The demon's real. There's really something in there. And well, after that, we did not end up going back. But in hindsight... With the ability to look back on this as an adult, it's not like there was this old, creepy, abandoned house in the middle of the woods, making it for a perfect haunted house story. I think this was just an old development from long ago, even though it was a ways back into the woods, with no other development around it, which I did find odd. But it wasn't so far out of the way that nobody would go back there. I could have very easily seen a homeless person living in it, or maybe an animal, maybe a squatter. It was still a structure and would still provide adequate coverage for weather or cold temperatures if you had your sleeping bag set up in there. Now, do I believe it was a demon or a ghost in there that shattered that glass? I don't. Maybe it was a person in there. Maybe it was coincidence that something had fallen. Whatever it was, I don't know. But 13-year-old me seemed to think it was a demon. The memory, of course, is still creepy. And I've not gone back there ever since that day. But it would be interesting to go back there now, just to see what really became of it. Oh, and Chuck. He ended up moving about two years later after this, right when I started high school. I've not had contact with him since. I have no idea what he's up to, or if he's even alive. Recently, I thought I would go out after dark and traverse the night landscape looking for anything interesting and unusual. And you bet I found just that. What I actually came across is a little bit more on the frightening side of things. I don't know how else to describe this creature, but I came across some sort of large bear-looking creature, ripping apart the carcass of a deer. I came down to a small creek and heard a noise. I followed that noise. All I had with me was my army knife and my crossbow. Not much, but enough to take down a large predator, if need be. And as I approached the noise, I spotted it. This large shape that looked like a bear, that was eating and ripping apart the flesh of this dead deer. And then it stood up, and began using its hands the way a person would. That's when I realized I was not just watching a bear eat something, but rather an unidentified predator that I had no idea what I was dealing with. I took the loudest gulp you could and slowly began backing away. The creature stopped, instantly froze and began lifting its head in the air to sniff, doing the usual, <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh no, it smells me, it knows I'm here. But then it just casually went back down to what it was doing, digging into the flesh of this dead deer. I used that as my opportunity to turn around as quietly as I can and head back the way I came. There was nothing for me here, and I was certainly not going to be caught by that thing. I 
Hi. I normally camp all over the Pacific Northwest, and this night was no different. I was camping up in Washington State, Skamania County to be exact. Actually, right at the Hemlock State Park and Wind River Work Center. I was with my wife, and we were walking back along the water. This was right around 8 p.m. In 2016, we had just been talking. We had been going through a very stressful portion of our marriage, and we were looking for camping as a way to kind of cure that. When we spent time together out of nature, it seemed to diffuse the heated arguments and all the stress of life. But my wife and I both saw something we're not exactly sure how to explain or put into words. She noticed it first and pointed. There was this large black shape right by the wood line. It appeared to be more of an apparition than anything. It was solid black, moving very robotically, not coming out of the wood line, but more so moving through the trees and the timber. While its movement seemed very robotic, it kind of glided. The way its legs moved did not match the movement of somebody or something walking bipedally over the branches and ground. It looked very odd. And my wife and I began to get a very bad feeling just looking at this thing. We knew whatever it was could not mean anything good. We decided now was a good time to get back to our camper. When we got back, we talked about it for an hour, and that's when all the crickets around us went quiet. So we sat in our camper and sat tight. But the rest of that night, we heard some pretty strange sounds that really scared us. At one point, after all the crickets had gone silent, we could have sworn that we both heard this really heavy raspy breathing right outside the camper, and it moved from the south all the way around to the north part of our camper, and then just went quiet. It sounded like somebody who smoked heavily, very deep, very raspy. The raspy breaths also sounded like they came from a very large set of lungs. My wife was horrified and hid in the bedroom the entire time. If anything happened, I was willing to be the protective husband and stand my ground, but I prayed and prayed I did not have to. There's no way I would match whatever could be out there. This was certainly not a bear. Bears don't do what this does. I wish I had an explanation for what it is I encountered. Thanks for listening. It was 1983, and I was in High Point State Park, New Jersey. It was actually in July. I was 26 at the time, and right around a very small lake. In fact, I wasn't even that far away from the access road that went around the lake. My camping adventure started off pretty normal, as it usually did. I set up my tent got all my supplies together, and just sat there, enjoying the silence. No chaos, nothing. There's nothing more perfect than hearing the sounds of nature and silence. It's like it's where we were meant to be. No noise, no city life, no hustling or bustling, no people talking. It really doesn't get much better than that. Then, I begin to hear a noise that I thought was a moose at first. It shows how little I know about moose. It was a noise I could not quite put my finger on, but it sounded very weird, like teeth chittering, but more of a clicking quality to it. I know that's a terrible description, but I have a really hard time pinpointing it. But the chittering, or chattering, went away after some time. I went to bed. The next day, I decided to hike around, and I could have sworn I came across a skull of a human, or so I thought it was. It was only part of a fragment, and it freaked me out. I don't know what it could have been, so I quickly threw it down and dismissed it altogether. I wanted no part to play if that was really the case. It already left a very bad taste in my mouth, metaphorically speaking. I decided to spend the rest of the evening back at camp, maybe reading a good book and getting lost in that. It was about 7 or 8 p.m. My fire was still going, and it was starting to get pretty dusky out, not quite dark just yet. I heard this loud scream like I have never heard from the woods before. It sounded like a wolf howl, but very, very deep, very guttural. Whatever made it had a lot of bass in its voice. That was more than enough for me. I stayed that night, but tightly gripped my thirty-eight pistol. 
ready for anything that was going to happen. The night itself remained very quiet, as if you could hear a pin drop. I was ready for just about anything. Within about an hour's time, a very, very bad storm came in, and it poured and poured until about three or four in the morning. Well, I get up the very next day, which I somehow managed to sleep through everything, and there were these massive tracks all around my campsite, leading up into the upper portion of the trees. I did not have any way to measure them, but they were longer than 12 feet, that's for sure. And you could see the indents in the wet mud, where it had claws. Something very big, with a stride of over three feet, with claws, was walking around bipedally around my tent last night. Sometime either during the storm or right after. And judging by the way they looked, it had to have been right after it stopped raining. So probably three or four. I kept waking up off and on, because the rain would decrease and increase. The sound of the pitter-pattering, while relaxing to many, kept stirring me out of a light sleep. I never felt anything weird or scary, like I was being watched or stalked or potentially hunted. To this day, it stands out as easily one of the creepiest outdoors camping experiences I've ever had, and I've had many since then, but none like that. <laughs>